Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Mm -mm 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 -mm. How you doing, Miss Genesis One? You the first and only one here, I see. Okay. Oh, man. I would say happy belated Easter. Um, but uh, that's over with. So I guess it's uh, happy transgender affirming, belated affirming day, I guess. I don't know. Everybody asks me to talk about that. I'm like, hey, look, man, I'm not, I don't feel like all that today. I'm on the grill. I don't feel like becoming at a target. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is, Jack. Yeah, I'm calling you Unk now, Kwame. You that status. I'm that old to be called Unk. Oh, man. I got to go back down there and work out with one of my nephews. I'm going to have to stay off this swagger dad for a couple of days. That little joker there got too much energy for me. Man, it's about what happened now. Ain't nothing happened. It's, it, first of all, it's something happening every day. What's up, Baker Man Junior? Salute to you. I saw you on SoFi, pal. Salute, salute. Older than me, but it's a respect, respect thing for sure. Salute to that. Salute to you. Oh, man, 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 man. Boy, I had a rough got dang on uh, Easter, boy. Excuse, screw beat the brake shoes off me, boy. Lord have mercy. Mm-hmm. But um, hopefully y'all having a blessed morning. Hopefully y'all still encouraged. Uh, I'm still looking for a spot in Florida. I don't give a damn what nobody say. Does Santos respond like I would want my governor to respond? So, God damn it, I got to excuse me with the GD, but God dang it, I got to find me a place in Florida. I don't care if it's a hut. Well, I already got a hut there. I need a bigger hut. I, so, I'm lying. I'm cap. I need a bigger hut. <laughs> yeah, I can't stay at the hut I got. I got. I need a bigger hut in Florida because uh, I need my governor to respond like that. At least it ain't about LeBron. That's later, TP. No, nah, let me stop. <laughs> My last video wasn't about LeBron. First of all, my editor is amazing. So if I did, I haven't done a live in so long. If there was a video or a pre-record about LeBron, that's because I have a great editor. And if I say something, she's going to edit it. So, hey, don't be upset. Um, Why is my dog barking like that? Hold on, y'all. Let me put on a song or something. I just heard order kind of squawk. Not too worried because Scrooge is downstairs, but let me let me put on a song, get her to Scrooge, and then maybe she can go downstairs. Hold on, order. I hear you. I just took her out a few hours ago. I've been up so early, boy. Let me share the screen. She might just got to use the restroom again. Baker Man Jr., so, uh, so was Abbott here in Texas. Oh, Abbott changed it up quick? Yeah, man. I, I respect that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Let me put this on, run and let this dog out, and I'll run back. back. I'll send her down there with screws. Screws will take out. Hold on. Who oh, you in? Another one. Another one. Buck dancing, butt dancing, buck dancing, butt dancing, buck dancing, butt dancing, buck dancing, butt dancing, buck dancing, little hoe, butt dancing, buck dancing, little hoe, butt dancing, buck dancing, butt dancing, buck dancing, butt dancing, you a hoe, hoe out here, buck dancing, hoe out here, you a hoe, hoe out here. Buck dancing, pull out chip. Five of hope, mouth of the south say. He's a whole 
Oh, I see it, You are a whole, oh, I see it. Fuck dancing, oh, I see it. Put them Negro in they place. You let them know it's they for fuck dancing. Get me the money, get me the money, get me the money, get me the money. Put them Negro in they place. You let them know it's they for fuck dancing. Come good, go get them, come good, go get them, bro. Yes, I'm about to get them, I'll get them. Yeah. Oh. Fuck dancing, fuck dancing. Fuck dancing, 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 little ho, you fuck dancing, fuck dancing, little ho, you fuck dancing, 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 what dancing, do you know Oh my lord, yeah. the disrespect! Oh, 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 my goodness, oh, 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 my goodness, oh, 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 Butt dancing, 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 butt dancing. All right, shout out to Scrooge. Thank you, Scrooge. But man, mama told me there'll be days like this. Boy, I got whipped from pillar to post. Now I'm talking about I ain't have an answer. I couldn't win at nothing. That Joker wanted to go get the chess board. Hey, I was so I was so beat up and lost. I was about to start playing chess, and I don't even know how to play. I don't even know how to play. But uh, man, 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 it's a new day. It's a new day. I think I want to try darts and, and and shooting some targets today. We're gonna shoot some fucking targets today. I can beat them at that hands down. Yeah, I'm going to set some targets up in the yard. We're going to see who can shoot the best. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Because, man, can't have another day like yesterday. Cannot have another day like yesterday. Yesterday. But listen, man, we got to uh, we got to talk about this. For whatever reason, Stephen A. Smith is starting to talk politics and he's starting to talk politics as if well i don't know if y'all know but as if majority of people don't know that this is a paid puppet is just going to pretend like he's going to do something else he's definitely going to vote democrat i can tell he's one of the black guys that's just going to come out mention some issues that goes on with the democrats but then he's still going to vote democrat it does, he's like a beat up battered and abused girlfriend sorry about that but that happens that sometimes they get in the mindset of thinking they can't do no better. So they just go back to the same motherfucker that's abusing them. And Stephen A is one of them type of people. He doesn't really make sense with his arguments. He doesn't have anything to offer when he gets pushed back. Outside of the same ignorant rhetoric of lesser than two evils, that's all they know. Him, Charlemagne, all they know is lesser of two evils. They cannot articulate what they're going to do, why they're going to do it. They're going to say that, hey, you know, this guy's a racist, as if the other guy is not a racist. If you ask me, they both can potentially be racist. And so neither one should be put over the other. That's why you should be talking about their policies and not rather if they like you or not. But I told y'all a long time ago, that everything is based on who we like. It's all about who we like now. That's it. Then they're, they're not gonna have it like it's a real thing. This was uh hold on. Let me go to this video because I want to play Stephen A. Clip, uh Stephen A. Smith. But before we play Stephen A. Smith, I want y'all to hear uh, I want y'all to hear my boy Judge Joe Brown four years ago articulate why he doesn't like the democratic party anymore why he left and what he saw from a judge standpoint because he said it on my live before but he also said it on the vault 
Oh, hold on, y'all. Yeah, but he also said it on the vault. So let me. Damn, where did we find it? I had it on my phone. <clears throat> you can see the difference between an idiot and somebody that know what he's talking about. You know, you're going to see <clears throat> that there's a big difference between a babbling idiot, a paid puppet, and somebody that can show you and tell you throughout the years how systematically uh, things were broken down, things were made this way, and is way different than a dummy like Stephen A. A paid puppet. So hopefully we can stop this puppet from talking politics as if he is trying to make a difference when he's not. Charlemagne, none of them are trying to make a difference. So let's listen to somebody that got some sense, who saw it from a judge standpoint, who saw that... <laughs> Uh, how they took the man out the home who who see that they made it a welfare state and why he did it and who's seen the dysfunction, the lack of accountability and everything that comes along with the situations they place us in. So let's go. Stand the Democratic Party. Really? Okay. What happened? What, what uh, caused you to change? Uh, they decided to be anti-family and anti-man, and I don't buy into that. Has it always been like that? No. Right off the rip. See, this, this is the talking points that Stephen A. and Charlemagne they will never talk about. They will never talk about that they push anti-man, anti-family rhetoric. They can, they'll, they'll never go on TV and say that. They'll just say, lesser or two evil. You're going to put a man out of a household and say that this Christian-based household and all this other crap while the rest of the races push family. They push togetherness. Now they're pushing it to everybody that it's best to be alone. It's best to be single. Women, 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 playing with the ego of a woman. Even though there's many women out here complaining about the state of dating, the state of affairs when it comes to men and why there are no real men. They're not real men because they're not being raised by men. That challenge that I will give my son, you ain't going to give yours. The accountability that I'm going to give this boy because I know nobody wants to hear you cry. So when my son is crying, I don't want to hear that shit because society don't want to hear. It. Find a way around those tears or use those tears for some energy to get you to accomplish a goal. Other than that, you are just wasted some 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 water, some glands, some salt. If you if you don't use that energy, you just wasted it as a young boy. That's what I teach my son. Not get in touch with your feminist side. Who the hell want to see a big six eight grown ass man crying? Not in this society. They don't want to see it. So we tell these kids things as children that as adults is not going to work in their favor. So as an adult. As a father, I prepare my child for what he is to expect as a man. I don't give them this wrong uh, line of thinking that somebody is really concerned with a young man crying. Maybe right now or they're three, four or five. But when they turn 18, 19, 20, you expect them to be a man. And that's the product that I put out. So right away, Judge Joe Brown is able to articulate why he doesn't like the democratic party why he doesn't like their policies because of the conditioning and the things that it place communities and families in stephen a you should probably take note you probably should have took note from this interview before you went up there and pandering and gaslighting people Can't stand the Democratic Party. Today. Really? What happened? What, what uh, caused you to change? Uh, they decided to be anti-family and anti-man, and I don't buy into that. Has it always been like that? No, it wasn't. Uh, something happened. They kind of got stuck over there in that 
far left corner someplace and they forgot about the working people in this country. When do you think that happened, Judge? Because uh, you ran as a Democrat. Now yeah, you're I did. Better. I did. I, so this is not somebody who's not a Democrat. Judge Joe Brown ran as a Democrat. He also said the Democratic Party is against the working man. Against the working man. Stephen A., this is not a talking point that you will hear by Charlemagne the Fraud or Stephen A. Ballhead. You know what? Because as soon as Stephen A. get on this show, once he's tested with facts, without his emotions, because he all he proves is that he votes emotionally. And once the dude that's sitting up here, once that brother start talking with Stephen A., he's going to realize how ignorant Stephen A. is to politics. Somebody taught a grown man to vote with emotions. Somebody taught Stephen A. Smith that he has to like the president. Somebody taught him he has to be coddled in order to get his policies passed. And I think that's BS. I don't give a damn if Biden don't like me. I don't give a damn if Trump don't like me. Just get the policies done that fit my interests. And everyone's interest should be family, money, freedom, safety. It should be through lines on certain issues, but apparently not so much. This man has the mindset of a woman. And it's easy to see because a real man don't give a damn if somebody liked him. I, I don't like some of the Trump's uh, some of the stuff that Trump says or some of the things that Trump says. But will I take a, a, a disrespectful word or some ignorant uh, jargon or language over what's going on now? You're absolutely fucking right. bothers me um somewhere in the last 55 years what's happened is the country is switched over into glorifying what i call dysfunction and at some point it's just enough is enough you've got a thing right now where they're trying to groom children in school they're trying to install a secular religion as the official religion of the country people don't have any cause any purpose anymore so they want to get you will not hear that pandering punk Charlemagne talk about what they're doing in schools. You will not hear that pandering punk Stephen A. Smith talk about the power that they're taking away from the parents. They will not talk about that. They will not talk about the party that's trying to push uh, the fact that grown men and women can have minor attraction. They're not talking about that. They will never mention the laws that are going to attack minor attraction that will make it a misdemeanor to sleep with children. They won't talk about that. They're going to talk about lesser or two evils and who's racist and who the boogeyman is coming. And it's a threat to democracy. Motherfucker, you made us stay in the house in 2020. That's a threat to democracy. You pretty much labeled people different things and gave people different rights. So the fact that so so the the. The COVID virus didn't really hit essential workers is what you're saying. They're okay to be outside, but everybody else stay inside. They delegated a class of people that can still be out and free. The politicians can go to restaurants, do what they want. The essential workers can go out, not because they're important, but because we need stuff. We still need Amazon to make all their money so the truck drivers can be out. People get rich off the back of people's emotions and their ignorance. Hopefully somebody wake up soon. Give them one, but in this one, it says you have no duty, honor, obligation, responsibility, accountability, be what the hell you want to be. Just get your freak on and there you go. But that's not sufficient to keep people working. Now, when you say 55 years, is it probably closer to the last 15 years? That it's been no, really, it's really been working. See, I, I remember the class at UCLA in 1969 and I, Remember what was being said back then when people said we hate men for one reason or another and men are the cause of war. So we're going to ruin this thing for the men and get rid of masculinity. And you had this problem with Hollywood when it was going broke in the face of color television. And you switch from two movies every Thursday and Sunday every week of the year. And Hollywood was going broke. So they said, let's ramp the fee up from 50 cents to a buck and a half. 
And we will have one movie that stays in as long as we can. So let's attract the most people by going to the lowest common denominator, promoting this function, ridiculousness. And meanwhile, we can propagandize the country to get rid of manhood. And that basically is what's been happening. And, and by the way, th these are some of the topics I got that I want to talk about today. One is family, feminism, manhood, politics over the last 50, 60 years, fatherless homes, statistics I have on how many single mothers we used to have in the 40s versus 60s today, LBJ's policies in 1965. Maybe you have some thoughts on that, on what changed oh, when we yeah. came out with that. Um, that and then we got destruction of the black family, masculinity, LGBTQ, and a few other things. War on drugs, a little bit of that with Nixon. Was that a good thing that they choose the right enemy? Michelle Obama, Kamala Harris. Trump, Biden, and uh, maybe a little bit of San Francisco cleaning up the streets this quickly. There's, they got this new technology called G. <laughs> G shows up. Streets of uh, San Francisco clean up very quickly. So let's go to the direction you were going. Okay. The direction you're going on, what's changed? You said, not, he said 15 years. He said, no, not necessarily. It's more like 50 years, right? 55. Was it 55 years? Judge, is it is it more policies? Was it more with a... In Damn, Judge said it's not 15, it's 55. Yeah, we've been at this for 55 years. Get it right. Now, 55 years are the same thing. And then when Trump make a statement like, hey, you guys ain't got nothing to lose. You've been voting the same way. Your communities are fucked up. Your, your, your households are messed up. Isn't we got offended. <laughs> well, you can look up the stats. We got offended. They taught us to get offended by every single thing, especially if it come from somebody white. Man, us as black people, we come out and say whatever we want to say. We take pride in saying whatever we want to say. I know I do. I'm glad I'm black. But shit, I get away with saying a whole lot of stuff that I know white people can't say. Yeah, it's, it feel good to be black. I don't know what everybody complaining about. You get to say a lot of shit as a black man. But because Trump said, hey, you ain't got nothing to lose. You might as well try something new and vote for me. Hell, they fucking your whole family up. Uh, that's racist. Like, come on, dog. Come on, dog. Where, where did he lie at? We still singing, we shall overcome. We still got my son and guys walking in the street. We still got people paid marchers. We got paid marchers. We got paid activists. And the one thing that you can't show me is a change nowhere. Based on what y'all are saying, this is still the same racist country as before. So miss me with all the nigga, you, you just a white boy lover. You just, just no, I'm just tired of you niggas crying. And I like policy over tears. I'm going to make a shirt. Let me write that down. Policy over tears. Yeah, I'm going to tell the shirt guy today. And I got it on live record. Policy over tears. Let me write that shit down. Yeah, I don't want to hear your complaints. Policy over tears. They come out with a slogan. All of y'all try to force every black person to agree with this slogan, or you try to make it feel like we are against the black community when you Negroes are the ones that's against the black community because you don't like diversity of thought. You like a diversity look. You want one gay, you want one tall person, you want one black person that's straight. You want a bunch of black females. You want some white people here and there, but you don't want diversity of thought. They do not like people to challenge what it is that they think, because every time you challenge what it is that they they think they respond with violence. They respond with violence and or negative language towards you It's never responded towards what it is you're saying. They got these paid political pundits to come out and talk real fast and call it a debate when all they do is talk over you and insert things to make you look bad and, and insult you and acting like they're winning something. This is not a juvenile high school game. This is real life. Kids are getting shot in the streets. Y'all got P. Diddy as this, uh, uh, the biggest uh, uh, SEX trafficker in the world when really it's the Democratic Party and Joe Biden with the open border gates. That's the biggest uh, uh, SEX trafficker in the world because everybody knows what's happening at that border. Everybody know if you just let people walk through your border, they're going to walk right into the hands of some very bad people on the other side of that border. So P. Diddy is a, a healthy distraction from what's going on at this border. What's going on in Chicago? What's going on in New York? They, they love to distract with celebrities. 
I guarantee you, some more powerful people behind P. Diddy. Ain't no black man gonna get to move around. Y'all say we ain't got no power. Then why is it that this black man all of a sudden got all this power to do whatever he want to do to anybody he want to do it? I guarantee if you trace the money, there's a white man behind him. I told y'all they put Negroes in place to control other Negroes while those Negroes are being controlled by white people and white organizations. P. Diddy is a small pawn in a bigger game if P. Diddy is found guilty of the things that he's been alleged that he did. We so busy wanting to worry about celebrities all day long when the politicians are the people that's making you in this condition, not no celebrity. Your taxes are politics. Your school zones are politics. Your everything is politics. And the first thing a nigga will tell you is I don't fuck with that politics stuff. That is the first thing a black person is probably going to tell you. Majority, not all. You walk up to the every, average everyday black person, especially a black male. Man, I don't fuck with that politics shit. Nigga, that's why you did all that time, the 94 crime bill. Fuck you mean you don't fuck with politics? You should. You really should. And stop listening to these pandering punks that try to make you feel bad and like you against the black community when the Democratic Party has shown a lot of racism, so has the Republican Party. They looked at us as cattle when we came here. The same way they did the Indians and everybody else. They, if they can take your shit, they take it. The Indians ain't sitting around crying about racism. They know how they're viewed. We should know how we're viewed. Don't nobody like you. They tolerate you. They deal with you. So if you're going to tolerate and deal with me, then I'm going to tolerate and deal with you. And I want the best fucking deal. Yeah, if you tolerate, if we just tolerating each other, then I want the best fucking deal. Stop acting like you like me. Stop acting like you love me. Just give me the best deal. Intent. What was the intent? Was the intent because they were trying to please everybody? Was the intent because malicious reasons? Was the intent political? What was the reasons why we've gone through the transitions we've gone through the last 55 years? Okay, the Johnson administration came up with a safety net. They had good intentions, but people are enterprising. So when they saw the opportunities that were presented, they went for them. And instead of having a safety net that dealt with rescuing people from an untenable situation due to the economics that they found themselves faced with, you got people that said, well, instead of using this to help me with my babies, I use babies to get that so I can help myself. So you have multi-generational situations. And even back in the late 90s, I had people in my courtroom where there were six generations where nobody had had a job ever. I had one woman in my courtroom starting in 1994. She had felony drug and theft charges. She was 57. She had a 43-year-old daughter that was in front of me that she had when she was 14 43 year old daughter had the same charges the 43 year old daughter had a 40 had a 34 year old daughter born one week shy of her 10th birthday who was in there the 34 year old had a 21 year old daughter in front of me the 21 year old da uh, daughter had an 11 year old daughter please don't go who down. had the circumstance of being pregnant with a second child. No way. With a so, second, child. second child. An 11 year old, sir? Uh, yeah. So I got the 21 year old back in about 14, 15 months. She was 23. Her 11 year old was 13 with three children. The 57 year old was back in front of me. She was 59. And she had at that point 342 lineal descendants we tracked. And then two weeks later, after I got that report, she had 358. And between 1996 and 2000, when I retired, exponential increase, she had more than 3,400, and I had 120 plus of her people in front of me in my courtroom, one way or another. One of her sons had 63 outside children by, I think, 59 different baby mamas, and he was 29. 63, 59, he's 29. Yeah. Jeez. So, I mean, people don't even think about this kind of thing. And then we did another study 
we found in the high schools uh, in the Memphis area, there were maybe 35 or 40 core problems where the students were much older than they were supposed to be. And they were creating a negative culture for the whole high school. And we found out that this woman that I had in my courtroom and four others, every single one of the five that they had in there uh, that we were tracking was an ancestor for every single one of the kids in the high school were the core of the problem so just total dysfunction and the last we checked was 2008 it turned out these five women had almost a quarter of a million people in west tennessee that were descended of them and they were still breathing it's safe to say that they've never even heard of the word condom uh, is what you're saying yeah not only that <laughs> but in this group 3400 that i wound up dealing with before i retired in 2000 out of this family we found two people that had had jobs and graduated <laughs> from high school and they were girls who had essentially been kidnapped by their fathers when their mothers went to the penitentiary mm. and got taken to Chicago, which then had a pretty good school system. So those were the only two we could find. But see, there's a mass of that out there. So when you talk about the impact of what happened with the Johnson administration, I don't think they intended that, but it happened. Next thing we had in the late 60s, we had the individuals that hated that they weren't men that's the feminists the ones that hated men certain of the lesbians the one that hated that they weren't strong men those were the beta boys some of the gay ones that hated that they weren't normal men and then you had the ones that stacked on and gave the big ballast that said men were the cause of war man we need to have love man that war war is a bad thing man <laughs> we need to get rid of all of this toxic masculinity like fool where do you think this is gonna go so it went there and they controlled the communications media and you get what you get right now where if you go on instagram facebook youtube you get this mass censorship where you can't say anything that makes people feel uncomfortable oh my god it hurts somebody's feelings oh hell a lot of people need the feelings stomped on you know <laughs> like dude what's wrong with you <laughs> come get grow stronger uh, but, but the judge you, you've been you've been around when you're doing uh, meeting with all these families what part of the responsibility is mothers? What part of the responsibility is on the father? So how much is owed to you? And do you know what the Native Americans did to get that money? You probably don't. You probably don't. I'm not going to turn this into a reparations argument. This ain't got nothing to do with reparations. <laughs> this got something to do with a mindset. And you steady talking about somebody giving you some shit instead of talking about, never mind. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even going to get into that. Because typically the blame goes on the father. Well, there are no fathers. And see, the thing of it is, these men that just ran off and left the women, these women don't want the men. All they wanted was the babies. And see, you had people like the poetress Nikki Giovanni back in the 60s were going all around the country and they were lecturing the women and they were young women and they were saying, you don't need a father for your children. Just get prego, find one that looks good, smart, athletic. Yeah, that one. And uh, don't even tell him that he's the daddy because if you bring a man into the picture, they screw up everything. So there was this point where if you had the guy, they screw up that one. And uh, don't even tell him that he's it looks good, smart, athletic, father for your children. And they were lecturing the women and they were young women and they were saying, you don't need a father for your children. Just get prego, find one. It looks good, smart, athletic. Yeah, that one. And so if they were teaching women just to find a, a, a smart, athletic, tall guy just to extract a baby out of him, and you still turn around and blame the man? You were teaching girls that, hey, it's beneficial to you to have this new life with you without the father there to protect them. But despite the protection, we'll give you money. We'll give you a place to stay. So if a man was present, women would get thrown off of welfare. So you think a woman that's trying to feed her kid is going to allow some dude to stay there? She might allow him to come by and get some. She might allow him to come by and get some, but he's not allowed to stay and give any structure to the household. That's what they were teaching them back then, says Judge Joe Brown. And a lot of other people have said that this is documented truth.
women and they were young women and they were saying you don't need a father for your children just get prego find one that looks good smart athletic yeah that one and uh don't even tell him that he's the daddy because if you bring a man into the picture they screw up everything so there was this point where if you had the guy around there was a problem and then there was some that did want the guy around but back when i first started practicing law 50 years ago one of our number one cases was getting the check cut back on because something bad social worker would sit at the end of the block with binoculars and if there was one or two of the six or seven baby daddies trying to play father, they'd cut the check off. So we had problems with juvenile courts around the country where, judge, that's not my kid. Well, you feed it long enough, uh, you look just like you. So, <laughs> you know, that was before DNA. And I can remember one thing. I, it was a cop I was representing, and he got a petition to increase the child support. So when they called the kid's name, I stood up, he stood up. Two more lawyers stood up and two other guys stood up. So this woman was collecting child support wow. from three guys for the same kids. So we finagled getting some DNA testing and none of the three were the daddies. No way. So, I mean, you have these horror stories going on. That's some old school, Jerry. Sir, was this mostly? So look at the circumstances that was caused based on the no accountability for your actions. Now, uh, three men to one baby and somebody's getting paid. Do you think that was a love child? Do you think she was talking to those men with respect? She was looking at those men like they were just trick bags and the law allowed it. So the same way when you leave men to their own nature, men walked away from kids back in the day and women talk all these horror stories about all these men that had these babies and left these women. And that's a disgusting thing. And then when women was left to their own selves and, and they had the power and they still got the power, what did some of these women do? They did the same exact thing that men would do. Some conniving BS. Conniving BS. So there's no difference between the nature of a man and the nature of a woman. There's no difference. They just have different ways of going about it. There's a bad, there are horrible men in this world and there's some treacherous, treacherous, horrible women in this world and a vagina or a penis does not separate bad behavior it has the same outcome and the same effect that woman that used three different men for that son or that daughter is just as bad as the man who walked away but we don't talk about that because a woman will destroy a little boy or a little girl's life a man that don't show up that kid can still be the number one draft pick a mother that stays there and give their love, they can nurture that boy past that deficiency of not having a father. And that's what we don't want to talk about. Whites, blacks, Latinos, mm -hmm. both. All of the above. All of the above. The juvenile court see, started privatizing and acquiring jurisdiction that used to be in superior circuit courts. So they became dysfunctional circuses and a lot of them privatized and what happens is you want to promote dysfunction because that's business downstream so if you like this clip and you want to watch another one click right here and if you want to watch uh kwame i consider you the biggest bus but i love your podcast uh you should probably learn how to communicate on a better level than that because i don't give a damn what you consider me as a bus or not but if you like my podcast, just maybe leave out the first part. Pretty dumb. But let's go on to Stephen A. Snitch. And if you want to troll or play around or do anything, don't do it on this channel. You will be blocked. You want to play around and have fun and catch my real response? Do that on one of my other channels and then you'll get what I really think. But we have Stephen A. Smith right here. We have Stephen A. Smith right here. The pandering buffoon. Now he's going to fancy himself as a person who understands politics. But when questioned about politics from somebody who's clearly more educated than him on politics then he backs off and acts like oh i don't know so this fake journalist this guy who faked a basketball career 
uh, who scored 50 some points in one scrimmage game. I think he said 17 threes. A guy who averaged 1.5 points, who talks the most crap about basketball, but has no history of basketball whatsoever that you can name. Um, has the most mysterious uh, 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 basketball career and fighting style. I've never seen somebody punch at somebody's knees and then uppercut them to, I, I don't get it. But this poser is now a political pundit. But let's listen between the difference. Even when this man hit Stephen A. Smith with hot facts, listen to his pushbacks. You, okay, let's go back to, you, you talked about this before, and I was just going to ask you, I think it's good for the audience if you want to go through it. 1960, 64% uh, of African Americans were both Democrats. Yes, the rest was conservative. Yes, sir. Let's put liberal and conservative. That's a better way of saying it, right? 64 liberal, 36 conservative. Mm -hmm. 1964, four years later, 92% blacks are voting Democrat. Yeah. That's a better way of saying okay. it, right? Okay. 64 liberal, 36 conservative. Mm -hmm. 1964, four years later, 92% blacks are voting Democrat. Yeah. 64, 36, uh, four years later, we were voting 92% Democrat. Now, I want you to wait to hear these numbers and hear the reason why after this, when this young man said what he says, and I want you to hear what Stephen A. Smith said. We went from 64% Democrats to 92%. Lyndon B. Johnson civil rights legislation. So what 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 happened there? Maybe maybe give a little bit of the history of Goldwater, you know, Lyndon Johnson, what he did. <sighs> JFK is assassinated. Mm -hmm. Lyndon B. Johnson's in office. Republicans and Democrats, back in the day, Dixiecrats, bipartisanly bring a bill to the desk of Lyndon B. Johnson. He signed civil rights legislation in the law. According to whatever reports you believe, Lyndon B. Johnson says, we bring this legislation, we sign this legislation in the law. We'll have the Negroes voting for us for the next 50 years. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, that's what it was. Um, and I think me personally, as I've edified myself over the years to see what's been transpiring in our community, on one hand, when I look at legislation and I think about affirmative action and other things, and I see how I've benefited because opportunities were given to me at a particular moment in time in the eighties, for example, when, you know, that some would say may not have been given to me if I were not an African-American or, or you didn't have affirmative action in the place and what have you. When you hear those things, you're trying to lean left because you're saying they're thinking about us. They're thinking about us. And like you said, those messengers from the democratic party are very profound. You've got Jimmy Carter in office, but the economy was so bad. So Reagan had to get him out of there. But you got Reagan in office from 80 to 88. You're looking at what transpired in his administration, good or bad, depending on how you think about it. But if you're not educated, what are you thinking? Did he care about black people? You're actually asking those questions. If you're coming from the black community and you're not reading all the time, you're not educating yourself because you're literally trying to survive. And when that happens, ultimately it becomes habit. Your mama voted Democrat, your dad voted Democrat, your big sister, big brother voted Democrat. How could you think about voting any other way? And all of a sudden, those habits kick in and then you get older and older and you start seeing how it profoundly affects your life as an individual. And you're like, wait a minute. Like, for So, Stephen A., are you trying to say the black community is a monolith? We just vote Democrat just because mom voted Democrat, daddy voted Democrat, brother voted Democrat. Nobody can think for themselves in a black home. Somebody say he pandering. Somebody say, say what? <laughs> oh, my God. This guy here, man. This little bald head weasel right here. For example, for me, when we go back to 2016, 2020, um, yeah, Hillary was somebody that I would not have mind seeing in office. In 2020, I can tell you right now, I would have voted for I would have voted for Kasich in 26 I'm sorry, I would have voted for Kasich. I would have voted for Chris Christie. I would have voted um definitely for those guys. And there's a plethora. I would have voted for Nikki Haley. If Nikki Haley <laughs> 
Stephen A. Smith is such a pandering coward. Stephen A. Smith, all of the people that you name that you would have voted for, if you notice people, all of those people were okayed by the people who okay his job. It's safe for you to vote for those people and keep your job. Uh, the mass media liked those people. Even though Nikki Haley was a Republican, she was like a Democrat spy or she was like the Democratic Party like her. So they wouldn't have had no quorums with you for voting for her. Everybody you named was a safe bet for the Democratic Party, Stephen A. You're like pretty much exposing yourself. Shaking my head. I wake up each day to see how much I can make for my boss, how, how much I can make my boss money. No one listens to this nonsense. <laughs> oh, but Styles, a lot of people do. do. Appreciate you, Styles. A lot of people do listen to this clown. Because he's an entertaining sports figure, there's some people that wake up every day listening to Stephen A. Smith. There's some non-athletic people that wake up every day and think Stephen A. Smith is Bible. They wish they can talk to athletes like Stephen A. Smith does. It's a marketing genius. You take non-athletic people and have them disrespect jocks because most jocks, we, we were assholes in school. You know, a guy like Stephen A. would have been stuffed in lockers, looked past by girls, guys, everybody. He was never at the cool kids table. Just look at him. He ain't at the cool kids table now. So, yes, of course, it, it, it makes it it's a great marketing tool to have people around the world as, as a mass just run around disrespecting the one percent. That is the biggest trick in the world. It makes so much money. If I was a uh, one of these elite people that run the world, I'd have you focus on uh, famous people, too. They don't got more money than me. I control the famous people. Famous people control you. And it is what it is. Ball head weasel almost took me out. Salute, KB. <laughs> Salute to you, Bert. Hey, I'm just saying. This dude named everybody that society would have been okay. If this man don't shake up nothing, this nigga don't push the envelope. He could have he could have said anybody in there that would have shook something up. He said Nikki Haley because it gives him a Republican card and make people think, see, he would vote on the other side. No, they love Nikki Haley in the mainstream media. So stop it. Stephen A. Smith, you are a paid puppet. You cannot say you're going to vote for somebody that they don't like. You can't. You would never say that. You'll talk about the Democratic Party in a bad way, and then you'll turn right back around. Oh, shit, I'm just going to vote for him because it's the lesser of two evils. Even though the conditions are what Judge Joe Brown said, even though the conditions, this man is in his, what, 70s or 80s? He was a judge way back then, and the conditions are still the same now. But you up here pandering to people because you scared to lose your job. You don't want to lose your job, Stephen A. So you got to say what you're supposed to say, you puppet. Haley was running right now instead of Donald Trump. She would be getting my vote over the Democrats. I wouldn't hesitate. I wouldn't hesitate because no matter what you think about those folks, they show you they know how to be an adult in the room. That's a far cry from where I was 15, 20 years ago. It would have been Democrat all day, every day. I don't think like that now. I don't think like that now. And I don't, and, and honestly speaking, I don't think anybody should. I don't think it's right to have any party affiliation with today's politics because I don't think you can trust either side. I think you got to watch what they do, see what they do, and see what policies work best for you. And Mark Levin once said this to me, along with Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. He said, hey, man, most. I wish uh, the gentleman on the panel would have stopped them right there. Okay, so what policies do you like? Because, nigga, you've been watching my podcast, apparently, because you say the right things, but you do stupid shit. So if you're going to say vote policy, then tell me the policy that uh, Biden told you that you like. Because the last time I checked, the only policy is if you, only, if you don't vote for him, then you ain't black. And that's the only white man I know to get black women to shut up and do what he say. That's the only man in the world I know that got black women as a whole told them what their skin color was. I can't go up to no black woman and tell them they ain't black if I don't listen to them. I'll probably get slapped in my shit. A white man told all black America, black women included, and they went out and voted for him in droves and danced and shot. They ain't, they ain't object one time to this white boy. That white boy said, hey, I ain't telling you no goddamn policy. My wife got to get on the phone. You ain't black if you don't vote for me. Now hurry up and vote. 
and everybody voted and danced in the street i was embarrassed all these so-called educated people i'm an uneducated nigga and i'm glad i'm uneducated because i'm smart enough to know that ain't no motherfucker gonna tell me that i ain't black if i don't do something especially not no goddamn white boy that be talking about oh you black people are like little roaches rub my leg and all this stupid shit he done said but y'all can't see it because y'all too blinded by what somebody telling y'all i think both sides have a level of racism that's why i don't kiss up to neither side you got this man responsible for so much crap 94 crime bill he didn't even want black people going to school with his kids come on man stop the press stop the press I, hey DJ Memphis, you hey you from Memphis and you probably about that life, but I bet you you won't walk up to no black woman and say you ain't black if you don't cook me no dinner. Walk up to a black woman and say you ain't black if you don't cook me no dinner, sister. <laughs> That's gonna get you whipped, called the police on all kind of shit. But this white boy was able to get on camera on a black syndicate, a mostly black radio station, and say y'all ain't black if you don't vote for me. I said, oh, he done did it. Now these women gonna goddamn have an uproar. Cause that's the only thing shit move is when women have an uproar. I said, ooh, ooh. Boy, these women finna stump this nigga. And when them women were silent, I said, oh my God, what the hell is happening now? DJ Memphis talking about heck no, nah, unless it's my sister. <laughs> Even DJ Memphis know better. But that white boy don't know better. I wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. Everybody fell in line. Get mad at other niggas that was mad. I was mad. There's people on Facebook and people on YouTube. Oh, nigga, shut up, nigga. Yeah, uh, shit, you been told worse. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, you acting all mad. Nigga, you just like Trump. I just like Trump. If Trump would have said that shit, I would have said the same thing. You niggas just like whoever they tell you to like. I don't like nobody, nigga. I like that song. I don't like niggas. I don't like bitches. I don't like nobody. I don't like nobody. You give me a reason to like you, especially not in politics. I don't like nobody. We don't know each other. We don't know each other. I don't know Trump. I don't know Biden. I'm just saying. not not a fan of stephen a but he's telling the truth about us voting uh dems because our mom and our dad told us we're dems and we didn't argue with them he's a damn lie i, I questioned everything since i was a little bitty boy if i go down there and, and get scrooge to come up here scrooge will tell you this little crazy motherfucker was the same way his whole life he always talked too goddamn much always up in somebody goddamn face we was always swinging on his little ass and he was always right back saying the same shit my brother downstairs and he'll tell you. <sighs> Here go another nigga. Kwame, you play yourself real tall. Cool. I'll play myself. Real tall, dog. <laughs> These niggas. I question everything. That's how it used to be. That's how it's supposed to be. You niggas don't question nothing. You do what mama say. You do what goddamn brother say. You do what cousin say. You do what everybody tell you to goddamn do. I'd rather fail doing it my way than win doing it your way. Because guess what? I'll feel better because long if I fail, I just learned something. I'm going to keep trying until I get it. And when I get it, it's going to be my thing and not your thing. If I just do it the way you know how to do it, if something else fails, something happened to you, then I don't know how to do shit again. But if I fail and I keep trying until I get it right, then whether you here or not, I got it. I got it. So I'm okay with doing it the Kwame way. I'm not the guy that's going to go get up under uh, Jay-Z and, and pay him 500000 for a meal to have a conversation about something the way that he would do it. No, no, no. Give me the 500000 And I'm going to do it my way. And that way it's my own thing. Some people don't get it, but I get it. 
It's funny how I stopped this video right with this nigga lips puckered and his eyes closed because he's a white boy ass kisser. Stephen A. Smith, you just got your own podcast, what, a year ago, two years ago? Oh, my God. For 22 years, you've been kissing that white boy ass. How it make you feel, boy? You finally got your own YouTube. I've had my own YouTube longer than you've had yours. You've been just puckering up. I'm going to start calling you Kiss Kiss. <laughs> this, I must take a screenshot of this. Yeah, let me get a screenshot of this right now. This nigga new name is Kiss Kiss. The real no Kwame keeps speaking the truth. Salute to you. Man, let me call this nigga Kiss Kiss, man. <laughs> I'm taking a picture of this shit. I might put this shit on a shirt. Because that's all you've been doing your whole career, nigga. Puckering, it, puckering up. You a sheep, so your eyes closed. And you don't know no better. And the only thing about us as Negroes, we respect the money. So because your bitch ass got money, somebody in our community are listening to you. But I got my own money, so I don't listen to a motherfucking thing you say. I'm sorry. Uh, Stephen A. Smith is saying what Killer Mike said when he was on a talk show. Carcino, Carcino pointed that out. Yeah, I mean, I've said it. Killer Mike have said it. Everybody said it. We never heard Stephen A. Smith say it. But the fact of the matter is, Stephen A. Smith is still going to vote the same way. This is just a talking point to get him to go on a media cycle. He is not going to change anything. He's not going to push the envelope. And he's too much of a coward to call out the real truth. He's too much of a coward that to say the truth. The Democratic Party is too busy caught up in identity politics. They're going to uplift women in the LGBT community because those are the most powerful groups and everybody else is going to fall underneath. No matter what is right or wrong for us all, they're going to uplift those two groups and they're going to keep pushing the envelopes for those two groups and those two groups are alone. Stephen A. Smith is too much of a coward to say that. People vote their issues. They're not looking at you. You can bring up sure. immigration, the economy, right? Whatever issue is most near and dear to them, yeah. that's what they focus on. So you got a black community right now that'll look at your body. You know what? You know what? You know what they'll say right now? Well, you know, Barack Obama gave. <laughs> that nigga say Mike Tyson can only beat one person at a time. I don't believe that. Uh, what? What? Were you talking about one boxer at a time? Because I believe Mike Tyson can take average Americans that just walking around. I take you, I think he can take you about four at a time. It ain't gonna take but one punch for each of you. Pop, pop, pop. It's over with. But I get the point. Uh Joe Biden slapped the whole community at one time. God, to be more careful. Speaking of slapping, I heard there's a slap epidemic up in New York. Uh hey Kwame in the chat. Salute to you, Jim's eye view. Uh I heard that there's an epidemic up in New York that they're just walking around slapping women. That the men are just walking around slapping and punching women. Like, what in the... One of the guys was a migrant. He was just slapping women. They just, he just got arrested for just walking up to random women, just slapping and hitting on them for no reason. They don't want to talk about that. If about 328, 330 million dollars to HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. Trump comes in there, he gives about 360, eight years later. Barack Obama did that in 2010. Trump did that in 2018, about 360 million. But now look what Biden and Biden administration has done. They've dedicated over 7 billion. For some folks, that's enough. Not for me. Not for others, but for some folks, that's enough. And it's about finding that one issue because why? How did they learn? Then this is why I can't, I can fault the politicians just as much as I can fault the voter because folks got that way because the politicians got them that way. Because you go into their community, you go into their respective communities and you give that song and dance and that lip service about that one issue they cared most about. That's what you wanted. That's what you trained a voter to be like. And in most instances now, it's coming back to bite you. May I? Yes. I want to I say, because you said a lot and I want to I write it down tonight. Sure. I want to go through sure. each of these to the best of my ability. Sure. So 
1964, Rob, you pulled it up and I'm glad you said it because I, I went and I actually looked at Snopes. Go to Snopes because I wanted to know, did he actually say that, right? Because this is what we found. I won't read it, but the audience can read it. Uh, uh, can you go a little lower where it shows the whole thing? Okay, I, I, we can just show that at the top and we'll read the whole thing. Okay, right here. You can do that right there. These, Is boom, they, yep. that's right. They're getting pretty uppity these days and that's a problem for us. They've got something now they've never had before. The political pull to back up their... Y'all see that? <laughs> and this is Lyndon Bain Johnson. Everybody love Lyndon Bain. These Negroes, they're getting pretty uppity. How would y'all like it if somebody, some white guy came up to you and they and said, these Negroes are getting pretty uppity these days. <laughs> That's a problem for us since they've got something now that they've, they've never had before. The political pull to back up their uppityness. We got to tamper these niggas down. Now we've got to do something about this. We've got to give them a little something. Give them a little something, a little welfare, a little cheese, a little milk. Just enough to be quiet. Just to quiet them down. Not enough to make a difference. Yeah, yeah. See, when people say things like, when you on that welfare system, it's not a good thing. But people swear it's a good thing. Because when they get you on that welfare system, you're going to have just enough to get by. You're not going to have enough to live a real life. I'll have those niggers. Voting Democrat for the next 200 years. Sign LBJ. <laughs> but we want to talk about the Republicans are racist. The savior of us Negroes, LBJ, said he'd have us Negroes, uh, niggers, vote with the ER, voting Democrat for 200 years, and we on pace. We are definitely on pace. And one of the tactics that he used was blaming the other side for everything. That's what they do now. But the guy from the Democratic Party that everybody lifts up, he called you niggers. He said, give you just enough to keep you quiet. Is that what you want out of life? Just enough to be quiet? Well, Keep voting the way you vote. You're going to get just enough to shut up, nigga boy. And that's why Biden didn't take the time to talk to you. Because when they don't respect you, why in the world would anybody take time to talk to you? You can tell a lot by who respect you, by the person or the people that'll take time to hear your cries out at least. I haven't seen black pastors able to go to the White House lately. I haven't seen a bunch of black people able to pull up to the White House and have a conversation like they used to be able to. Well, like one time they were able to and the only time they were able to. But these people don't even want to hear what you got to say. They don't even look at you as worthy enough to hear what you have to say. When Ice Cube went to Joe Biden and the Democrats and said, can you tell us what do you have for black folks? Also, I came up with a plan for black America that I sat down with all these black leaders that all black community claim they like. He sat down with Dr. Claude Anderson. I'm talking about, boy, you say Dr. Claude Anderson, every nigga in the world, a goddamn, oh, I love Dr. Claude Anderson. I love Dr. Claude Anderson. I love him. But Joe Biden was able to turn down something that Dr. Claude Anderson allegedly had a part of with the quickness and ain't no niggas get mad. Ain't no niggas get mad. <laughs> but this is supposed to be a direct quote from LG, LBJ. Ain't nobody talking about this. Ain't nobody tying him to the Democratic Party and racism over and over again. Ain't nobody deeming the whole Democratic Party as racism. No, that's the Republicans. LBJ was a dirty snake. Tried to holler at Jackie Kennedy right after JFK died. Laugh out loud. Wow. I'm telling you, he probably, never mind. <laughs> That's what happens. Most women are sleeping with the person that hate the person that they was actually with before. That's been happening for forever. But I would be classified as an uppity nigga to him. 
because I don't look at him as above me. So I would definitely be an uppity nigga. A lot of you in this chat would be looked at as uppity niggas. Well, some of you would. Because some of you would just go hook, line, and sinker with letting him take care of you and talk to you stupid and look at you crazy. I don't come from that. I come from we respect you first until you disrespect us, and then there will be no more respect. I respect everybody. I see a, a, a white man. Is, what's up, bro? Black man, what's up, bro? Until there's some disrespect on the table, then white or black, you ain't shit after that. <laughs> Motherfucker talking about I'm okay with that. Sticks and stone. Okay, well, hey, why can't we say that when they say Trump races? That's all I'm saying. If it's going to be sticks and stones, let's say sticks and stones on the whole thing, and then let's just deal with policy. And this is why I always say there's racism on both sides. So I don't do the who we like game. I do the policy game. If it ain't no policies that I, I you can tell me that makes sense to me, I don't want to hear who's racist. Because if you look back in history, both sides, you can detail some racism. And that's a fact. So all the people that's brainwashed and thinking this one side racism, that's just a way that they control your dumb ass. I'm going to stick to it's an even playing field. Both of you motherfuckers are tied to some races or to some racism. Now, going forward, now that we got that out the way, what are you going to do going from going forward? What's the policy? If you can't articulate a policy, then get the hell on. I don't want to hear your excuse about racism. Neither one of you like us. You just tolerate us. uppityness now we've got to do something about this and we've got to give them a little something just enough to quiet them down not enough to make a difference and then boom you know that line you brought it up i'll have him voting this way the democratic day. for the next 200 years yes. you know what snopes said snopes didn't say it's not right go a little bit more it says unproven and yeah. snopes is one that would typically be quick to say they never said this, this. then cnbc writes an article if you can pull this one up uh cnbc writes an article saying Lyndon Johnson was a civil rights hero, but also a racist. And if you look at the stuff about him, how many times he dropped the you know, N-word and all this other stuff, this guy was not wanting to do what he did with civil rights. Yeah. Credit goes to one man and the community. They say Lyndon Bain Johnson will drop the N-bomb in the White House, in the meetings around Negroes, and they just put their head down. <laughs> they said Lyndon Baines Johnson would call you the N-word right there in the Oval Office. But y'all want to talk about who racist and who ain't. If y'all don't miss me with that crap and call both sides racist and then just go off of the policy, do not give somebody your mind like that just because of some racism. I don't give a damn if you don't like me. I really don't. What are you going to do? Are, are your policies going to be fair? But y'all want to be liked, I guess. I want to be liked by the people that's around me. I want to be liked by my girl, my kids, whatever else. But other than that, that's as far as it go. That pushed it. There's a reason why we all have a poster or painting of him in our offices and our walls. And he's admired by everybody. It doesn't people. matter. Left, right, center, white, black, Asian, yeah. Hispanic. Everybody loves and admires what this man did. One of the greatest movements of all time. He accomplished it in a peaceful way, different than X. He was able to get it done, right? Okay. Um, at that time, you know, if, can you type in civil rights march? Just type in civil rights march, if you don't mind doing that. Just type in civil rights march and go to images, if you could do that. You know, when you type in civil rights, click on that first picture. What do you see a lot of? Look at the way they're dressed. Yeah. Just look at the way, go to the bottom left picture. Maybe that's got more people in suits. Bottom left. Bottom left. Look at the ties. Look at the suits. Tuxedos. Look at the tuxedos. Look at the bow ties. Wow. Pure class on the way it's being dressed. So Lyndon Johnson wore on poverty, 1964. Do you know at the time, him, uh, uh, can you look up when Planned Parenthood came out? Maybe you look and look at, I don't know the exact year. When did Planned was, Parenthood come out? I think it was 71, 72. 70, uh, uh, what year is it? Go a little bit. Uh, uh, Look at what this man is pointing out. This gentleman is pointing out, even at a time where we were supposed to be the most oppressed, 
Look how people look. These men were going through hell at this time. Look how these men look, though. Suit, tie, pants on their ass. No makeup, no pearls, no finger paint. Men unified. They got something done. They unified with the white men, different races, and they got things done. They unified with women because there's black women in that crowd as well. They unified everybody. It wasn't about uh, just race. It wasn't about that. It was about unity. They had women, black and white. They had men, black and white, shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand, because these men led by example. These men led by example. Now look at the way we dress now. Look at the way we act now. You don't think they have a little to do with it? It's not the party. It's about the person and the policy. Yeah, I feel that. But me now, I'm more about the policy. It's, it's so many stories that make you not like a person. And that's what they want to try to do is get you to not like somebody. I'm focused strictly on policy. If you can enact these policies that's going to help everybody as a whole. I'm with that. But this is what he's trying to show Stephen A, how far we've fallen as a culture, especially after Lyndon Baines Johnson. And you're steady voting for the same damn thing is what he's trying to expose to Stephen A. But I think he's too stupid to see it. Or he's controlled by an entity too much so that he can't say the quiet part out loud. Do you know at the time, him, uh, uh, can you look up when Planned Parenthood came out? Maybe you look and look, I don't know the exact year. When did Planned was, Parenthood come out? I think it was 70, 70. 70 uh, what year is it? Go a little bit, uh, uh, Singer, whatever her name is, where he started the movement. Anyways, so you look at some of this data and you see that we went at the time when kids are being born. Yeah. Only 4% of kids in America, if you can pull up the stat rod, 4% of kids in America were born, okay, yeah. in single family household. 96% right. yeah. mom and dad. Yeah. Fast forward, we went from 40 to 4% to 41%. 96% right. mom and dad yeah. born, okay, yeah. in single family household. Right. Only 4%. Now, we're going to see what's the biggest thing to America. Is it racism or is it this systematic thing they did? Listen to the numbers. He's not just talking about a black house. 96% of Americans had babies with two family structure. Now, he's going to detail out what it went to and where it's at now. And you can see the destruction in the streets. And then you tell me if racism is the biggest thing you should be talking about. Listen to these numbers. The time when kids are being born, yeah. only 4% of kids in America, if you can pull up the stat, Rob, 4% of kids in America were born Okay. Yeah. In single family household, ninety six percent mom and dad. Yeah. Fast forward, we went from forty to four percent to forty one percent. And by the way, it's even higher for African Americans. Mm -hmm. This is America. This is not African Americans. Percentage of children born out. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, by the book, all of what all of what was presented to Stephen A. was lost on him. He had no meaningful rebuttal because he's misinformed. Exactly. Because they sit on the, their TV spaces in a safe space to where they can yell and shout over people and make them look bad and disrespect them. Or they can say narratives on their show. When you get on this man's show, he likes to have intelligent conversations that's backed by facts and data. And he ain't yelling at you to get it accomplished. He said, this is America. This ain't just the black community. 40% of kids are being born in America without a household. And that's as of 2013, it looks like. That we can see what's going on with these little girls and we can see what's going on with these little boys. And it wasn't going on back then. So what is the biggest threat to society? You can keep saying racism, but let's see these numbers.
happened from 40 to 4 percent to 41 percent. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's even higher for African-Americans. Mm -hmm. This is America. This is not African-Americans percentage of children born out of wedlock. But African-American is to the roof. That wasn't the case. You guys were always united, conservative. It's a good community, respectful, mm -hmm. Bible Belt. Right. When I was in, in, in the army and my friends in the army, I was hanging out when I would go see their families. I was afraid of their mothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Right. The, your mother would have talked to me like I'm her son. Right. And she would put me in my place. It was a different kind of a culture. Right. That was what I was accustomed mm -hmm. to. Right. So to me, when they say systemic racism, it, if you want to give anybody credit, it's Lyndon Johnson. And he, he succeeded in actually trying to create that kind of an environment. And, and the reason why he, he was very creative on the way he did it is he. And I 100 percent agree with this gentleman. If you want to give anybody credit to systemic racism it's Lyndon Baines Johnson, the guy that some people view as a hero. He never liked black people, in my opinion. He tolerated you. When you got a little bit of power, he said, oh, hell, I got to deal with these Negroes. And he didn't say that word. So he gave you trinkets to make you think he like you. Focused on the women because he knew the men didn't want your fucking trinkets. We could see the trick. Most men could see that trick of your trinkets. So they said, OK, we got to get rid of these Negroes. So they got rid of these Negroes. Killed two birds and one stone, sent Negroes to jail and have women producing children with no structure so they can go to jail as well or produce more children with no structure with the ladies. So it's a never ending cycle of money. They're going to make so much money off of us, that little bit of money they're giving in, in, in food stamps or whatever else. They're making so much money off the sickness and destruction of black folks. And now they're going to trickle this method throughout most of society. That's why it's at 40%. Why Kwame don't face cam no more? This why, nigga. Get the hell off my channel. I don't like when people come over here and do all that. Sorry for the interruption, people. It's called YouTube. That means you do YouTube the way you want to do it. You don't got a face cam. If you need to see my face, I'm on the internet. Google me. He blamed the other side. For Want to give anybody credit? It's Lyndon Johnson, and he he succeeded in actually trying to create that kind of an environment. And the, and the reason why he, he was very creative on the way he did it is he blamed the other side for it and got them, the 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 blacks, to vote Democratic for God knows how many decades until now, where things are slightly changing. And I'll wrap up the thoughts here, and I want to get your. Well, can I respond to? Of course, yeah, absolutely. I think that when you mention all of those things, first of all, you said nothing that I can dispute. Nothing because that's just factually correct what you pointed out and i think that the i think that <clears throat> did this negro stop him to have nothing to say this motherfucker said may i respond but whatever you said i got no response because you was 100 percent right like what why stop him then he didn't stop you when you was cooking let him keep cooking you stopped him for no reason. You stopped him because you couldn't deal with the facts. You're going to stop him to agree with him. This is a clown. Stephen A wants to rebuttal so badly, and he's being shown real information, which is a which is a feminine trait. So because he want to respond, that's a feminine trait. I believe that. That's a feminine trait about him. He knows it's what's, it's what's true, but doesn't like to have someone not black tell him about black culture mm. Mm. good point good point good fucking point salute to you the bill collector this guy right here Stephen A just stop this man let's hear what he got to say because how can you stop somebody and say I can't go disagree with nothing you said uh, may I say something you got nothing to offer with what he said. You just want to talk. So I already know some bullshit coming. You mean weak, not effeminate? Yeah, we can say weak. We don't want to offend the ladies. I was just reading the message now. We can say weak, not effeminate. Because you look like you got a strong right hook. 
the way you looking right now you sexy though but the way you got your mouth tucked up you look like you ready to punch a nigga in they so i don't want no smoke we're gonna change it to a weak not a feminine we got to be all inclusive we want them sisters to be able to receive the message so we changing it to weak all right my sister don't swing on me <laughs> you welcome don't 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 swing on me i don't want no smoke i got enough smoke when you mentioned he did it is he blamed the other side for it and got them the, the the blacks to vote democratic for god knows how many decades until now where things are slightly changing and i'll wrap up the thoughts here and i want to get your uh, can i respond to what of course yeah absolutely i think that <clears throat> when you mention all of those things first of all you said nothing that i can dispute nothing because that's just factually correct what you pointed out and i think that the important thing to bring up when we bring that stuff up is that is exactly the reason why black folks in america have historically over the last 50 plus years had that divide with the Republican Party. Stay with me. What happened is, Patrick, you invite me onto the show and you talk to me. We're having this conversation. You show me facts. I leave this office. I give you no resistance. And then you turn on the TV and I'm like, Patrick Bed Davis full of it. <laughs> Look what he brought up. That's some racist BS, blah, 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 blah. You never want to talk to me again. It's disingenuous. It's not educated. It's not fair. One of the things that we have to pay attention to is that there is a Republican Party that can't disguise its resentment towards Black America because of what you just pointed out. It's just that we're looking at it differently. As this Black person, mm -hmm. when I got to know Republicans and I heard my parents speaking about conservatism and stuff like that, I remember asking my, my mother one day, I said, you know that fact. How would you feel if you know that you contributed? Yo, I swear to God, I was just saying to myself, like, what the hell is this dude saying? How do you follow up by a man hitting you with straight facts about your black community, about out of wedlock birth and things that you can actually take back to your platform and start preaching yourself because this is a fact as you say how can you then start talking about all this stuff that don't make any sense what the and so when the brother put deflection i was like i gotta stop <laughs> like yeah because this this shit hurt my head i don't know what this clown talking about how do you go on a show and look this stupid <laughs> make a man say the best tap dance <laughs> but because he has funny jokes about Kwame Brown and all this stupidity people will actually listen to this unaccomplished fool this is an unaccomplished fool for every person that goes out and create and do first there's always going to be somebody to come behind you and try to undo or talk against or make the same thing you did but try to make it different. That's always been like that. This guy is a clown. He's so educated though. Shit. He educated at doing what he told. Man, I'm glad I got educated from them old school Negro. Them old school Negro told me, boy, it's about going to make you some money. You make you some legal money. And you get you you make sure your family's straight. That's what life is about as a man. He ain't they don't care about all that going to get souped up, educated. That's just more shit for you to think about and fuck your mind up. Do I think the specialty degrees and being a seeker of knowledge and those people that understand history, the historians, I love those people. But these people that just go out and get degrees just for the sake of getting degrees, just so they can talk down to somebody else, I think you dumb as shit. Yeah, because that ain't what life is about. You don't go get educated to talk down on somebody else. If you were truly educated, you wouldn't use that to talk down on somebody else because you would understand that. <laughs> is this is this fool? Yeah, I, hey, look, he said he could run for president. Is this fool Stephen A. Smith trying to run for political office? They put the weakest skin color folks in the, in the position 
Biden, you out for me. Trump, let's go. Russell, now they finna attack you now, Russell. They finna attack you now. You against black people by putting that up here now. So, shit, we already know they, they gonna say Russell hate black people. Because, you know, Lyndon Bain Johnson been so good to the niggas. He said N-I-G-G-E-R. I'm going to rewind it back so they can know how Lyndon, Jane, Lyndon Bain Johnson really feel about him. He talking about six-inch knee screw. <laughs> they got this pandering clown. Oh, my God. How many more years we got left for our 200 years up voting for him? How many more years we got left, y'all, to vote Democrat? Because I think we still got some more years. We got to do what them white people say. We got 150 left? Damn. 130? <laughs> so between 130 and 150 more years of this. Damn. Well, Lyndon Baines, you still controlling us Negroes from the grave. <laughs> hey, Lyndon Baines Johnson, you are still controlling us Negroes from the grave. I know you would like to put the ER on it, but we're going to keep listening to you, boss. We got another 130 years left. So we got your back, Lyndon. You just stay resting. Rest easy, Lyndon. We got your back. <laughs> God, to be more careful. to bring a civil rights legislation to the desk of the presidency to sign in the law. And that was ignored because the party that he represented, he made sure they got all the credit for what you played a role in bringing to the table that helped the African-American mm -hmm. community supposedly. Mm -hmm. And it was completely ignored. You'd lose all respect because you believe you're not educated enough. You're not, you're not doing, you're putting forth your due diligence to know it wasn't just him. It was us and his intent wasn't honorable. Ours was. I think that you have a lot of Republicans who are knowledgeable about that history that you just pointed out mm -hmm. and the distaste that they have had for African-Americans for a period of time, at the very least, emanates from that, from folks not knowing what role they play. When I listen to a Sean Hannity or Mark Levin and Andrew Wilkow and others mm -hmm. talk about black America's history mm -hmm. and racism, they never fail to point out the Democrats played a huge, huge role in this, y'all. And the black community lets them off the hook. They look at us. And there's a level of absolute frustration, palpable frustration that comes from that. I don't always agree with it, but I understand it, which made it easy for me to communicate with members of the Republican Party when they come to me and they want to talk about different issues. Because I'm like, I want to learn more. I want to hear this because you're not going to come to me and engage in demonization talking about the other side, in this case, the right. You're not doing that. What are your policies? What are you bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me about them being racist because you know what else? You're asking me to assume you're not. How do I know you're not? I know there were KKK members that were in, in uh, members of the Democratic Party that were on Capitol Hill. Robert Byrd of West Virginia, the name one of them. I know that for a fact. And so why are we to assume that just because you're a Democrat, you're on our side? So I do get where you're coming from, and I understand. Yeah. So to me, that that part to me is, you know, you, you check policies to see how it's benefited a community and you say yes or no. You, you have no idea how much I my favorite part of this podcast is when you said your mother, when she went on welfare, she was despised of it and she couldn't wait to get off of it. I can't tell you what that means to uh, to me to salute and, and yeah. respect that. And then let's go to a couple other things sure. you said on who you would vote for and who you wouldn't vote for. You said John Kasich. He was he was a centrist. I think he was an independent. I don't yeah. think he was a Republican, but I think I like he was centrist. A, yeah, I think I like he was him. he was a nice guy. I think right. John Kasich was a nice guy. He was guy. a Republican governor. He was. Yeah, he was. Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Yes. he was a nice guy. Uh, I think uh, Christie. Yeah, he's a fighter. I actually enjoy listening to Christie. I think he's a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm aware. Yeah, and I was a little bit like, you know, I think, you know, I have some friends that were, you know, part of Trump's camp. He fired him. And then there's a bitterness. And, you know, that's between them. I, I just watch it and say. You're not going to win being a bitter candidate. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to you're not going to win that way. And, you know, maybe that was it. It wasn't. It is what it is. Um, Nikki Haley. So, you know, for me, when I wasn't into politics mm -hmm. and I was purely business guy, right. like I don't have time for this stuff, man. Right. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to go to business, make my money. My dad's going to retire. 99. So That's so. a lot of people in this world. Yeah. Like, I have zero desire for politics. Right. Yeah. And then. the Mel, I 100 percent agree with you, bro. Nothing irks me more. Then somebody will ask me a question. They hear what I have to say. And then they say, no, 
you just don't get it you just don't understand me and then they say it all over again and i say no i still feel this way and here's the reason why no you just don't understand and that's just that's like the white liberal mindset you if you don't agree with them you just haven't researched enough you don't get it you're not smart enough to get it so let me think for you and no i can't do that not your business say go find my last message what the hell hmm I don't see your last message. It's too far. But salute to you, man. Won't be long because they are taking them benefits away from black folks and giving it to illegals. When they take away housing and food stamps, that's it. Oh, man. When they take away housing and food stamps, that's it. They got the men that they want to go to prison and they got the women that's going to be in prostitution. I heard Joe Button say something that I agree with. They say Drake is promoting, uh, he, Joe Buttons believe that Drake is promoting uh, the young lady. Uh, what is it, Gorilla? What's the young lady that Drake, uh, that Joe uh, Buttons is thinking that Drake is uh, promoting? Let me see. Let me go to YouTube. I know as soon as I type it in, one of y'all gonna have it in the chat. Joe Budden. Uh, so sexy red. Joe Budden is saying that Drake is being paid to promote sexy red. And to the untrained mind, you would think that Joe Budden is just hating. But if you know anything like I know, sexy red teach little girls destruction they teach uh young boys that young girls are not pr nothing but promiscuous objects that you can buy and so uh her music is detrimental in my opinion so what better way to pump her to the masses than to have her stand next to somebody who is really beloved by our community and it will put a spotlight onto her and people will say, well, hell, if Drake like her, then I like her. Because surely we want our daughters to hear about their booty holes. We want all of us men, we really want our daughters to rap and start singing about their booty holes and their coochie holes and how much they get, you know, you can pay them for their, you know, good stuff. Surely all of us men, we want that. We want our daughters just twerking in the street on top of cars sex workers yeah i mean every father inspires their kid to listen to a sexy red we love it i mean fuck out of here but once they take those benefits away they have already primed our children and uh and the baby mamas up to being more naked the kids, if you look at what the kids are walking around with, they're walking around with the same outfits as their mamas. So they're half naked. Uh, they're passing laws that they can actually have minor attraction. So when you're putting your little kids in these little tight outfits, um, when an adult get a hold of your little kid, it's going to be a misdemeanor soon because they're going to have minor attraction. And you're voting for all of this stuff, but acting like you're against it. But it don't make any sense. Uh, but once they make it to where these grown men are just getting misdemeanors for talking to your daughters. And then now a lot of you women are going to be put out of these Section 8 homes. And you already know there's been an old saying for a long time ago. When a woman goes broke, she does she do what she got to do. You know, you know what I'm talking about, Russell Red. A lot of them, a lot of them boys down there in Texas know what the pimping game is. You break a woman down, and then she do what she got to do. And if they put away housing for some of these women, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! 
I saw a video of Sexy Red before she turned into this person that acts like she just likes to have sex all day. Uh, it don't even seem like she she's from America. It sounds like she talked plain good English. I'm clearly against black women because I don't want them to be sex workers. Okay, that makes sense. Because I said I don't want my daughter twerking on top of the cars in the streets. That means I'm against them. Wow. What an ignorant person. No wonder you got a mask on your face. <laughs> no wonder you got a... So I would be for black women if I say, yeah, man, Sexy Red is great. We want them to talk about their assholes and booty holes in public and, 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 and sex and all that. And we want our daughters to join in. That would be me loving black women then, huh? <laughs> what an ignorant fuck. I wish I could meet you in person. Golly, I would love to shake your hand. A guy like you, I would love to shake your hand. These small hands will become big if I can shake your hand. Lord have mercy. The ignorance people say. Big right guy. I'm like, oh, you kind of got to study a little bit of politics on what's going on, right? Because like, why? Why would I want to study politics? Uh, the taxes you pay is politics. Yes. Right? The policies in your community is politics. Homelessness is politics. Yes. The war that happened that wasn't safe is politics. All that stuff is okay. I got to pay attention to it. So, a, a Nikki Haley, very eloquent, incredible speaker, mm -hmm. tough, right. strong, good background. Right. You know all of that. So now we're dealing with left, right, and then you have uh, <laughs> the the anti-establishment, the anti-establishment and the establishment. Okay. The anti-establishment is not Republican. Like Kennedy's were anti-establishment. Okay. okay? Uh, uh, Reagan was semi-anti-establishment. Uh, uh, Trump, definitely anti-establishment, right? You can go, Lincoln was anti-establishment. Mm -hmm. These are anti-establishment guys. Mm -hmm. Establishment is the big families. You know, you see some of the guys that have been president. I heard my daughter singing that Taylor song, Make Me Water. And my thumbs turn into magnets going into choke mode. But for real, what the hell is make me water? Make me water. Let me see. Taylor. Water. <clears throat> hey, sorry, I'm multiple times that's establishment when, when somebody's part of the establishment they're part of the same party okay it's no longer like a left or right nikki haley to me is part of the establishment she's an establishment right she's going to do what the establishment right's going to do and in many of the states she got all the democratic votes they they were willing to vote for her but you know some of the big money guys that are in new york establishment right. guys are willing to give them give her the money Let i can no to... longer remain in today's democratic party tulsi gabbard says she is no longer a democrat the potential Tulsi Gabbard VP. And where we are being told that we just have to comply and go along with whatever they say. American people uh, are smarter than this. However, we must remain vigilant to recognize their propaganda for what it is, pure lie. Unfortunately, we live in a time where- Man, oh my God, your daughter was singing this song? I had heard this song before, but I ain't know what it, I ain't know what, Lord have mercy. Your daughter was singing this song? That's what I'm saying. They have these kids singing these songs that's about sex. Cause this is a this is a catchy song. This is a nice ass song. But goodness gracious, uh, no child should be singing this song. Make me water, make me sweat, make can you blow my mind? You want a kid singing, can you blow my mind? Jesus Christ. Man, 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 man. I don't care about the president being nice. I want the job done. We are not friends, and you you ain't dating him. I know that Stephen. I know that Stephen been listening to you. I know. I know Stephen been listening, yeah, man. But he's too stupid to implement it. I don't, man. Look here, I'm a grown man. I got enough friends, and some of my friends ask to borrow too much goddamn money. So all of this friend stuff is overrated. I don't need my president to be my friend. I don't need my president to be white, black, Asian. I need them to be a person that's going to be fair and impartial and be about America first. And whatever color, man, woman, whatever that is that can do that job without voting or without doing identity politics or focusing on one group, if he can focus on all Americans or she can focus on all Americans 
or whatever you identify with all americans then i'm all for you i don't give a damn about your sexual orientation i don't give a damn about your color i don't give a damn about none of that i care about who can get the job done i'm not asking the person that come over here to fix anything in my house hey who do you sleep with by the way because i don't want you working on my wires if you sleep with a man i don't give a damn i'm not asking any woman that come over here to clean up hey before you clean up do you like donald trump i don't give a damn can you get the job done we got to focus on the task at hand and what is the purpose instead of all this feelings he got mean tweets so fucking what the man get the job done biden ain't got no tweets the motherfucker sleep is he getting the job done I don't care who the next president gonna be. Are you gonna get the job done? I don't give a damn how mean you are, how whatever you are. Are you gonna get the job done? Do I think a sleeping ass president that can't even address the nation right now without a teleprompter and he gonna read, repeat the line because he don't know that you ain't supposed to read that part. <laughs> Do I think he can make it another four years alive? I that, I would be scared that he going to die during the presidency uh, because of old age. The man is teetering on dementia. We can all see it. I don't know why they don't have a, a what's her name? Kamala, the fake black woman. I don't know why they don't have her running as a uh, running against Trump. They need to have her running. They're going to try to sneak her in through the back door because they know damn well that whatever they're hitting him with. That shit ain't going to keep him going for four years. I'm telling you, what we need to do is have uh, Trump and Biden have a bike race and whoever win the bike race will become the fucking president. We got to have a mobile there president. Can't have no motherfucker can't even ride no bike. Can't even talk without a teleprompter. Come on now. Think about it. I know some people are going to be offended by that. And I would like to hopefully you are educated enough because there's a lot of educated people out there. I'm just a dumb little bus. And guess what? I'm dumb enough to know that you have every right to say whatever you want to say. And I'm dumb enough to leave you alone while you're doing so. And so that means that I have every right to say what I want to say. And I hope you smart enough to leave me alone while doing so. No tweets, just sleep. <laughs> Salute to you, everybody. DJ Memphis understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Where free speech is under attack. Whatever they say goes and we, we have to just fall. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, you owe them an apology. Taking <laughs> on Kamala Harris on a debate stage before, I would look forward to doing that again. interview with Don Lemon who I respect by the way I so that was a clip of it but oh man we've been at this thing for almost two hours I got I got the full clip I just wanted to go over that part <laughs> a dumb little bus uh but we got a clip that was just a clip of it but we almost at the two hour mark and I got some things I want to accomplish today so I might come back at y'all with a couple pre-records but I do want to do a second part to this video because he did a two hour long interview and he said a lot of dumb things <laughs> and, there was, and there was more things that i could highlight that this guy should never sit down for two hour interview saying this much dumb shit because then guys like me can go behind him and, and uh well not behind him can point out and uh go over the video and point out his hypocrisies uh we need to get our tribal government back um back up we're the original people of the land and don't need foreigner government governing us. Oh, this is Brave Hawk 334. Oh, shit. Somebody said no diddy. No diddy, no doubt. <laughs> Everyone knows 
is law uh is, is lawfare period what everyone knows it is it's lawfare period or chris were you trying to say warfare <coughs> lawfare i'm missing the point another race hustler mm. Mm -mm -mm. well listen y'all that's it for me I'm about to go out here and uh, pound the pavement a little bit. Uh, yeah, I got some things I got to figure out. So I can't be on live figuring things out. And then I'll come back and talk some crap with y'all. I'll be on 2.0 when I come back. Um, so if you haven't joined Kwame Brown Bus Life 2.0, come on over there. We get a little more spicy over there, but they done tampered me down on YouTube. They watch everything I say. They flag everything I say. So I try to just tap it down a little bit. Hmm? Godfrey need to put an alphabet label on his flyers. Why? <laughs> but salute to y'all, man. Let me put this uh, overlay up. Here's some of the channels. And I rock. Oh man, thumbnail lady gonna kill me because I got a new and approved uh, actual layout like this, and it it includes more names and it excludes some name. It's no beef if you're excluded because I'm doing this for free. So it ain't no problem. Trump hush money trial begins April 15. Trump hush money trial begins April 15. What does that mean? That just means he cheated on his wife. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with us Americans. What are you talking about? Your husband probably cheating on you or you cheating on him. And then we call Bill Clinton the first black president. And he got head in the White House. And this is not allegedly I think I snapped. The lady sold the dress that supposedly, supposedly his jizzle came on. So how do you have one standard for Trump and then you don't have another standard for this other guy? Bernita, you don't make any sense, ma'am. Thank you for the four ninety nine, But ma'am, we had a president get fellatio in the White House. And because that man tried to pay to keep his marriage, he tried to pay hush money so to, that his wife would not know that doesn't make him unpresidential because we already had the blackest president in United States history get fellatio in the White House. So it would have been better if he would have got it in the White House and not pay. So stop the press. You motherfuckers, you kill me with this shit. You kill me with this shit. No, Baker, man, it ain't good. Lord, it's just I used to do this on Facebook. These people are so blinded. It's like, God damn, if you beholden to one side, then you make those weak arguments like that that don't make any sense. I keep saying both sides do the same thing. You're saying Trump got some sex and paid a woman off. Bill Clinton got some head in the White House. So stop it. No, no, no. Jesus, quit trying to tell me that a man did something that was inappropriate. He's a man. Women do things that are inappropriate too, but don't tell me that a man did something inappropriate. I get it. I know it. Jesus. But she come up here with this one-sided shit. Why won't she super chat that? Hey, I'll keep it down the middle. Bill Clinton got head in the White House. But she won't keep that down the middle. She won't super chat about that. Okay, she happened to be pregnant. Cheating on the pregnant wife makes sense to a lot of men. If you go out and you look at the most times women got cheated on, it was because they was pregnant. Shit, the errors of men, you will never understand, ma'am. But he couldn't bend his pregnant wife up like he could do that porn star. You ever seen that girl sex tape? And she was swallowing him up. Have you ever seen that lady swallowed? Have you ever been swallowed up? That's why Trump cheated. That girl was swallowing. She swallowed up. Yeah, that T.D. Jake style. Bernita, you tripping. You one-sided. 
the fact that she's pregnant, the Bible does not say if they're pregnant, it's more of an offense. Pregnant or not, both of those men cheated on their wives, ma'am. Biden is running, not Clinton. Okay, ma'am, but you brought character to the table, though, ma'am. You brought the fact that he had sex with a woman, and I'm saying you love Bill Clinton, and your eye a little crooked, but you love Bill Clinton, and he got head in the White House. So there's no difference. So it's no. Okay? You need to leave it alone, ma'am, or hit the link. Because I can tell the way your eye cocked like a pistol, you're going to get upset. That right eye of yours. Let me see. If I'm facing you, it's your right eye. Now, that gap kind of sexy. Now, I, I don't mind the gap. Goddamn. Especially if you can fit your tongue through there. I don't mind the gap. But all I'm saying is that eye a little cocked like a pistol. So you might not understand shit I'm saying because you one-sided. Don't be one-sided, ma'am. You got to call things down the middle. I'm a man that called things down the middle and so that people don't like me because of it. But you, ma'am, are not going to come up here and tell me that there's no that there's not a difference. One man got hit and the other man had sex. Yes, he tried to pay to cover up his situation. That's between him, God, his wife and that woman. That ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Yeah, she's using that far leftist talking point, but she can't use that up here because we call it down the middle over here. I'm not beholden to nobody. She's going to show that she's hypocritical. Okay, I'm going to drop the link. I'm going to drop the link for you because I'm not going to let you just type all day. Now, you better not sound like Chewbacca. You better come up here and articulate yourself very well. And you better not be screaming and yelling. Bernita Applepone, you got to put me on. Bernita, Bernita, Bernita. Bernita Applepone, you got to put me on. Bernita Applepone, you got to put me on. Come on, Bernita, 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 Bernita Applepone, you got to put me on. Where you at, boo? Bernita, Bernita, the link is in the chat, so you got to put me on. Bernita Applepone, you got to put me on. <laughs> Bonita, oh, you're not going to hit the link. Oh, another scary cat. Jesus, I thought we was going to share thoughts and ideals. I thought we was going to be able to build. Yeah, they applauded Clinton for getting hit and then destroyed Trump for doing the same exact thing. Cheating on your wife is cheating on your wife. Whether you're pregnant or not, cheating on your wife is cheating on your wife. Trump is a cheater. He cheated on his wife and ain't nobody going to denounce that or hide from that. He, I mean, not denounce that. You can denounce cheating on your wife. But what I'm saying is nobody is giving him a pass for that. He cheated on his wife. He got to suffer the consequence for it from his wife and everybody else. God or whoever else that's affected by his children or whoever else. But don't be sitting up here applauding Clinton, calling him the blackest president we ever know. And the only reason why you calling him that is because he got sex. So, uh, oral sex in the White House. Yeah, come on, log into the link. I got you back. I didn't offend nobody. I said, Benita Apple Pone, you got to put me on. Benita, Benita, Benita. Benita Apple Pone, you got to put me on. Benita Apple Pone, you got to put me on. <laughs> the hypocrisy of the left. This shit is crazy. Hillary Clinton is known, Bill Clinton is known as the first black president because he did some nigga shit he got head in the white house and this is not a legend and niggas loved him for it but now they don't like this man because they don't like him like stop the press stop the press i can see you i can tell you're lying because when you're replying stutter 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 come on bonita if your phone can text this much it's talking about fall in line, Kwame. <laughs> and what line is that? I was already in the cheese line. Goddamn. Well, I got to get in another line? Hmm? <laughs> hey, Kassar, I ain't, I ain't playing. I'm just, I, you know. I can tell you lying. Because when you're replying, stutter, stutter. 
Now, now, the, now the button don't work, but she could text all day. I tell you what, let me take away your ability to text in the chat. Uh, let me take away your ability to text in the chat, and then maybe you can find that link a little better. So now, Benita, the only thing you can do is hit the link. So now I know you're not wasting my time. <laughs> stay, stay on the plantation. <laughs> Yeah, we got her. We got her in the back. She blocked until she figure out. You mean to tell me you know all this shit? You smart Democrat woman, and you can't even hit a damn stream yard link. Oh man, tis tis. She can't even hit a, a fucking stream yard link. <laughs> Woo! She can't even hit a stream yard link. Old Petty Kwame at his best. I'm trying not to be. I changed. I, I dumbed down myself for like a year. <laughs> you mean to tell me? I dumbed down myself for like a year, maybe even two. Salute to the good head. <laughs> I just wanted to know from her, how do you condemn one, but you don't condemn the other? It don't make sense. So Benita was at them Bill Clinton parties. Yeah, like they always want to say something about one side and have you defend that side. I'm not going to defend Trump. I ain't married to him, but I, I can call a spade a spade that Bill Clinton did the same thing. Tell me, please don't, lady. KB, go enjoy your day. <laughs> no, I ain't got nothing but work to do. This shit is not going to be enjoyable. I got some tedious shit to do for a few hours. I don't want to do it, but it need to get done. So this is actually helping me procrastinate on something that I really need to do. So I'm all for it. Hit the link. And uh, yeah, hit the link and let's talk about it. But I knew she was going to run. And I knew she was going to run because she knew the shit she was saying didn't make no sense. Oh, I finally got her up here, y'all. I knew I was going to talk enough shit to get her up here. <laughs> but Nita, you can turn your camera off. I'm going to add you to the stage. You can turn your camera off so you don't have to blank it out. There's a button that turns your, that'll turn your camera off. Well, I got to overlay up anyway. But Nita, you on the show. Hello. Hello, Mr. Brown. Oh, how you doing? That boy, oh, you, you sure you all the way up? I am. I, well, I, I'm... Do like this real quick. <clears throat> <clears throat> There you go. I know. It's it was a late night, so I, I apologize. You was turning up or studying? I wasn't turning I was listening to you, you know, and oh. others. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry for the raspy voice, but it's um, okay. So tell me what you're thinking. Go ahead. I'm going on mute. No, it's it's just that, you know, I, I do want people to be balanced when it comes to this election. And unfortunately, we have a lot of misinformation being uh, put out on our social media uh, platforms. So a lot of people, because they don't they don't di diversify where they get their information, they get locked into one platform and that one platform may be given disinformation. So I'm just, I just want people to diversify in where they get their information. Okay, so what does that mean in diversify? Because you said something about uh, the trial of Donald Trump starting in April 15th, which I don't know what that had to do with this show. But so, I responded back that Bill Clinton was known as the blackest president ever because he got fellatio in the White House. And that's not a legend. So what do you say to that? You're going to bring that part up. So um, nobody can, um, nobody is perfect. But what the reason why I brought up that Trump's um, hush money trial is beginning April the 15th in a, in a couple of weeks is because the way that the conversation was going as if Trump is so moral, so, has this such moral high ground that he does no wrong. And I'm like, this man has 91 indictments, 88 now. They took away a few, six of the indictments, but he has 88 indictments and he's a presidential candidate. 
Biden has none. Okay, so let me ask you this. You said the sources of people. Who who do you go to for your news? I go all over the place. I mean, I, I go here, YouTube, Twitter, uh, cable news. I, I have different sources. I don't just stay locked into, um, quote, you know, your Fox News. They, I'm, I'm sorry, um, but um, I, I, if you are, you know, Fox News, Max, Ion, watcher or listener, I would highly recommend you diversify and go to other stations because um, they um, a lot of times have one-sided news. I'll just say that. Am I still here? Hello? Can you hear me? Can, can, can you hear me again? I can hear you, but can you okay. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Can, I'm just making sure you can hear me. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, mm -hmm. good. So with, with that being said, being balanced, I'm a guy who's balanced. I watch everybody. I watch CNN. I watch Fox News. I watch everybody. And I watch Roland Martin. I, I'm, I'm talking about anybody who's talking politics. I watch them and I listen. And... I don't, I, on the left, I don't see them talking about the border crisis. I don't see them talking about the destruction in democratic land cities. You gotta turn on your YouTube off in the background, please. Are you talking about me? Yeah, your YouTube is on in the background. I hear uh, myself talking. Oh, okay, she dropped off. Maybe she'll come back. She just gotta turn her YouTube off. But yeah, I, um, I love when they get into the whole topic of Oh, be diversified. Go see everybody. That's much to do about nothing. When you go see what's going on, you'll see that children are being pushed towards books that they shouldn't even be reading and things of that nature. And nobody want to talk about that. I watch both sides, so I know. Uh, you're back on the show. Can you hear me again? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. I don't know what happened. Yeah, your YouTube was on in the background, so it, it was echoing. I could hear oh. myself talking. Oh, it, it, did I fix it? I don't know what's... I don't think... I, I don't hear myself right now. So, yeah, just keep the YouTube okay. off. Okay. So, so, what I'll say about that as far as the border situation... Now, remember, Trump campaigned last time around on building the big, beautiful wall, which he never did or completed. Here's the thing. President Biden um, and the... the Well, the, the House is led by um, Republicans... However, they came up with a really strict border bill that was going to be the strictest border bill ever passed, had it passed. But the Republicans, Donald Trump contacted the Republicans and, and, and asked them uh, and, and kind of uh, hinted to them not to sign it or not to let it pass because he wanted to use that as a campaign. No, that's not, that's Talking not, true. that's not totally true. That's it not totally true. Is true. They hold on, hold on. Bill. Let me give, some, let me give some pushback. That okay, is not true. Ahead. The right. bi the bill that they tried to, the reason why they was holding up the money, because it was some things in that whole situation that involved some actual things that, that are no good. They were hiding in some LGBT points and some things that could be minor attracting towards children and that Trump was not going for. That's why he was saying drain the swamp. But also, let's not make this a Trump conversation because Trump is not in office, just like you said throughout one of your text messages. Uh, but Biden is in office right now. You, you're Now I'm hearing myself again. Uh, but Biden is in office right now and we have cities and these are democrat ran cities and these are the worst cities in the united states can you speak towards the crime that is going on in new york now women are getting slapped in the face randomly uh the subways are not safe uh dalton illinois is being ran into the ground can you speak towards the democrat ran cities so what what happens is they'll take one incident and highlight it. Actually, they keep saying that crime is going up. Actually, crime is down, but they won't let you know that they're going to. A crime um, is down where, ma'am? Exactly. Crime, crime is down all over. 
Oh. Um, I'm not now. Now hear me, Mr. Uh, Brown. I'm not coming up here as a political scientist or an expert. However, I, as a layperson, I do read. I do look at you know different sources. Okay, can you like source? That. Can you not to interrupt? Can you source your where you read that crime is down all over? Please. Um. Well, if you go on, um, well, if you go on, uh, the government, um, uh. Uh, sites uh you can find out what the statistics are like okay you can what, what's the name of the government site because i've well, never well, right i've never now, heard crime was down it is down um i will um because i'm trying to focus i don't come i don't know how to really work doing live i don't want to mess up anything so i won't be able to put anything in the chat or whatever because i don't want to do anything to knock me off line but the next time when i come in if um, I will be happy to put a link up where people can go, but people can Google it. They can Google what are the current crime rates in America today, and they will see that crime is down. But they're not going to let you know that. They're going to make you. They're going to. They're going to push every every election cycle. You're going to hear about the border, how um, you know just immigrants are pouring in. You're going to hear about that every presidential election cycle because it's a scare tactic. It's a it's a scare tactic, and it's also. Um, designed to make people of color feel like, oh my God, they're going to come in, they're going to take our jobs or whatever. That's to, that's all designed as um, propaganda, and and unfortunately, a lot of us fall for it. Um, the other thing that I the other thing that I wanted to um, say was, um, oh, about this latest th th what happened with the bridge in Maryland. Now, when the bridge in an, uh, many, many, what is it, Minneapolis collapsed, which is a predominantly, I guess, white city, or it's, it's you know, it, it's, I think it was a Republican city, they immediately passed funding to get that bridge put back together. But because Maryland right now has a black governor and a black mayor, um, let's just see how long it's going to take them to fund that bridge to get to help get the support they need to get that bridge back up. These are the types of things that people are overlooking. OK, but you say crime is down. Let me ask you this. So if a squatter come into your home, take possession of your home and you can't get in your home, is that a crime? Well, I mean, you are a smart man. That is another propaganda talking point no they, it's not a no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am i know somebody that's going through it right now it's not a <laughs> propaganda talking point he's been fighting for his home for six months and my question was is that a crime i don't know i'm again i'm not an expert for me i don't know it's not about being an expert not. it's not about being an expert i don't you, know if you, it's oh, a wait, wait wait you purchase your home i come in and take advantage of something that's supposed to protect a renter somebody that you made an agreement with not that i break in as you're trying to rent your home i can find a way to get into your lockbox key break into your home you're trying to sell find out a way to get a le lease agreement and now your home becomes my home is that a crime um i i again i don't know if it's a crime but i don't support that though I don't support that. I would not support. I'm saying water. the reason why crime is not down because that's at an all time high in America right now. And the reason why you don't know that is because the people that you're affiliated with and that you respect, they're not going to report on things like that. They're not going to report on black on black crime because it doesn't fit the narrative. But I'm pretty sure before the election, when a white person kills somebody black, the whole world would know about it because that's what that party does. They're not so, going to report the truth. Th no, that's on. But here, as you said, let's be balanced. That's going to be on both sides. Obviously, each side is going to put forth uh, narratives and information that favors their side. However, there is a there is the truth and facts. And um, right now, um, although let's go back to the squatter. Although I do not support that, I think every every legal measure that is needed. Uh, you vote Democrat, correct, ma'am? 
Um, I, I vote. I vote. My. So issue. then you you support it? Then you support the theft no, of I, someone's I home? Say, I said I I I vote my issues. I vote. So I do vote. you own? Do you own a home? I do own a home. So then you don't vote your issues. You're a hypocrite because the issue is is because of the way people have been voting that now people can come from overseas and they can take over that's propaganda. someone's house. That's propaganda. I'm okay. telling you. I just you, disagree with is, you because I know someone who's going through it in real life. That, you cannot you cannot just pass it off as propaganda on my show when I know somebody in real life that's been fighting for their property for six months. So I'm not going to let you say that it's propaganda. Okay. okay, but here's what I will say is let's even when you have a renter, there are certain laws that you just have to follow in order to get that renter that you want out of your home you you want correct to correct you you're 100 your percent correct and that's for a renter ma'am but what i'm saying is there's 1200 homes in atlanta that someone was trying to sell for their gain for their profit that's their right to do so and someone broke into their home by way of a window or their lockbox and the only thing they did was go online create a false record and now because it's a civil matter they can't be thrown out the home ma'am that is theft that is I, illegal I don't, support that. I don't support that i'm with you you support I, it by you support it by your vote ma'am i disagree with you no, you're saying that, that you don't support issue. hold on just let me land my plane i'll let All you right. talk for a long time but you're trying to make it a a kind of an argument when i'm landing my plane i'm making the point that you and this makes sense if not rebuttal please but i'm making the point that you vote on issues that supports you you are a homeowner and if you're not voting on issues that support you being able to keep your home if you're trying to sell it then you're actually supporting it and then i'll go on mute and let you talk okay so we can't take one issue and and make it as if and it's it's like what is it throwing out the baby with the bathwater? That you can't do that. No, no, whether whatever you vote for, there's going to be something that may go maybe an outlier. You know, um, I vote for um, protecting people with seatbelts, but there are going to be people be people that don't wear seatbelts. So you can't. I mean, we can't. We can't foreknow what. What, what's going to happen? We only can vote for the things for our, we have to vote our conscience and our, our issues. And right now, all I say is, Mr. Brown, please make sure that you, your listeners, go to different sources when they get their information because a lot of there's a lot of misinformation being placed out here during this election cycle. Ma'am, how do you feel about Joe Biden saying you're not black if you don't vote for him? I don't think that that was a smart statement, but I do think that um, he's done a lot um, for people of color. You know. Um, okay, can you name two? Black, can you name two things colors. he's done for people for color? Well, one. Um, well, when he does things for people of color, it it sort of helps everybody. One. No, you're not talking about everybody. You're talking about the LGBTQ. I, I got you on that. Because he hadn't done I, shit for black people. But go ahead. Tell me people of color that's, that are black. I'm assuming you're black. I am black. Okay. Tell me what he's done for people of color. Um. Well, again, I told you I'm not a political scientist. However, I do know that people of color are benefiting from um the uh directives that he passed to excuse student loans that's not being talked about i mean we it seems like there's a lot of people that want to bash uh president biden for trying to do things that help people wait are you um, saying you got your student loan excuse there are um i i i did i mean i i didn't have a student loan to begin with no 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 so in, you know somebody that got their student loan excuse um i just recently had a conversation with somebody that said that they got their student loan excuse so yes. they must didn't go to school for a very long time because do you know the cap that's on that school loan forgiveness 
because there's only a certain amount. So there nobody is, that uh, do you know? Go ahead. I'll let you finish. No, I, I, they're they're trying. I believe that they're trying to expand it. There, there's I think there's like a certain amount of billions of dollars of excused student loan debt, and they're trying. And President Biden right now is trying to expand it to even more students. But you're not going to hear that from the other side. What are they? What is the other side doing about student loan debt? What is the other side doing about trying to lower college um, cost? This is what I'm saying. Please just, you know, put on your thinking caps and op- please be open to to other um information other sources of news I'm sorry i'm losing my voice because i didn't plan on coming um up to talk i just want you all to really be informed and unfortunately the other side spews a lot of propaganda that takes hold and then other people start saying the same thing i rest my mic <laughs> I can't hear you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown? Uh, Andre, Andre, I'm going to have to send you your $50 back just for, this is a political conversation, and, and, and we're going to learn something for this, whether we agree with her or not. So I'm going to give you your $50 back just to not fly her out because I want people to see how people communicate when it comes to a conversation about politics. We don't normally have them, so we need to have this one. She's not being too, she's not being disrespectful. I just think she's a little misinformed because if you're going to be the person that talks about uh, checking all the different sources, then I would suggest that you go to more sources because I think your sources are more left leaning. Uh, and I and I don't think you can prove anything that you're saying. I don't think that you can show Donald Trump. I'm not Donald Trump, but Joe Biden. Uh, paid back anyone's student loans and the thing that they proposed was a certain amount of student loan and it was only a couple thousand bucks so the person that you're saying that got their student loans uh taken care of they wasn't 20 30 40 thousand in debt and that's what it takes to go to a major university so you need to watch more of your sources or you need to tell it in a way where it's more truth than just just oversight and I think you're very good at oversight. Okay, so you're, you know, I, unfortunately, because I'm just on my phone. No, no, but you backpedal every time we ask no, 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 no. you. No, 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 wait, 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 I'm no, not... no, I'm going to tell you, you came up here as a hard line saying, check your source. This is that. If you're going to be that person to tell people to check their source, when you reference something, you should have your source ready. Okay. You should have your source ready to go. I'm going to I'm going to look on my other phone because see I'm on the phone with you so I can't go to my source right now to to give you this information but now I'm going to try to quickly look up um hold on. And uh um, hold on. I got somebody in the chat say that's wrong KB. Okay, well the link is in the chat. You can come up here and tell me what's right. And, and come up here come up here with facts. That's I, what I that's what people that. need to not not you. I'm just speaking to somebody in the chat. Uh, those of you who want to challenge anything, I, the link is always in the chat for a discussion, not an argument. You can come up here with the facts, but if you're going to say cite a source and all this other stuff, then you should have the information. Okay, so the White House right now, I'm looking at it right now. If you Google student loan debt cancellation, a fact sheet from the White House will come up. President Biden canceled student, le- um, student loan debt. Um, hold on, I'm going to click on it. Cancel student loan debt for more than 150,000 loan borrows ahead of schedule. Um, it says today, President Biden announced approval of $1.2 billion in student debt cancellation for almost 153,000 borrowers uh, currently enrolled in the um, saving of a value but you education. but you have to you have to break that down per student if you keep reading you can break that down per student go ahead okay so because again um mr brown i didn't come up here to talk about um to go in depth about any particular issue i just know that 
when I need to go and get the specifics of each issue, I, I know that I can go to the source to get the exact amount, the exact um, number of how many students had their loan canceled. I can do all of that. Right now, I just want you to know that the information is out there and that it's happening and that it's facts. That's what I'm trying to bring to the table today. So if all of your student loan debt is canceled, how does that benefit the black community? Because we were talking about the black community. Most males don't go to college, college, let alone finish college. So how does that help the black community? So, um, well, one, well. And, and that was just approved. It hadn't been implemented yet. It was just, you said it was approved, right? No, there has been a portion of it that was approved. Okay. And um and but what he's trying to do is expand it and make and give even more um students um release them cancel out their loan debt. Th this is if you go to basically if you just go to uh whitehouse.gov, you can find out this information. It'll it's there. Um you probably can also find it um on the Department of Education's website as well. So um, but that's just, but again, I just want people to be informed and just to be open to, um, be open to, to, to facts really, because there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of, so, hold on. So somebody said, James Baker said his whole student loan was forgiven. How much is that? When you're that person that's getting your loan forgiven, who cares? It's like you, you, that individual does it. They doesn't have to pay anymore, you know, and there's a lot. But, of people but don't you understand that that's the thing that Lyndon Baines Johnson was talking about when I asked you about the black community? Well, you said Joe Biden has done more for the black community. Giving for loan forgiveness is not doing nothing for the black community. So what Most, I'm, okay, hold on. I'm sorry. Most kids, that was your black initiative. That was your black point. And I'm saying the only reason why you care about it is because it affects you. Majority of the black people I know, I'm from the hood. There was most people from my neighborhoods, they, they didn't even get on a plane, let alone go to somebody's college. So how is that going to help the black community? That's not going to help nothing. I'm literally from the hood, ma'am. And majority of my friends, they went to prison. They didn't go to nobody's college. So that ain't going to do a damn thing for the black community, as you so stated. That's going to do something for you and the people that you know. Now, what you made a bold statement. You said Joe Biden did something for the black community. What is your other example outside of college forgiveness that most black people in the hood don't even go to in the first place? OK, so a lot of times what happens is if somebody in your family is being um, if somebody in your family is benefiting from social programs that indirectly is helping you so if you have somebody in your household that has that didn't have health care before but now has health care that is one less bill that you have to worry about one less thing that you have to worry about so sometimes it may not be directly to that particular individual but it may help somebody in their family that overall helps the family dynamic. So, um, as you know, thanks to President Obama, a black president, we have um, more people have health care than ever before. So, and, and Joe Biden uh, was President Obama's vice president. So, obviously, he was on board with helping People, you know, just people of all races, people of all social economic statuses. So, I mean, there's a lot of good that is being done, but it's not being talked about. Okay, that's interesting that you mentioned the family dynamic. So let's start from there. The Democratic Party is in love with Margaret Sanger, a, a woman who has fell in love with the, the uh, abortions and uh Black Lives Matter is directly tied to the Democratic Party, who in their statement is against the nuclear family. So then how can you talk about family dynamic when you're voting against the nuclear family 
with the Democratic Party. Well, here's the right, Jack, um, causes. And I believe that the Black Lives Matter was hijacked, okay? Um, although it says Black Lives Matter, but it's being hijacked by maybe others that have an, another agenda. So again, ma'am, 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 you said you like you said you like facts. We're not talking about something that was hijacked, ma'am. I noticed that's your go to every time somebody bring a fact to you. That's not a hijack when you can go on the Black Lives Matter website and they wrote what they stand for, ma'am. And in black and white, they said they are against the nuclear family. Are you going to say that's misinformation as well? what i don't know what I, you know what i don't really follow black lives matter oh, so wow. i don't know what they no no what i'm but but you you mean you you make it seem that's why i said i vote issues i don't vote just all straight down democrat you see what i'm saying not you don't have to just vote straight down democrat you vote for your issues and i'm one that i you know i, I i'm not going to say how i vote one way or the other on um abortion rights and things like that however um it's a person's choice to choose that i mean i would choose life but you know people choose to abort for different reasons for some people for health reasons you know so i mean we can't but that's not going to be the end all be all with moving our country forward we have to work together to bring us together on issues that's going to move us together as a whole but ma'am how could we move together if every time you make a statement that i question you move the goalposts you're the one who introduced black lives matter you said black lives matter you said something about the family structure I didn't say uh, no black you mentioned you, you, you mentioned family structure family structure is totally being desecrated by the democratic party it started with Lyndon Bain Johnson. We just played the video about this. They gave women incentives to kick out men. And Black Lives Matter said they go against, they go against the family structure. And they uplift something that is not anything to do with unifying a man and a woman. But you're talking so about you're asked, organization. I'm not talking about an organization. I'm talking about a movement. Black Lives Matter is a movement and a organization, and they almost condemned every black person in the world that did not agree with this stupid ideology and this chant. And when people read behind the scenes and said, wait a minute, why would I chant for something that me as a man has no parts for me involved in it? And so when people when people actually did that and realized this is just an LGBT agenda, and they're hiding behind black people then people realize that and you see the leaders of black lives matter are now all around white people they all live amongst white people and they use black ignorance black pain and black dysfunction the same way i think the party use every year how did you feel about hillary clinton pulling hot sauce out of her purse so um i'm not i don't know anything about hillary so you've never seen hillary clinton pull hot I, sauce out I her purse it. i have it and, and here's what i'm going to say mr brown about how you think that because somebody may vote democrat no no, no i'm not talking about democrat i'm no, talking no, no, about I pandering I, I just want to know one i'm going to go on mute I've but never, i want to know your, i can't speak on it because i've never seen it I, you, honestly, okay well I've let me play the video it. calm down i want to play the video i want you to see it because i want your actual answer because she's done it and if you want to you can google it you already check you already say check the source i have the source go to the breakfast club and charlemagne the god and the person that you said you would vote for hillary clinton go look up hillary clinton breakfast club and she pulls out hot sauce out of her purse now i want to know how do you feel about a, a white woman pandering to black women and black men about eating hot sauce because i don't think that has anything to do with presidential status or anything so can you please speak towards that sure although i haven't i've never seen no i want you to video. see it i want no, no, you no, i want no, you to I mean, see it i want you to check though, the source it's not going to change what i'm getting ready to say it so should you don't, to, you don't need to play it because again once again it's feeding into the you know i don't need to see it actually i don't think it was um 
I, I don't know what context it was done in. Context and is pandering because black people eat hot sauce on chicken. So she's down with the blacks because she eat hot sauce. Did Just like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, ma'am, hold on, ma'am. Just like Kamala Harris is down with the blacks because she liked Tupac. It's the same pandering that they do every year. And the fact that you're getting triggered and now that I can't get out my words because I go on mute while you're talking. But every time I'm making a point that makes you not look so favorable, you always don't know. You always forget. They pander to black people and they give us free shit for a vote that we don't need to be given to people unless we're going to get a free opportunity to be where they are, which is on top, ma'am. I don't care if somebody don't like me. I don't, I don't need a president to like me. I need fair opportunities. And what you sound like is that every time I bring something to your attention, you don't know. You forgot, but you know all of the talking points of CNN. You know every talking point of CNN and all of these people, and that's why you came in the chat talking about a Trump trial. Well, why wasn't there a Bill Clinton trial? Because he got head in the White House. So, again, I didn't see the Hillary Clinton clip that you're talking about, but it still wouldn't change how um, I guess I would vote or view uh, Mrs. Clinton, just like Donald Trump um, tried to, uh, Donald Trump is selling the gold tennis shoes. You don't think that's pandering to black people? I think that's called making money. I think that's called capitalism. You put out an opportunity, you put out a shoe. Michael Jordan has shoes, everybody has shoes. People like them, they buy them. But when you're pulling out hot sauce, trying to be down, and you're, and you're saying that you listen to Tupac and smoke blunts. And when you're saying that you're black when you're not, you're just pandering to people at that point. I think both are examples of potential pandering. Well, we can agree Donald to disagree Trump on that. Dis yeah, okay. You said we can agree or disagree. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. So we can agree to disagree on that point. Okay, well, okay. We can agree to disagree. So can we move on to just... Because, hopefully... you're, because you're not offended by... You're offended by Trump selling shoes, but you're not offended by a white woman bringing hot sauce to pander to black people, and you're not offended by a white man telling you you're not black if you don't vote for him. So I, I, I kind of... How do you move past a white man telling you you're not black worried about another white man selling shoes and doing business? It doesn't make any sense. It's like somebody took your brain out and put their brain in. It I, really I, doesn't make sense. No, I didn't say that I wasn't offended. I just said I don't know what context it was. I, I don't know because but I But you understand seen the it. context of Joe Biden saying that you're not black if you don't vote for him. And you said you wasn't offended by that, but you're offended by Donald Trump selling shoes. I don't follow. I didn't say that I wasn't offended by it. I did not say that. What I said was... So were you he, offended? Um, I... I don't I don't know how I put it this way. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about it. I, I feel like it's a stupid mis uh, statement and it shouldn't have been made. I just I don't uh, I don't agree with this, the statement. But what I'm going to say is we all misspeak. We all do. We're human. We are, we're not perfect. So on both sides, nobody's perfect. What I look at is if you say something or do something that is offensive and then you apologize for it or say hey i maybe that i shouldn't have done that then i let's i say let's forgive and move on so if trump apologized you vote for him there would have to be a gotcha <laughs> no, 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 no. Let, me, let me no let me say i was going to say he there would have to be a lot of atonement because there's so much it's like they're so they're you so even crazy. move the goalposts on the apology you just said and that's something that i could agree with i just found a through line with you i said okay that's a christian based woman someone apologized you can move on and then when i asked you the same thing about somebody that i know you don't like you said oh it would have to be a level of atonement that's not what you just said that means that's a different level for everybody else <laughs> 
No, I said there would have to be a. You got to have a hard there line. There would have to be a lot of apologizing because. Well, you, you that, so that should have been the, that should have been the hard line that you stand on. I didn't because, say I wouldn't right, forgive him though, but I didn't say I wouldn't forgive him. I understand, but what I'm saying is, I can never get you to stand on a hard line on what you're actually saying. Because if I'm if I'm going to be the person that say, look here, man, if somebody do something wrong, as long as they apologize, then I can forgive them. I can move on. And then when somebody say, well, what about that person? Oh, no, hell no. It's a lot of atonement for that person. Oh, no. That's not the same thing. If Donald Trump, seriously, if Donald Trump really. <laughs> Hold on. He, let me read out this super chat. Let me put some respect on this super chat. Kamala Harris says she listened to Snoop Dogg, Tupac, while smoking weed in college years before they made music. And see, you're not going to talk about that. You're not going to talk about the fact that. That is pandering to the fullest. They're not even pandering. They're lying. Tupac didn't even make music when this woman was in college, nor did Snoop. Did, but where did so that look how look come? how important but look how important that? hold on look how important it is for them to trick black folks that they will lie and use our celebrities that we like to the extent they think we're so stupid not to even look it up. That's a shame. That's more than. That's more than pandering. They think we're flat out stupid. So, so you're doing what you were accusing me of doing. So a person puts that information in the chat. I don't know where that came from, who put it out, if it's true, if it's not, if we can get Kamala on the line and see if she said that. Um, uh, go, to the, go to the breakfast club, ma'am. She was on the breakfast club, another source. Cause that's like the nigga news. We go to the breakfast club and they lie to us on the breakfast club breakfast club. Cause that's how they get black people brainwashed. So go to the breakfast club. You will see Kamala Harris saying that she smoked weed and was listening to Snoop Dogg and Tupac. And it went viral because everyone knows the age of Kamala Harris. Everyone knows that Kamala Harris was a stickler on marijuana when she was out in Oakland or the San Francisco area. She locked up a lot of dudes for marijuana and now this woman came up there pandering acting like she smoked marijuana herself in college but so she might have smoked marijuana okay it's so is that not pandering the fact that snoop dogg and tupac did not do music when she said that it could be a form of pandering oh thank you finally yeah absolutely that's not a form that is a flat out lie but Tupac because, and Snoop Dogg didn't even do music then. They weren't even out then. Again, she could have misspoke. She it could have been somebody else that she was trying to call. Misspoke. Oh, oh my God. Know. So I would I be know. would I be would I be would it be a miss? Would I be misspeaking if I say I did music with Elvis Presley? I mean, you know. Come on now. Yeah, now you, you have a point. I'll, I'll give I'll I'll give you that, Mr. Brown. But again, without I really don't like to speak on things if I haven't seen it myself or I haven't read it or looked at my did my own research on it. So it's really hard for me to um, comment on something I don't know the full context on. I really don't like to do that. Okay. Well, ma'am, are you are you willing to stand on your comments with other people on the stage? Because I was having a one on one with you, but there's been other people waiting. Yeah, would you like would yeah. you like to share your thoughts with other people as well as well yeah, you know whoever wants to come on the stage that's fine okay got it what's going on oh, fellas all right kwame brown what's going on i want everybody to know before i speak i'm not just speaking like her she's speaking from uh she read this and she read that i'm speaking from reality okay i'm speaking i'm on the ground i'm in nyc Every topic you just touched, I was involved in. One, BLM. Let's let's take care of that. When I saw in New York City, five days in a row, black people marching, I said something not right. Usually we march one day, two day. Al Sharpton come out on the third day, sing Jesus music, <laughs> and everybody go home. I said this different. So I took my iPad, I have evidence of this. I took my iPad and I wanted to know who is this BLM. On the fifth day on 110th Street on Fifth Avenue, I saw a group gathered talking about their BLM and I started filming. And I walked with them from 110 all the way to Second Avenue on 86th Street. And let me tell you what I documented, I have the proof. 
when I was marching with those people, first of all, I was led by white folks. That's the first thing. And when I look around, it was only 10 black folks and like 30 white people. And, and this was a Black Lives Matter event? I'm probably? talking about BLM. I'm talking oh, wow. about the ex I was there. I'm not this lady reading stuff. I was there. And the protest was uh, Black Lives Matter. And everybody said it. We want reparations. And the white people around me said, we want reparations. And I'm looking at them like, how the hell you want reparations? You're going back to your condo. <laughs> and right after that, they say, F Donald Trump. And I said, aha, uh -huh. that's what this is about. Right. And then I walked with them and I asked the leaders because they had it well organized. So I knew money was involved. Like they had bikers blocking the traffic so that we can march. They had people with water coolers. It's, it was like a marathon when people handing you water to keep going. And I asked the leaders, I said, hold up, how does this help me? How does this help my community? Your ideals, how does that help us? Oh, it's racial equity, it's racial this. I said, I understand that, but what if Donald Trump got to do with me? What does um <laughs> got to do with the white people that's following right now in the group? How does that help us? And that's when I went home, I looked up BLM and I saw what you was explaining to the lady that these people are a disruptor. First of all, they Marxists. Black people ain't no damn Marxists. That come from Europe. Preach, brother. You know what I'm saying? And then they saying we want to disrupt the black family. See, this is how it started. Uh, woman and woman, man on man. First of all, I'm, I, I could speak on also the immigration thing because my friend is the manager at the goddamn immigration, the, the where they have them, the uh, the the what you call that, the shelter. She's the manager there, okay. And I know what's going on there. And my thing is, any one of these topics I can talk about because I know personally. I know. Well, hold on, brother. I'm gonna I'm gonna put an overlay up because this young lady seemed to not be. No, able to she's see. like the rest of them. Yeah, I, I young lady, if you can just turn your camera off because. It looks like you got your thumb over your camera, and I don't want you to mess around and take your thumb off, and then we see something we ain't supposed to see because that will mess up the YouTube. So I'm just going to leave you on. Uh, I'm going to leave that uh, overlay up. You can go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah. Please let me get it off because, like I said, I'm here firsthand. So I just knock out the Black Lives Matter thing. They really weren't to support us. They really... The, they were there to raise money and use our pain and suffering to do that. A lot of white people I knew, they just felt guilty and they went and they followed suit. That's 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 how they gathered all that money. It was really from white people money donating to BLM. And when you look at BLM, when they finally got the money, Kwame, when they finally got all that millions of dollars and they say, oh, I love black people, but you never bought one damn house around us you went and moving with the white folks not even in a prominent black neighborhood they bought a house they went and took that money and go live with the same people they say is going against us and as far as immigration Kwame Brown I seen that too I seen the buses coming in I know about the shelter and they're very biased between the 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 um Hispanics and the, and the um the Haitians that's in the shelter, they very biased because most of the people in charge are Hispanic, and I've no I don't want to get my friend in trouble, but I've known and I've seen things because she on her phone she could tap into the cameras in the shelter at home, and I've seen things and she had told me things. It's very biased what's going on, and I also want to mention that the Asians that's coming in they don't talk about them, the Chinese that's coming in you don't see them on the news. They don't talk about those guys, but I seen them call me Brown. I got video evidence of that too. I can send it to you. The Asians are right here on the our nose in Harlem. They moving them in vans, okay? And they have empty parking lots with the gates so you can't see behind it. They moving these Asians around and we don't know who these people are, okay? Who are they? Who are these people in Harlem? I don't feel safe at all. And how am I... Uh, legal. I came in legally, Kwame, as a legal immigrant. And I went through the paperwork and I paid. And I know others that did the same. And there was a young man I met at the bus stop. 
and his aunt kicked him out, but he's a legal citizen. And guess what? He can't get no help. He was begging for money. And I said, isn't that a shame that a legal citizen who come here the right way cannot get no help? But if you come here illegally through that border, not only do you come through the border illegally, but they fly you where you want to go. They put you on a bus where you want to go. They put you in a shelter. You get clothes. They get in Nike tech suits, okay? Clothes. They get food stamp, they get Medicaid, they're getting all the things that a citizen is supposed to get. And in California, because I got a cousin out there, he's telling me that they're about to give illegal immigrants, as long as they have a child, they're about to give them 400 and something thousand dollars for, for a house. And here we are as black folks, a house is very crucial when it comes to black economics or economics, period. You own a home that is a good economic tool for your family. And you telling me that we here suffering. We here asking for reparation money. We done built the country. The economy was built on us. All the descendants here, my children, their mother is the descendants of the slaves here. And you telling me my kids can't get that money, but you give her uh, illegal money. So all these things that this woman is on the panel talking about, not to mention I had to beat up a dude that was trying to go in the girl's bathroom in Bay Plaza Mall. What are you doing going in the woman's bathroom? Okay, that ain't right. There's young girls in the damn bathroom. Like all these idiotic ideologies, it is ruining the black culture because- And if you know, that, if you, not to cut you off, if you yeah. notice brother Keith, they yeah. never talk about the women that are afraid. They never talk about the woman that came out at mm -hmm. the uh, Planet Fitness. They never talk mm -hmm. about how they make women feel, but they claim that they're all inclusive. If you're all inclusive, right. don't you hear everybody out? Right. I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I could talk about certain topics. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm pro-black because that got me in a little trouble when I was. I used to beat up white folks when they moved in Harlem when I was a young boy, bust them in the head with the middle garbage can. You know what I'm saying? I've done things to say all these people talking about black power and I'm black and this and that. They ain't put in no work. They not certified to speak about that. And this is why you have examples like this lady on here. She is trying to make every excuses to cover for this particular Democrat Party. The Democrat Party, all this stuff that's going on, they never used to do all these things. The most I would say that they were guilty of prior to what's going on is a lot of the wars and the welfare. I, I, I'm an immigrant and I'm telling all black Americans that's soliciting, if you're a descendant of the slaves here, you born in this country, welfare, I understand, cause my mother went on it too when we first came, my mother went on it, but once she got on her feet, she, she left it because you can't grow on welfare. You can't, you know what I'm saying, exceed your economic potentials when another man is feeding you. And I saw what happened, the behavior in the ghetto, because I'm from the ghetto, the behavior in the ghetto is, okay, if I'm getting my bills paid and this paid, and the man can't be in the house, Kwame, let's not forget about that. Because I remember the social worker coming and looking around with the clipboard, and my daddy couldn't come there. And that told Thanks. me as a child, I used to cry when my father couldn't come to the house. I said, my dad, daddy was supposed to take me out today. Yeah. Well, you're going to have to meet them after. But see, they did that to make sure you have that distance from your father and this this extra connection with your mother so that no matter what she did, she, you knew that that's the only thing you got. So you, you, you look at her as this guy. So then when they control her and saying, well, we're going to stop this money, then she put the fear in you to say, oh, no, you ain't going to mess up this check. And so you, yeah. they, it was women putting children out. But let me let uh, TJ, uh, what is it, TJ, DA, conservative, say something real quick, and then we'll see if Miss Bernita got what's, something to say based on what you were saying. What's, what's good, my boy? Oh, yeah, uh, just TJ, the conservative hustler, just a little play on words. Okay, bet. I'm my bad. TJ, the conservative hustler, y'all. Yeah. Hey, but, um, yeah, she, she, she talking, that, she talking that, that far left talk, man, because nobody cares. Um... Nobody cares, Democrat, Republican, man, it could be Marvin the Martian that can come down here and give us a better way of living. If you're going to help us live better, protect our freedoms and our liberties and all of that, that's cool. 
But when we start going so far left, when identity politics start getting political power, now we got a problem. When we have to have the conversation about can a man pretending to be a woman can have access to women's space, and this is getting uh, talked all the way up into the Senate, Congress, we got a big problem. Uh, we're talking about things we can physically touch, things that we can get hold to. And when I look around the city, I'm in Columbia. I don't care who see who know. Listen, Democrats aren't doing anything. You don't see them until it's time to vote. You can walk around your community and, and look at this for yourself. It's overrun with immigrants. Every building, they don't have to, they don't have to tear the building down. We'll just move it out your community. We'll move it way away from you. You don't see them standing up saying, hey, let's not take away the Kmart, the Walmart, the Best Buys. Let's put another business here. Let's not make it a damn uh, uh, pod center where nobody can have to work in there. They don't stand up for anything substantial. And so that's the point. Hold on, somebody got to mute their mic. I, hold on, hold on, brother. I let Trey up and Bernita is back up and then Ion Zinc is up. But you guys got to mute your mic if you got noise going on. I'm just gotta I just gotta overlay up because I don't want to get porn bombs or whatever else some of these people do. But go ahead, brother. My bad. Oh yeah. But but as far as the real things, bro, we we that's what we on. Nobody cares about all and then you gotta look for language. Language is the main key. I don't know when this people of color business started coming around, man. But anybody talking that people of color, marginalized community, all that weak talk, that's the problem. You in America, if somebody don't want to give you a job, fine. For whatever reason, black, your breath stink, go make your own way. The problem is we trying to change what's in people's heart in this country. Facts. If somebody, Facts. Don't, if somebody don't like you, don't want to rock with you, fine. Don't whine and don't cry about it. And the last thing I want to do is make up laws and things to go push to get close by somebody who don't want me to hell around. And why do you so think that I, is? Because that it's a lot of that. Not to cut you off. I want to I want to hear your thought on that because I agree with you on that. Why do you think so many people because lust to be around people that don't like them? Blaming other people and, and squeaking out of a and squeaking out of hard work is easy to do. Not taking accountability. And letting uh, 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 discipline wither away is easy to do. It's comfortable. Ordering shit and wanting it right now today. I even I want my Amazon package tomorrow, if not the same day, damn it. We want that for accountability and discipline. And, yeah, and it don't work like that. And that's the problem. Identity politics is our biggest problem. I don't care what you do in your bedroom. I still can love you. When I was in the streets, heavy, selling, doing whatever I was doing, my uncle, who's zero tolerance, who loved when I was in the sports doing me, he knows I love my nephew. I don't love the act that he's doing. I can still love the person. I don't care what you're doing. When you're grown with the consenting adults, I still can love you. I don't have to agree with what you're doing. But what you're not about to do, you're not about to push it and force anything on me I don't want. And that's the left's problem. They don't like it. Force it on them. Take what they believe away. Force what we want. Take the Bible. Take prayer out of school. Force the weirdness in on kids. That's the problem. Now we're running into a problem of morality and good hearts versus immorality and bad hearts trying to force immorality on us. And enough is enough. It's time for men and adults to say enough is enough. You're not reading this to our kids in school. I don't want a grown man with a Magnum P.I. beard walking up in the women's bathroom saying today he identifies a woman. No, today you're going to identify as an ass whipping. And that's what it is. But then if you do all that, it's, it's, it's like a it's like a, a pitfall of confusion. That's their thing. Gay women can come out screaming Black Lives Matter. How can a Black Lives Matter when you involved with a black woman and you don't want to be involved with the nuclear family? They got us blinded by common sense, bro. And when you blind it by common sense, we got a big, big problem. I'd like to respond to some of that. Could y'all hear me? Oh, oh, my bad. One more last thing. I meant to ask you this. Dude, uh, Ms. Benita, can you, can you please tell me what a woman is? Can you please tell me, do you believe that today, me, all 6'4", 225 pounds of myself, I can identify and just say today, 
I'm going to walk up in the women's bathroom, start shaving, start changing, and the instant one walk up in the bathroom, you're going to be totally fine with me saying, today I am a female. Yes or no? I, I align with you a lot with, with what you said. Um, just because one is a Democrat or votes um, for Democrats doesn't mean that they aligned with every single uh, issue, social issue. And I, I believe in the nuclear family. I, I'm, I would like to see black men come back home, take care of their children, be, get married, love on black women. I'd love to see all of that. And that's, um, that's a, that's something that we have to deal with in our own community. Not another community can fix that for us. We have to. But what is a woman though? I heard the first part. What is a woman? He asked you. A woman, what a woman is a natural born woman. That's what I believe. I again, that's why I said I align with him on um, a lot of his what what he had to say, because I, you know, I, I believe in one man, one woman, you know, should procreate, have children um, and create a legacy. But that's not what the Democratic Party and Black Lives Matter believe in, though. But see, here's the thing the, the, what, what you all are getting confused is the Black Lives Matter movement doesn't speak for the Democratic Party. They are just one movement. I don't even find. No, I, I, said, I said Matter. both. I said the Democratic Party and Black Lives Matter because the Democratic Party pumped food stamps and that ultimately made a man be kicked out of the home. So I said both. You're giving one an excuse. So the Democratic the Party and Black Lives Matter. But here's the thing, Mr. Brown. Why did the black man leave his home, period? Because he wasn't he wanted. He wasn't wanted. If you're going to choose money over me, I'm out. If if I love you, we can struggle together. We're going to figure this out. Because I know the trick in giving, some, giving somebody money. That's the oldest trick in the book. Whatever I pay for, I can do what I want with. I got trucks that I buy. I can leave them outside in the sun. I can go buy a brand new pair of Jordans and leave it out in the rain. What I pay for, I could do what I want with. And that's what they're doing to us. They don't respect us. They buy us. They come out every three or four years and promise us something that we probably won't get. They talk of rep reparations and all of these things you speak about. But what do we actually get? What do we actually change? Oh, Nothing. They do identity yeah. politics where they uplift you women while pushing down men. And you guys are happy because you're not at the same level as us. So here's the thing, though. A lot of men will talk about you just said that they did the women wanted the money or whatever. I would love to see a documentary of the women in that day and in that time speak for themselves. We have a well, lot of Judge Joe today. Brown is a judge that saw these cases and he came up on my show and I just played a video. And if not, I'll go back to it. We're talking about documented facts. You said you like documents. He talks about a family that was on welfare and how many children and grandchildren resulted in that welfare state. Some of these men had 30 children. Some of these women have 15 and 20 children. And the grandkids have 15 and 20 children. We're talking about a cycle of dysfunction. And that's caused by a party that will not allow people to compete. You're not going to compete given things. I've competed my entire life and wherever I fall short at, wherever I stack up amongst the competition, I'm okay with that. I did my best. We have people that are not competing. When you're given things, you're not going to compete, ma'am. Um, Mr. Brown, let me just say this. It's, uh, we have to also, it's, we have to also think about personal responsibility. If people are having 10, 15 children or whatever, at what point is the does the responsibility lay on them to say, you know what, we don't have the means or the money to have 10 children, so maybe we shouldn't have all of these children. So we do have to take some personal responsibility. Now, as far so as- So we're talking about personal responsibility, then there will be no welfare state. That doesn't make any sense. How can you talk about, how can you preach personal responsibility while also saying, let's vote for the people that's trying to give us the most free shit and take our rights away? So again- And hate all, the police. No, here's the thing. Um, there's so many, there, there's so many different issues that um, are being laid at the 
Democrats' feet as the problem, where I don't hear anyone on this panel talking well, about talking about what Republicans are doing for us. Well, what is, what is oh, their oh, platform? Oh, let me, are let they me trying to raise? Are they trying to raise? Let me say this to that. But let me can I can I finish? Can just because you talked for a long. They, I don't hear anybody talking about uh, what laws that... He was just about to talk about it. If you want to know, let him go. If you want to know, don't just wait, say something to finish me, it. You made a, hold on, hold on. You made a statement. You, I, I can't stand okay, when people I'll do that. Just, I can't, just, hold on, hold on. I can't stand when people do that. I can't stand when people say... I never hear somebody talk about this. And then when somebody about to talk about it, you just want to keep talking for the no, sake of I'm talking. I'm going to even do better. Sorry talking about it. Yeah, I'm going to even do better for you, miss. Like I said, I don't got to read nothing. I'm living it. I'm going to tell you what's going on. New York City is the perfect example. You asking about the problems. Well, the Democrats created the problem. I'm just living in it. So when you talk about problems, your party that you supporting caused these problems with their policy. I'm living the policies. I was charged with attempted murder. I mean... <laughs> assault in the second degree right i went in the jailhouse there's a guy who shot somebody there's a guy him and his girlfriend burn a house down that's arson there's a spanish kid in there 19 years old he chopped his uh roommate's arm off i'm in there with these guys i'm like there's no way i'm getting out guess what we all went home no bail you put him back the same people i just did something other people did something and you're putting us back where we go back in the community to finish the job. Crime is high in my city because of that. Then let's not talk about I'm diabetic and now I got to travel from the Bronx to Harlem because all the dope fiends looted the damn pharmacies where I live. Loot. And guess what? The, the workers got to do. Watch them do it because guess what? The policy again. They coming right back out to come back to the pharmacy and loot again. Now, those pharmacies are closed down. The teens that was going to college that finally got a taste of their first job, they don't have a job no more. The pharmacies closed. And me and all the elderly black women, you like to talk about the black woman, miss. Well, a lot of elderly black women is on the MTA bus with me going all the way over the bridge, 145th to Harlem, to go to the pharmacy. These are your policies that your party put out. That's affecting me. The crime in my city, the, the, the restraint for the holding back the police. The police can't do their job the way they want to. Because everybody, everybody's feeling the pain mess in New York City. New York has turned to doo-doo. Look at New York City, my city. Oh, if you were Donald Trump, you'd be racist for saying that. But go ahead, right, brother. I'll be right. So all Donald Trump did, all Donald Trump is, I, I believe this, Kwame. Donald Trump is our Trojan horse. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Before Donald Trump, I, I was Democrat. Before Donald Trump, I was pro-black. All this crazy stuff I was doing, trained and programmed in, in the hood cycle. I remember when I came to America, the black Americans told me, Kwame, oh, don't vote Republican, vote Democrat. The Republican is the enemy. This is 1988 on. I'm believing this, right? And then now... Donald Trump become president and he opened his big mouth. Who told that man to open his big mouth? And he revealed Hillary. He revealed the Clintons. He revealed George Bush that he lied about the war. There was no weapons of mass destruction. It was a lie. And the that biggest was a thing Republican Donald president. Trump revealed to me, hold on, hold on, and I'm going to end it with this. The biggest thing Donald Trump revealed to me is when that damn laptop that everybody said was Russian this, and it wasn't real. We had the FBI, we had the CIA, we supposed to trust those people, right? Well, guess what? They had that damn lap laptop in 2019. They held it. They knew if they put it out, Joe Biden wouldn't got elected because what's on the damn laptop. If that should be more scary than what this woman talking about, because those are the people in power we supposed to trust. And they lied to us. 51 of intelligence men, CIA men, signed that document, 51 of them, and said, the laptop is a lie, Kwame. But it was real. So why I say Donald Trump is our Trojan horse is him coming in politics reveal how dirty the other side is. 
So they both corrupt. But I've been taught that one side was the bad guy. No, 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 no. The Democrats are also dirty. Matter of fact, their hands are even dirtier because they love war. They love war. And I'm going to end it with abortion. I just read all this stuff to this Jehovah Witness dude. I looked it up. If you look at the abortions, it don't go below 500,000 a year. That's 500,000 souls that are killed. 500,000, between 500,000 and 700,000 souls are killed every year. Add black to that. Add black to that, bro. And then most of that, Kwame, and I'm going to end it with this, most of that is being funded and pushed through Democrats. And this is when I cut Hillary off. Kwame, there's a video of Hillary. Matter of fact, she do it every year. She do a dinner and a ceremony. She said, I idolize this woman. I look up to this woman. There wouldn't be no Hitler without this damn woman, by the way. Her name is Margaret Sanger. Okay? Hillary said, I idolize her. I said, hell no. I told my mother. I showed my mother that. She said, wow. She said, who's Margaret Sanger? I said, mom, Margaret Sanger is the blueprint for Adolf Hitler. Okay? He read her, her teachings, and he took that and ran with it. And in her teachings is the extermination of what she called the lesser people or people that don't qualify to be human, which is the black people, us. Anything that look like me or even coolie color, because I'm coolie. I'm Indian and black, just like Kamala Harris. And that's a whole nother situation. But yeah, I'm going to end it with that. I'm just going to- Well, brother, every time you tell somebody Democratic that or just democratic that what you just said and when real, i found that out quick, kb my bad go ahead and miss benita to the republican what to, to the what the republicans do for your thing for the black i want i want every black person remember this i don't have to do anything if you're not voting for me if you're not rocking for me and on top of that generation after generation if you telling everybody throughout your whole family kid after kid Every black person, you know, I'm a racist. Why on earth do I want to help you? So you're not giving me your money. You're talking bad about me. You don't vote for me. I'm not supposed to help you. When you get it, you get it. But what they always have been doing, they always been preaching safety, taking care of your neighborhoods, being responsible, being responsible down here in Columbia. Come, come running in and out. Come let that, you, why you don't hear about that in certain cities? Just like we always talk about the the red, blue. Come down to South Carolina, running in and out doing that. You ain't got to worry about the police so much. The people with morality and common sense won't let you do it. Let alone the, poli the police. We saving you from the police in certain towns down here. We save you from yourself. So when it comes to what have Republicans done for black people, they're not supposed to do anything for you. When you don't give them your money, you don't vote for them, and you've been talking junk about them for years and years and years and years. And that's all I have to say about that. But 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 they did do something for us. Wait, wait, hold on. They did do something for us. And I want her to explain this. When you talk about Republican and politics and black people having power, it was that party that gave us the platform to even enter. Oh, politics. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying, because, you know, in another I'm just saying, right, you know. And it was that party that actually voted against their Democrat brother to tell them, yo, stop lynching and stop hanging black folks. It ain't right. Because how are we read in the Bible? How are we saying we believe in God and, and Jesus, but we doing this to these people? So they already gave us the opportunity. What we did, what we did was went against that whole thing that they did. When we joined um the the the, the Democrat Party, when that white man said, um, I'm going to have niggas voting for me for another hundred and something years because, and welfare, by the way, is not a one-time thing. Can it I, was a I gradual you, promotion. You said a lot, and I need to, I mean, no, I can't well, you, remember you hear every... too, but, but we're hearing your, 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 um, we hear what you have to say. I've been listening to you, but what I'm saying is that you can't just deny a lot of stuff that me and the brother is saying and just turn a blind eye. And to me, what we're saying is enough for the people listening, the people need to hear both sides and they have to make a choice, right? Because that's we're having a conversation. So, and I'm going to end it with that. You could talk now. Thank you. No, I, I, I hear your passion. And basically, people, first of all, 
um, no matter what party you're in, should do what the morally right thing is to do. And if that means helping others that um, have little to no means, then no matter what party you are, you should do what you need to do in order to see how we can bring up everybody. You know, and that's a, and and so let me go back to um, I think you said something about war or whatever. That war that you were re referencing was under a Republican president, President Bush. Okay, so that the Democrats, um, you know, were not in power at that time. The other thing you mentioned is about um, prescription drugs. Um, the Biden Harris team have, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, just um, they took on. The uh, big pharmaceutical companies and, and now um, they were able to get prescription drugs and insulin lowered to thirty five dollars a month. So you should be getting your insulin no more than. $35 no, I was talking about month. the looting of the pharmacy, the Democrat policy. But here's the thing that I was talking about the looting and the pharmacies being closed down and me and the elderly now have to travel distances to go to the next one, which is where I'm at. I got to go to Harlem. I'm talking about the Democrat okay, so policy let me speak that's affecting to, me. Let me try to speak to that. So during the time, remember I said, one, I'm not, I don't attach myself to the Black Lives um, Matter movement, but a lot of times people cloak themselves, people that want to destroy the black community will cloak themselves under other uh, movements and destroy come in destroy a community that they know is the face is su supposedly the face of black lives but yet they're really not there to support black lives so you have to be very very careful because people infiltrate these um movements okay and um <clears throat> so if you have to now unfortunately go out of your area you may need to take that up with your local politicians that's why voting locally is very very important and also you know your law enforcement i don't know a lot of <clears throat> in new york if i'm not mistaken i don't think there's a lot of us in um in blue uniform it's um the other race as far as i'm concerned so if they love wait 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 you don't think there's a lot of us in blue uniform where there's whole towns that are run by black people man no i'm saying in new york i was just speaking in his to him oh to his you said new york yeah well right. if you ask but up me, top is ran by black your mayor right, is black if you're, if you're asking me man we did exercise our voting rights right and as usual we put democrat people in power right like the DA that we you, have now. Who's your DA? Who's your DA? Um, some fat dude. I forgot his name. The one that's going after Brack. Trump. Brack. Brack. Now, what I'm saying to you is is simple. I'm right, and I'm glad you listening. And I'm going back and forth with you, but I'm on the I'm boots on the ground, and I've seen my city turn very violent, crime up, all type of crazy people on the street. Because what I'm telling you is they letting these people out. There is no um how can i say accountability when you loot and you go to the jailhouse and they letting you back on the street that's creating a behavior you understand what i'm saying and what what i'm saying is that it's all policy we did exercise our voting rights that's how these people get elected right and what i'm saying is we've seen the performance and i and i disapprove on the performance because it's affecting me i have to worry about my chip my child one of my sons go to downtown what's that nyu right so he got to travel all the way from here to go down there e every minute every moment i'm worried about my son because they're pushing people on the tracks i got pushed i didn't end up on the tracks right but the crime is up i'm worried and fearful for my children i'm a black man with black children and it is the democrat policy miss this is what i'm saying let's be fair because i'm living the policy i'm not I don't got to make it up. I'm living it every day. The policies, the the crime, the violence toward my community is high. And it's not safe for the black woman. It's not safe for my daughter. It's not safe at all. But we did exercise our voter rights. And as far as BLM, when you said they've been hijacked, I, I don't agree with that. Because the two people that started Black Lives Matter, one got hung on a tree. They don't know how the hell they hung them. And one got Darren Seal, I believe his name is, Quote me if I'm wrong. He got burned up in his car and that 
is still unsolved. Those are the two guys that started Black Lives Matter. And then what we see after um, um, Trayvon, um, the little boy that got shot in Chicago, after that kid got shot is when you start to see a lot of the BLM marketing and rhetoric taking over, but they they George are Floyd the hijackers. The, no, not at George and, Floyd. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you this, and then I'm going to let you go. When it comes to Black Lives Matter and the looting and breaking the store, okay, understand that the Democrat politicians here amp that up. Are you telling me these people are slow and retarded? Okay, AOC, okay, the, 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 um, Maury, I forgot her first name, Maury, you have a guy named my son, all these people were pumping and hyping up the youth, loot, let it burn, and I'm on Fordham Road, a main road in the Bronx, and I'm watching young black youth being led, being taunted, go, loot, go in there, burn it down, so that's not a hijack to me, that's a movement that know what they're doing, and our like I said, the girl named Alexander Cortez and the rest of them, Tamika Mori, and all these Democrat leadership miss was on the front line encouraging it. I saw my eyeball and I have video footage of that. So that's why I said, can you please be fair in what you're saying? Because the people are listening and I'm boots on the ground. I could account Absolutely, for it. Absolutely. I want to be fair. I wish I could see your name because I don't know what your name. What's your my name? My name is Keith. Keith, let me just speak to you. I put my because, that's my government name. Now nah, you ain't right just here. speaking to Keith, you're speaking to everybody okay, now. I'm speaking to everybody. Keith, Keith in the room. Listen, I feel your heart. I feel your passion. I am just as concerned as you are. I'm a black woman. I feel unsafe. I feel unprotected. Every Do you live single in New day. York? I don't live in New York, but I live in Philadelphia. So oh, it's just God. exactly. So you see what I'm saying? Oh, so, black so, men are more unprotected than you in Philadelphia. If you look no, at this. But but all, no, we're all unprotected. But that's what no, I'm saying. No, 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 no. There's another rapper just killed in Philly. That there, is there's so black many men are more males. unprotected. Black men, you cannot argue a fact, ma'am. I love I see this is where I want to catch you on your talking points from the news in real life, though. I have a slogan. I say in real life, though. That's why I appreciate the brother Keith, because he's boots on the ground. And what you sound like is you're just saying things that you hear from the news. Because if you live in Philadelphia, there's no way that you go against that black males are being slaughtered in those streets. There's not black women walking up the street getting killed every other day. And there's about five black men that's going to die in your city today, all the way through tonight. I'm not and there's, no, the there's, not, there's not going to be no uproar. There's not going to be no save black boys. There's not going to be a black boys are the most unprotected in the world. They're going to keep letting you say you're the most unprotected when you know you're living in a city where they're slaughtering young men and you haven't said nothing yet. And Philadelphia is ran by who, ma'am? So, right. We, so let me, can, let, can I speak to this? I'm not saying, see, we'll take one issue and then harp on that. This is I'm one just, big issue. If yes, women were, if women were getting we, killed in the streets like I'm you, not, okay, you just came up here. No, wait, 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 wait. I heard you as a black male. I heard you say two things. I heard you say you were the most unprotected. And I heard you say you were from Philly. And as a black man, I know you're wrong, my sister. You're from Philadelphia, where they're killing men at a rate that's unheard of. Why do you get to act like a victim when you can't even speak on your city and what's happening to males in your city? Because I'm speaking, I was trying to speak to the overall big picture. I'm, I wasn't just trying to isolate it to my city. Mm. So I'm speaking <laughs> overall. Oh I'm speaking. God. No, no, listen, listen, here's the thing. I'm not, I don't want anybody dying. That's the, that's the main thing. I don't want any. You said you anybody. were the most unprotected. In, I'm talking even about in your, I'm talking even about. in your city, you're not the most unprotected but, is what I'm saying. I, I wanna I, ask you. I didn't say I didn't okay. I don't know if we I said the most unprotected. I said I just don't I said black right. women, I'm a black woman, I don't feel protected. We can see that you're a black woman and there's an overlay up. So when people start well, I, talking about what color they are, that did not add to the conversation. So I didn't understand why you said that. So, so therefore I'm, I'm I pushed back against that. So okay. you're from Philadelphia. Well, I, why okay. wouldn't you talk about the things that are going on in a Democrat ran city? You're okay, living because this brother is from New York. So what he's doing is he's applying 
real life and the policies that he's being affected by in real life I'm and what, you're, what you're trying to do is over talk the fact that you're from philly and it's and philly is very <laughs> that's almost a third world country right now exactly. and it's being ran by your democratic policies but, but, man, but, but, China. but, can I, but I didn't I, I can't we, make a full thought and it's it and so my my statements get you chopped could, up. You can't, ma'am, don't do that. I haven't been talking this whole time. I've been muted this entire time. I let everybody get their thoughts off. But the only thing I'm trying to explain to you, and I want you to talk around this topic and not go off into a tangent that, that you normally do. This brother is from New York, a Democrat ran city. The policies are proven in real life. What you're speaking about and all the things you speak in real life is a city that's underwater. You live in Philadelphia, also a city that's being ran by Democrats. You made a statement that I went against. You said you're the most unprotected as a black woman. Not only in your city is that not true, but throughout the world, there's black men dying in every major city and nobody talks about it. So I wanted to make you aware of that. So maybe you can stop saying that. Also, no, I in, hold on, let me land my plane and I'm going to okay. go on mute because right, you're trying to make it seem like I'm interrupting you when I'm not. Also, what I'm also saying is you're being ran by the Democratic Party in your city and it is the most unsafe city for black males. That city is underwater and is one of the most corrupt cities outside of New York and Chicago. So why can't you speak towards the policies that are happening in real life and not just things that are on the news and i go on mute thank you um so first of all i don't want to compare bodies because I, I i don't think because all 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 of male and female bodies matter okay um so that's not what my that's what i don't want to focus on like who's who's being killed more when men black men or black women that's not the issue the issue is we need to come together collectively as a, I'm talking about as a nation, nationwide, in order to help our nation be better, do better, have better policies, be more protected. I was trying to speak to Keith because he spoke and I just wanted to let him know that I heard what he said. And I hear you, your boots on the ground. I do believe that um, unfortunately things get politicized um, because we're in a political cycle. So I do believe that there are some underlying enablers pushing in certain cities, you know, s allowing certain things to happen because they want to have the appearance of chaos. And so they fit, and then not only having the appearance of chaos and, you know, the border's out of control, although they won't do anything, pass any law to stop it. They just keep complaining about it. It is because out of that's, control. It is. It is out of control. And the, and the Democrats try to put a stop to it, but the Republican-led Congress killed the bill. Ma'am, ma you, ma you realize you're not addressing my question, though, right? You're talking about you want me to talk about Philadelphia? Is that what you no, want me to no, say? No, yes. Wait. I want you to talk about your policies that you experience. Right. I want to stick city. to the policy. That's all we're talking about is so, policy. You, you so said local. Just, Let's start with local. You first. said local, but basically same thing, brother Keith is trying to get you to. I'm hearing what you're saying. You said what's most important is to vote local. You live in Philadelphia. And she's actually right. I asked you about Philadelphia. You keep going past that. You said the you vote Democrat mostly. Okay. It's like you're I, talking I, I, so I fast, you're getting beyond yourself. Can you talk about Philadelphia, you, please? You, okay, you said I, mm -hmm. you said okay, you was I, talking to me, right? I, I was. I was okay, so can you, I was can just you address responding what I said to first what about the the local politics, right? You asked me who's my DA, right? We we know his name is Brad, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Now I'm telling you Black man. Mm -hmm. that the way I see I'm from I'm from Kingston, Jamaica, right? I'm from downtown okay. Kingston. When I was a little boy, I saw politics. We live politics. The, you, you talk, what Kwame Brown is identifying in America, right? The root problem, what, whichever side, right? They're white men in power. 
in Jamaica, the root problem why downtown Kingston is on fire right now is because of America went there and wanted their guy in, right? So local politics affected me then, and I understand. That's why now I'm going to explain to you why I'm so keen on policy is because of my background and what I've witnessed. The policies was affecting the people. What Democrats like to do every time is inject race into it. Race. Race is not my problem right now. Yes, I'm black in, in, in Harlem, the Bronx, Brooklyn. That's where I move around. And the policies do affect me more because we're the poorest, right? But I'm tired of us being the poorest and on the bottom. And the policies right now are not helping us to even emerge because our own people, like Kwame saying, the young men that's dying in Philly, who's killing them? Other black young men. But let's understand that even in Harlem right now, the projects are beefing. You know why, miss? Because a lot of these ma the mayors, the Blasio and the mayor we have now, cut funds for after school program, cut funds for where children there used to be so much programs in the last five to ten years that are cut but bro you, really don't, want, you don't you don't you don't but bro out. she don't care about that you didn't understand you didn't, I'm, I'm hold, on. hold on you didn't catch it she said she loves to interrupt me i noticed how she yeah. let everyone else talk on the panel but me and this my panel but it is true because the first thing you said when he told you who the mayor was uh the governor was you said black man and Odo mm -hmm. Speaks picked up on it as well. She Mayor. does identity politics. That's all she cares about. Right. If it's a black man or a black woman or if it's an LGBT, right. she's all for it. She don't know anything about policy. Anytime I brought up that Hillary Clinton was gaslighting and brought out the hot sauce, she did the whole singing dance of I didn't see it. And then every time I'm trying to speak, she wants to interrupt and make it this black woman is being cut off thing when no i'm on mute most of the time and what i'm saying is you don't want to speak about anything that gets to the root cause of the problem right the root cause of the problem is the the nuclear family she talked about voting locally and then when you address her city i'm addressing she wants you to keep talking about new york her city is in disarray no and if she's voting locally then everything she's voting for is against her city Everything and you know, we got we got to get we got to stop letting people just ramble on. Mm. You live in a city like that? Like I live in Atlanta, but Atlanta has turned into a sanctuary city. I'm moving to Florida. See, it's hard to control a nigga like me because I'm going to go. I'm going to go. They have a they have a situation going on now where the squatters can just move into your home and take over your home. In Florida, they just passed the bill said no longer would that happen. So I moved to a state that has my best interest in heart. I don't have to run from nobody because Florida is a stay in your ground state. I don't have to worry about nobody stealing my home because Florida believe in the people who own homes. That's why, despite what this woman is talking about, a Democratic ran city like California has some of the biggest exodus to mm -hmm. Texas and to the state of Florida. And when I ask her about Democratic ran cities, she keeps circle talking me and won't answer that you can look it up. You want to cite sources like you talked about? Look up Democratic ran cities across the country and they're the most, most unsafe for black males. They're the most porous and they're the most violent. Top 10 states in America, look it up. And, and ma'am, may I so ask I, you, thank I, you Kwame and ma'am. May I ask you one, one question? Okay. Are yes, you please. saying to us, the black people that's listening, we pointed out so much things, like we're, I'm sticking to your thing, policy and local government, right? I didn't even mention Baltimore yet. So I'm sticking to please what you're don't, saying. Please don't, until we can just So, so we what I'm saying to you is, it right. seems like no matter what problems and issues is on the table, it's like you're not going to switch. And that's the problem I have with, with, with our people is we don't understand politics. You're not supposed to be in bed with neither side. It's the side that do for you. Sometimes the Republican might not offer something, but the Democrat will. Okay, let's go over there. And if the Democrat not offering anything, why so hard to just say, okay, we're not winning over here right now. Let's see what the other side got to offer. That's how politics work. 
But I see us just in bed. Like we grew up with these people. Joe Biden never helped me and my grandma. Kamala never helped us. Obama, Bush, Did Trump. Trump we don't you? know these people. Why so to me, you? I see the politics different. I'm able to switch. I'm not able to just lay down. At a time like this is crucial when clearly they are replacing the, the black Americans here economically when you're bringing in illegals and giving them an economic starter kit. That is removal and replacement. You don't see that? I do. Okay, so can you all just allow me to just complete a thought? Because yeah. we're jumping around so much. I wasn't trying to just harp on somebody else's city and not my own. I was just responding to what Keith was laying out, what was going on in his city. So I was responding to that, not to negate my own city, okay? And just to just overall, because so much has been said, I don't just vote straight Democrat. I started off saying you have to vote your issues. You want to pin me in as just a Democrat voting only for Democrats. I said, and that's why I said, you know, it starts locally voting for those um, local um, government officials in your own city, states, and towns. So, um, but um, the overall picture right now, we are in a presidential election cycle. And there's a lot, this, a lot is on the stake right now. So you have a lot of, um, uh, you have a lot of, uh, a lot of, a, a lot of uh, seedy things going on to, um, to sabotage a particular party or um, a party's issues or whatever in order to make it seem like, hey, it's all chaos. I wanted to speak just to you, Keith, when you were saying how there's a lot of, I think right now you're dealing with a lot of um, e maybe illegal immigration in your um, in your state. And again, I think that it's all, um, I think that there's an element designed to allow that to happen. Okay, so that the people in the, your state or my state or any state that's dealing with it can get so frustrated and feel like this one particular party is going to save us all. And right now, the Republican Party is trying to position themselves as the saviors of immigration, stopping the border or whatever. We don't hear about the border only on, only in presidential election cycles when, is when we start hearing about the border. OK, and you weren't hearing about this conversation last year, early last year. You know why? Because it, they, they, they could care less. OK, they could care less. But, my, you know, just all I would do is encourage people just. I appreciate uh, you, but and I, I, I hear what you're saying. Hey, this is why I'm, I, I this is why I'm glad I called in, Kwame, because. She's saying, listen to what she's saying, everyone. And Can you hear me? She's saying, because it's an election cycle, right? We're seeing people like me, and we're seeing the other side, the Republicans, coming forward. And she said they're trying to be the savior. Well, I tell you this. Exactly. I'm, gl I'm glad, because you know why? This ain't just started, Miss. Doing why is there something that need to be saved? Right. This didn't just started now because of election cycle. Once again, when I step out my building, miss, for the past three years, immigration is at my door. African yes. and Hispanic is at my door selling fruits, iPhone, all type of stuff. When I go down in the train, immigration is on my platform. Illegal immigration. For three years, I've been dealing with this. So this didn't oh, hold on. I I on Zine, we can hear you. Come off mute real quick. Yeah, come on. Yeah. So we ain't letting nobody else say no. I on Zine, you can go ahead and say something. Yeah, and that that right there, what she just said, that's a lie. Um we all know that immigration has been talked about for the past few years. And um if you're not if you, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was uh Joe Biden that said that um you know, black folks aren't the um, leading in minorities anymore. You got to go with the Hispanics. And now I'm they're going to be catering to the Hispanics. Is that not true or, is that yeah, true or not? Mic is a little you muffled chopper. like hell, buddy. Can y'all hear me right now? Yeah, it's, it's kind of muffled. It's like something in front of the mic. Uh, 
sorry. I'm, I'm gonna try. I'll try again. All right. So, but here's the thing. I'm not trying to say immigration. Uh, but hold on, if if you will, I didn't get a chance to interject after you finished, I, okay. and I didn't say anything. Okay. Um, can- can I just say right. this one thing, Kwame, real quick? I just wanted to say I understand mm-hmm. that. Bo- no, I just wanted to say mm-hmm. I understand that the border has been an issue through all presidents. That does that never goes away. It's only that the border issue never goes away. Under, no matter who's the Ma'am, the border Did issue has never been the way it is now. We're talking right. about numbers. This is the worst, most unsafe border. You talk about women a lot. This is the most unsafe border for women and children. Trafficking is at an all-time high because of this border. They said gates don't work, and then they put a gate up around the Capitol building. It doesn't make any sense. The hypocrisy doesn't make any sense. And, ma'am, um, you sound just like the typical Democrat, just one-sided Democrat. I'm an independent, so you have to work for my vote. I vote for both parties. So if you call out something that Trump said or did, I won't defend him. I will just say yes, but it happens on both sides so that it keeps me down the middle. Um, You don't seem to call out anything on the other side. You're just like hook, line, and sinker. They got you. You're brainwashed, and you'll probably teach this to your children. And that's not diversity of thought uh, because you're going to give them your brain. And unfortunately, you don't have uh, an open mind when it comes to politics. 50 something years of the same thing and you being from a city that's one of the worst cities in the united states right now where there's a street in your city that grown men and women are asleep standing up and you talk about voting locally your local vote must have been horrible and your and your presidential vote is probably horrible uh because you're voting identity politics You're voting because there's a black woman there or a black man is there or blackity black this or somebody's feelings feel better. And it's not making a better result. When a man is present, sometimes it don't look right. It gets said wrong, but we're more result oriented. And what you're seeing now, yes, you can finish when I'm done, please. But what you're seeing now is all of this feelings and all of these teaching young boys to get in touch with their feminine side. I spoke against that when they first started talking about that. Every time I got emotional, it was violence right after that. When men are in touch with their emotional side, they become violent. Men need to be in touch with their logical side. You don't need to have little boys thinking like little girls. Do you know why the song, I bust the windows out your car? Do you know why that song makes sense to women? Because they say, I got emotional. Men are supposed to know that if girlfriend cheat on you, if girlfriend do whatever, you got to stay logical and intact. You cannot get emotional because busting the windows out her car is not your property and you're going to go to jail. And so now they have told young boys to do something that is unnatural for them as a man. As a man, you get emotional, you're going to get violent, you're going to go to jail. So this is why you don't see heterosexual men on television unless they're crying, Van Jones. The representation of a black male is an LGBT community person, Don Lemon. Or it's a guy that will shave off all his facial hair and make everybody feel safe. He won't say anything outside of the norm to invoke thought. Everybody will be comfortable and safe space. And that's not how you build and learn and grow. Everybody knows how you grow, how you evolve is to be tested, to be challenged, to be challenged, to be better than oneself. If everyone is sitting around agreeing, then all of you can be useless fools. And that's what I see them creating now. Useless fools. And I'll go on mute. And the young lady, Rachel, hadn't said anything in a while. Let's let her come off mute and say something real quick, please. Come off mute, Miss uh, Rachel. There you go. Okay, my bad. I apologize. Blessings, Kwame. Blessings to everybody in the chat and panel. Bless. <laughs> 
But yeah, I just wanted to shine mm. in because I'm from Philly and I could tell you that the politics in here <clears throat> all suck. And I'm a block captain. Like, I became a block captain. Like, I told my story to Kwame the first time I ever hopped on his panel to try to help my son to um, and stuff like that because I needed to, somebody advised me to put one foot into the politics side and, you know, keep one foot in the street. So I just got in because I needed to find, you know, answers and stuff like that about the situation that was happening. But I never thought that I would end up becoming a block captain sitting here, you know, doing community, I mean, not community service. I'm helping out my community and bringing the resources towards them. So basically my job is to meet up with like the senator, um, to meet up with the mayor and meet up with them in person on these meetings that we be having on our communities. Because we do have community meetings. We have a thing called Make Philadelphia More Beautiful. And I can honestly say that for the past two and a half years that I've been a block captain attending all these meetings and I speak up for the school. Like that's the one thing that got me involved in it because um, I wanted to get cameras in our classrooms. First time I spoke to um, Kwame, he said, do you know why they won't do this? You know, like, he, he asked me a question and left me thinking. I couldn't answer that question that day, why the, um, they went and passed a bill to put cameras or a law or something like that. And I was like, damn. I could, he left me stuck and I went and did my research. So actually speaking with them, um, trying to get these cameras into these schools, I spoke to, um, and here is Senator Boyles. He deals with the schools, um, house, the housing and all that stuff, the businesses, right? So speaking to him, I realized, right, because he's telling me they can't pass a bill, they can't pass a law, they can't do this because they don't have enough funds. My question was like, damn, are we paying taxes? Like, aren't we doing this? Aren't we doing that? He's like, well, it's not enough. He had to pull me to the side. I couldn't record in this portion for him to explain me certain things. So I kind of know where certain funds go and I kind of like don't know where other funds go, but it kind of like messed me up in the head. So my whole point is everything isn't really going to these schools like they make us believe. So what is they really doing? What are they doing with the money? Immigration. Like, huh? They, they put in the money into finish. immigration she she's on point Go, can you just let her finish so um my whole thing is right the first thing that um senator boyle's right hand told me was he said if you want to get any type um anything passed like for example these cameras put in he told me i actually have to go out here through fundraisers get people together collect the money and i'm saying i'm like that's a lot of money if y'all can't put the money together how do i get people united enough here in philadelphia to do this when we're so divided for so many reasons like he's like that's something that y'all as a community have to figure out and then if y'all can manage to do that then we can figure out how to do it from over here i'm saying i'm like i've been talking about this for three years already four years how do we get the people together so it's like this is something that's real like hard to speak on because it, it applies to everything as a community how do we i mean as people you know as we the people as we say because i also asked kwame you know he gave me a good um response the last time that um he did a live and we were speaking about the um i asked him a question he said what well, instead of focusing on the presidents shouldn't we focus on these um you know the the, the, the three bureaus hit you know them with the questions hit them with what we want and I liked his response. He was right about it. We're not going to do nothing. We're too lazy. While I'm in these meetings, I notice how nobody goes to vote. Nobody's going to vote for these DAs. They don't vote for the senators. They don't vote for the mayor. It, 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 and what happens is... Man, you mayor, preaching I'm now. Hey, I'm not trying to interrupt, but you are preaching. When you go down there and actually hit ground zero, you see an ugly truth. Nobody that make the mo Nobody that make the most doors really care or make no noise where it really count. If those same 100,000 people that loot the store go down to the meetings that you attend, it would make a change. Yeah, but see, you know what's crazy? This is why, I went, like, I don't get involved in none of these beefs on YouTube because listen, Kwame, you gave me the best advice ever. And I don't know if the people that reached out to me were subs, they were, you know, part of your team team that actually worked for you. But these steps they told me to take have actually let me here. So I'm always gonna be very appreciative we for that advice. You too. Cause I didn't need money. I didn't need him to show me off. He said, holla back when you get an answer. And this is what I'm learning. It's us, we're the problem. And we keep putting these people and letting people put in people into office worrying about the presidents. That's why I have a thing that says, 
I don't have a president until we the people have a president that's for us. Trump is okay, he's good. He's a good businessman. But I don't I don't really speak on Trump because people get offended. Like you gotta be but I feel as though that at the end the um the all presidents still gotta do, you know, what the government wants them to do. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on that part, but I really don't speak on that. But I do know that us the people, we need to do something when it comes to like Kwame says, and he said it in the beginning, time after time. I just didn't realize it. It's these three bureaus we gotta hit. So, um, were you finished, Rachel? Were you finished? Oh, Rachel? I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, I don't know what else to say. Like, no, I appreciate what you said, and um. I um I I told I I agree with every I'm I'm in, in agreement with you all in this room when I say that we really I'm just going to take the face off of it take the color off of it all of that and I said in the beginning you got to vote your issues who's in line with what you believe who's in line with what your issues are that's how you vote you vote the people that support what you are trying to move forward and in school and education is very important to you so therefore when voting time comes we have to put those people in office that have a track record of you know helping our community we have to look at people's track record and when i you know take it to the presidential side of things i have to look at biden's record i have to look at trump's record OK, and when I look at Trump's record, he in 2016 said he was going to build a wall. He never did or if he might have started, but it never got completed and nobody's, you know, so that's a broken promise there. OK, when it comes to um, um, Biden, he said that he was going to. Um, protect Social Security. That's what he's trying to do. And on when you look on the Trump side of things, Trump said he's trying to raise the retirement rate, almost, I believe, to 70 years old. Who wants to retire when they're 70? So you have to look at both sides. That's all I'm saying. So I agree can with I, you. Can I shine in into something? I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Um, when Biden came into office, he messed up that HIPAA law. When Trump was in office, he had that law perfect. I don't. Know I was just about to say that. that. Thank you, thank you, ma'am, because she'll listen to you. Go ahead. Okay, my child <laughs> suffers from autism. Okay, I had to give up my son's rights to his aunt in order for me to save my child's life. His computer was his life. His principal. Uh, listen, man, I I went through a lot. Like, I told my story here on Kwame. I don't know if he remembers the whole thing, but I have my story up on my channel, too, because it's a long story. But basically, I ended up fighting the school system, right? I won a battle, but I, I, I won a fight. I won a battle, but I didn't win the war, right? Because there's a lot of us still trying to fight the school system and the issues that we're having against our boys in the urban community. Listen, Kwame is right on a lot of things that he's saying, whether we like it or not. Yes, listen, I'm in the middle. I'm stuck in the middle black puerto rican i'm stuck in the middle right so i've noticed we get an easy pass the wit the black the black women here in philadelphia don't get it as easy the hispanic men don't get it as easy right and they get stopped and they get fucked over by the cops just as bad as the black men i my baby father my current baby father my fiance the man i'm about to marry is all black he's not mixed you see where i'm coming from at all and i've noticed that he's had to endure more than the fa baby father that i had that you know passed away and they've both been in these streets they've both been in them trenches he suffered more out here on these streets and still is suffering than what i've noticed that you know the hispanic culture and i'm not bringing nobody down and that's why it's hard for a lot of us that are stuck in the middle to say i'm like yo i'm not picking a side but i am going to you know be neutral about this and i'm gonna cut it down the middle Yes, the black men are getting it the worst. They're getting killed out here. Like, nobody's even talking about it. They're being targeted for some reason. The cops look at them before they'll look at, you know, if my baby pops was alive and him and him were walking side by side, they'll look at my current baby pops before they'll look at my the current baby pop. Did I just say the same thing? They'll look at my past, it. you know, oh my God, it's my ex. 
before they'll look at my current baby pop. That's a little difficult. I just made that, but y'all get my point. Like, so Kwame is like, you know, he's speaking facts. He's speaking reality because these judges in here um, also ain't shit. The justice system ain't shit. And we have to hit the bureaus in order to make a change in the justice system. Like I've been listening to a lot that he has said and it has guided me a long way. So all I'm saying is that like, Besides a lot of the stuff that's happening here on him, um, like on here on YouTube, let's listen to the message because he is on point. Like I didn't until like he just said until I didn't sit here and meet the big dogs. I didn't see the reality. I was stuck here like the rest of like a lot of people out here. Like I right. had to really see it. This is something we have to fight. But how can we do it? We're so divided. I was trying to keep race out of it. But yeah, I, I wanna... totally agree. I totally agree with you. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm no, I wasn't bringing be... race in it. It's not, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Let me correct I'm on with you. I get with I you. We... I, you didn't say. You didn't tell no lies. That's what I'm saying. I was trying to, you know, for everybody that may be in the right. room that may not be black or Hispanic or whatever. I, you know, right. just for all people, I'm trying to keep it neutral. But <laughs> you're absolutely right, Rachel. Black men get. Uh, targeted, you know, black men, um, um, are it's, I don't, I've got to mute because that's an emotional subject for me. I'm a, I have right. black sons. And that's what I've been saying to you. And I'm sticking to what you are saying. Take the race off the table, the color and stick to the policy. Now, I don't know if you just came on board when it comes to the border. And personally, I don't want my border open which citizen of any country want their border like that is unsafe for us we don't even know if terror, ter the t word is coming through the border and as far as is keith talking did i miss something keith are you there oh hello Hello? We can hear you, Keith. Yeah, I'm about to hop down. This was a I great hear you now. time. This is a great oh, time. No, I hope, you know, I'm okay. listening Ra down. Rachel, can I say this to you before you leave? Um, I'm not sure what's going on with your son and the HIPAA law thing, but it sounds like that's something that um is the school that the school system needs to um do something about what it's a law yeah it's, we still we have to hit them three branches like i went deep into this we we have to change the law ourselves and by doing that is like either we get in and vote these people in ourselves the people that we think you know is going to help us i don't know if i'm saying it right but kwame has said it here time after time exactly what i'm saying I'm just letting y'all know what I'm seeing myself inside, you know, me walking in, speaking to the mayor himself, the senator, you know, all of them. Like, there's have no you spoken, Have years? you spoken to Cheryl yet, though? Have you spoken Cheryl. to Cheryl Parker? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Cheryl, um, excuse me, Cherelle Parker. <laughs> the new mayor. mayor? Yeah. She have just became to? mayor. Exactly. Yeah, she just became mayor, though. So it's kind of oh, okay. like. So you haven't spoken to her yet. She just became mayor. No, she just became mayor. Right, 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 right. Okay, so that, so, so you have to, I, I don't mean to put a, you know, color in it, but we were under a white mayor. So maybe um, speaking to Sherelle Parker, um, she has a totally wasn't different. Mayor was black? He's I'm under sorry? Guy, well, we don't know a lot of them. We got another street. There's a few of them. Yeah, but, but she sounds young to me. I'm talking about the mayor that just left. No, I'm Jim 34. I'm 34 years old. No, no, I hear you. But what I'm Jim saying is, She's not the first person of color to be mayor for Philadelphia. We didn't have another. We didn't have street. We didn't have more. Yeah, but hold on. Who is that? Who is that speaking? I don't see who. I, I do apologize, baby. Who else is on the Kwame Brown. This is my baby pops. This is my. Oh, okay. I, I I didn't know who that was. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. My bad, brother. I didn't mean to just hop in like that, but I was hearing some things and I was actually eating my breakfast. I wasn't really chiming in like that. But I had no, to go say ahead. But I excuse me. I had to say something because when you when y'all speak, you gotta make sure that you think about everything from the past, not just the now. You gotta think about what was laid before, the path before, the people that was here before, the things that they did and the things they created and the things that they messed up, and how the people that came after them had to try to fix it and fix it. And it's nothing but a perpetuated cycle of people that's getting into places of power but not using the power the right way. You understand what I'm saying? 
Amen. No, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I'm, just, so I'm with you. But it, but it's the party. It's the party that she's with. If she keeps saying, "I'm with you. I'm with you." No, it's the it's the people of Black Lives Matter that get ninety million dollars that could have changed America, but they buy houses with it. They use exactly. black pain. They use black pain and black destruction. They love this black narrative. Why would they fix it? But the Republican you know how, do you know, Party doesn't. Ma'am, ma'am, can you stop, ma'am? Let me talk. Let me talk. Do you know the party that's always preaching that they love black? They always be the one to capitalize the most, most, and nothing change. This is a racket. This is a big. This, this is a racket. Every, every foundation is built towards helping the black community. Every this is ge geared towards single black women so that they can help the black community. And they get all these millions of dollars and nothing ever changed. They allocate millions of dollars to the HBCUs and they don't even have running water. Howard University still looks terrible. I donated my money to Howard so I can speak about it. Yep. They always talk about, they want black people to stay in, in these situations so that people that get educated and get their degrees up and they can run their mouth and over talk people, they get paid to keep them in dysfunction. They do not want the cure. It, 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 my family, my brother sold drugs. Uh, they wanted to keep the best product on the market. They're not going to start selling people the cure for getting off drugs. They're not going to no. sell them the detox. And you know what's crazy, brother? Brother Plum, you know what's real crazy? Because I actually walked in into the live, and you know, like I said, I was eating my breakfast. I was actually up picking our breakfast for it. And out of nowhere, a Hispanic woman said something to me this morning. And the conversation basically summed up to say about the unity day that we need in the urban community so that we can rise above and live better lives. And like I told her, it all starts with this. It all starts with us because everybody always putting the ceiling over somebody else's head and not trying to let them grow. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad because we got to always see that it's our own kind and people like us being crabs in a barrel. And it's sad. Well, the part of our community that don't have talent, they, they're like succubus. They just speak, yeah. they speak depression and then they can, they learn to speak it real well. When you speak depression, depressed people give you their money. And despite saying that we're the brokest or whatever, you can look at the numbers. We spend the most money. We do. And so they want we the do. women single. They want the men out looking for women and on drugs. And they want the little boys uh, unmanly, easily swayed. Yes, manipulated very easily. Yeah, and that's what we have right and now. We want the kids running the household because before I gave up my son's rights, right, this principal was telling my son, he was in a private school. Mind you, I fought to get him into this private school. And I won the lawsuit and the, you know, the, 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 the school district had to pay for him to be for everything. They had to pay for everything, even his scholarship. So what happened is this principal, I'm sitting here, I'm trying to get help. He's autistic. So he's going by the HIPAA law. Right. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, listen, I'm telling you, my son needs help. Y'all took the services away from him and they took the services away from him a couple months after Biden came into office. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why. That's a question that I, nobody's been able to answer. Like, what the heck happened as soon as this man came into office? Like, but anyways, my whole point was, right, when Trump was in office, my son was getting every service he needed from STS to behavioral services to wraparound services to a therapist to a psychiatrist, everything. Like, he even had services coming to the house, and he was on point. This man comes in. I'm having issues with the HIPAA law with him and all this. Um... Now, mind you, we're having an issue with him trying to get him off the Internet because the computer is his safe haven. But he got in contact with the underworld, the underground. I don't know what y'all want to call it. The, the dark, dark web. web. The there dark you go. Web. The dark web. Um, and they managed to. they was trying to send him tickets from to North Carolina, North, South Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina. And I'm, mind you, I, I didn't even know he was getting these messages because my son is so good at coding. So he was getting something called the um, cryptic messages. I don't know if you know what, what that is, Kwame. Yeah. Um, event like 
I'm just learning about all this stuff because all this happened recently within the last couple months hitting 2000, I mean, 2024, right? So it started before 2024, but it's recent. So he um, had encrypted messages and they was in these chats, Fortnite, Roblox and all that. So it all came from the gaming. He's not into Facebook. He's not into podcasts or none of that. All this came from the gaming. So I'm sitting here. I told him, no, my son called a temper tantrum. I'm sitting here. I'm trying to get the services in here. I couldn't get nothing in here. So I, I had no choice but to sit here and dial 911 because my son was getting out of control because I told him no. He tells me he's going to run away. He sits here, tears my house up, disrespects me. He's never gotten like this. And it's because he needed his, you know, his support. Um, if y'all have kids with autism, y'all know where, you know, where I'm coming from. Um, it took a minute for these people to get here. My son runs away. So I had to report him as a runaway. And I didn't know that, you know, it was going to take them that long, you know, that fast to get here. They sent a, um, a special officer and um, a crisis unit, a special officer. And he tells me next time from now on, when you have problems, if you do find your son, that's the number you got to call, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, all right. Um, but he had already run away. I had to give the picture out. They had to close down our, um, the, um, what you call them, the straight, the train stations, anything that leads out of Philadelphia. So um, we found him between 72 hours. You know, was the one thing I noticed if, I was the if I wasn't the only parent, right? When my son disappeared that day, why didn't the news report the news people and none of them actually report the you know what we did, what we said to them? Like, yo, it's like I think that day when my son ran away, how many was it? It was like thirty to forty kids that same day that ran away from their houses, right? But my son, it was a big risk because he was autism autistic, and they paid a, um how can I say a pri they made it a priority because of his issue. So if y'all pay that a priority, right? Here's my thing. Why aren't y'all paying on a priority before the issue happens when us parents are complaining about it? When we're sitting here, you know, going to these community meetings, trying to make the changes and do this and do that. Why? Because there's not enough people out here. Like I was trying to explain. There's not enough people like Boyle had told me. He said, do you want to make a change to do this and do that? You're going to have to get people together. And then from there, we can make a change up here. Once again, we can't get enough. I've been doing this for four years. Everybody pays attention to the foolish shit. If I was to talk about a celebrity or get money to do, you know, some dumb stuff out here, they'll pay attention. But it's slow as hell, me trying to do fundraisers, trying to do this, to try to help the youth, to try to get them the stuff that they need when people don't even care. And Philadelphia is real good for that. And I know that Philly's not the only place like that, but we've gotten to that point that we're worse than other places. We're right there with Chicago, like Kwame said. Not just with the violence, but we're not caring about what happens with our kids in the school system. Because where are the parents? I hear them complain in social media, but I don't see none of them standing up and fighting. I'm not trying to shame or bring anybody down, but where are the parents? And y'all wonder why we got disrespectful kids out here disrespecting elders. Yes, we got elders that disrespect you know, us and the kids, but a lot of these elders don't deserve the disrespect that these kids are given. And a lot of these teachers don't deserve to get disrespected. So regardless of anything, like the, what what is what is the Democrat Party doing for us? What has it been doing? Rachel, can I ask you a question? Because I I heard you mention that that representative took you to the side and said, you know, you can't record this, but I'm going to tell you where this money is going. You don't have to say it here openly and publicly, but what he told you. Um, let me just. Let me ask it this way. Does that well, he mean told that me Kwame already, well, he's told me Kwame's already said it here. They're going into private prisons. That's why I was not allowed to record that on my panel. I was on a live recording these meetings. They're going to private prisons. That's why I said that John shocked me. Like, why hey, ma'am. Hey, Rochelle, now that you see the truth, I think you need to run for office. Because we need people like you that, that actually see the truth. Because... You came up not as a detractor, but somebody that wasn't just agreeing with what I was saying, but you listened. And so that's how you invoke change. What I'm talking about, it just it happened in real time, but y'all can see it on the panel. This is a young lady who came up. She did have a story. I remember that story now that you're saying it, but you, me and you wasn't agreeing. <laughs> and then I just nope, asked you. Right. I was so I just, right. So I just challenged you to listen. And now you can see the truth. 
And if you just go and take that, and now that you see the truth, you take that, you'll be able to help real people. Facts. That's why when when um, Boyle said, "Listen, if you can get the people together down here, we can do something up here." But how can I get anybody together down here? Us women are so divided. We're too busy beefing. And I'm not saying all women. Like I'm not speaking in general. Like you know, like I'm just speaking in general. Like I'm not talking about a specific person. It's just too much beef between us women. Like I feel as though that a man could sit here and speak on something like Kwame or my baby pops or something and get a whole bunch of people together but us women like one little thing we start battling in the middle of a simple goal or a simple mission like how we do it and that's the issue like i had a conversation with judge joe brown how do i get us women together and stop the beef and just for one minute just for one minute and i'm not coming at all women but can we focus on what our kids really need if we got a lot of mothers out here grandma uh, mothers you know aunties friends like the kids really do need they really need us we're our vo their voice until they hit a certain age so listen man I, I really don't know what to say but i can get more men together than what i've gotten women but i need the women no pushback for me rachel i first of all i god bless you um first of all being a mother of an autistic child i can't even imagine what your days are like and my heart truly goes out to you your um your uh, fiance your son all of it you know and i i commend you i i will have to say i have to kind of stay mute I have to stay mute to a certain extent on this topic because I have adult children. So I don't have children in the school system. So I would have to defer to you as to, you know, your knowledge uh, of the public school system. What I will say that I just recently learned is um, Jeffrey Yaz, who's um, a billionaire that lives here in Pennsylvania that um, supposedly is concerned about um, I don't know. He has this pack for children or charter schools. His thing is charter schools and he's funding, um, you know, once again, um, he funded, I think part of Donald Trump's ability to go into the stock exchange was because Jeffrey Yaz, his company helped fund, um, Donald Trump to get to the stock exchange. I'm sorry. I don't mean to get off the path, but there are a lot of, you know, know, I'm sorry. No, you got. I'm about to um hop off though and listen to okay. you in the chat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No gotta, problem. No problem. But thank you for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing, Rachel. And I will You're just and I will just sum it up like this. I just I think we all just need to keep our eyes and ears open. We don't have to vote straight party line. You just vote for. Look at people's track records. See what they've done for you, your community. What they what they're saying that they're going to do and what they've done in the past. If they don't have a track record in the past to um, give them a second chance, then I would just say, you know, um, take that into consideration because that's what I'm going to do. And I rest my mic on that. Thank, Kwame, I appreciate you for letting me speak on your platform. Um, yeah, you were you were extremely me. gracious. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Rachel. Go ahead, sweetie. No, I said y'all were speaking. That's what I was trying to get off before you know that. So y'all can finish our conversation. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kwame. And you know, I you know I hope y'all can come to you know either an agree to a disagree or just an agreement, whichever way. But you know, thank y'all for listening and. You know, sometimes we just got to open up that third eye and jump down that rabbit hole, you know, take a dive and come right back up and just speak on what we learned and listen to other people. Like sometimes we got to just close our mouth. My baby pop says we got one mouth, two ears. Close your mouth and open your ears. So like I'm not coming at nobody at all. So I'm just saying like sometimes we just got to listen and pay attention. So um, thank you, Kwame, so much. I really appreciate you for letting me up here. I know it's been a minute since I really hopped on your panel, but you know, right. I've, just been falling, I've just been falling back and listening because, you know, I went through a little something here too. So right. Salute to you. Salute to you, Rachel. Hey, keep fighting a good fight. And, and don't forget, man, I, I think you should run for office. To be honest, commissioner <laughs> or something. Joe Brown said the same thing. <laughs> yeah, you need to run. You need to run for something, commissioner. Get, Joe get Brown something. said you should run for mayor in Philly. I said I don't know. I'm broke. I ain't got no money. <laughs> you know what though, Rachel? You do. You should. I. I think. I, you know, if your son is in, I mean, I think you should do something. Run for something in the school system. I tell you that much. Because I got that footwork. 
Hmm? I'm putting in that footwork. I'm Absolutely. putting in that footwork, and hopefully, I can open up community centers like you know, like I told Kwame in the beginning. And in these community centers, I could have workshops where kids could start, you know, opening up their own job, you know, starting their own jobs from the ages of probably like ten and up. Um, get them, you know, because they people don't know kids can get their um, working papers at thirteen and up. Here in Philly, they but I, I think I think you limited yourself, just like Odom Speak say, your testimony will resonate with the people. And I think the money that you think you don't have, you you would have in favor. And you you're the mm -hmm. traditional story. I think you should do it. And if it, it, at least you get your name out there, just go ahead and put your your, your name out there. Go ahead and do it. I think about it. You ain't got it wrong this far, so I'm going to think about it. Thank you yep. so much, Kwame. I appreciate you. Salute to you. And the same to you. Um, Wait, what's her name? Bernetta. Absolutely. Bernetta. It was, Bernetta. It was, thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you, and I, I just wish you all the best. Okay. Same to y'all. Y'all have a good one to stay safe. Good one, brother. Salute to you, bro. All right, man. Go ahead, Miss Benita. Well, you know, I'm still going to say, you know, vote for Joe Biden and Harris for 2024. You know, I'm, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going in with that. You know, I'm... <laughs> 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 I, I'm not, I may be, have been born last night. But, I mean, what, what at night, but not last night. <laughs> That's right. Hey, hey, look, I we respect need your it. Support, Kwame. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, I respect it. You kept it real, so shit. Hey, look, <laughs> I don't tell nobody what to do, and I just hope more people are like that. I respect it. That that was one of the funniest things you said all day. She like, shit, I'm still gonna tell people to vote <laughs> exactly. <do> <laughs> exactly. Biden Harris 2024, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, salute to that. This joker here funny as hell. About time she kept it real, y'all. You got to give her her props. She kept it real. God damn it. And she came up here. She showed her face. You got you to give people their props when they put a name on it. You know. So salute to you, Bernita. Thank you, Kwame. Because Even guess what? You uh, call me hey, cock eye, but that's okay. I forget. No, no, that. I said little cock. I ain't say cock eye. I said little cock. <laughs> but guess what? I got a lazy eye too. I think it's, it's, it's all of us got a little lazy eye. My right eye a little bit smaller than my left eye. But check this out though. It take a lot of courage to come up because uh, a lot of people when they're challenged like that on platforms, they don't come up. I will give you your props. You came up. You stood on your business. You didn't waver. And at the end of the day, you said what you said. So. I respect that. I think more sh people should be like that. Stand on what you stand on. Say what it is. Don't be so goddamn old sneaky. You're a little bit sneaky, though. But mm -hmm. just yes, stand know. on bending. I, I can't do nothing but respect it. Thank you, Kwame. I appreciate that. See, I can't see the chat. I would have been putting laughing faces and stuff like that in the chat. but Oh, they, they laughing like a mug right oh, now. really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they like, shit. at least she said it. <laughs> hey, nobody, people respect that. Uh, who is King Tease? What's up? What's happening? What's going on, man? Man, I shit. I was just chopping up with you yesterday on that other topic, but it's another great topic. Uh, I I, I kind of agree with the lady right here on the on the fact that whatever you believe your policy is or whatever is best for you in your state and your city, that's what you vote on. I don't vote, uh, but I'm like you in a sense Kwame like I'm on the ground I, I really live this I really do the work uh I'm an entrepreneur got my online service three years going uh take care of I got custody of all four of my kids also take care of five other step kids so I say all that to say it ain't easy for a black man we we can continue to pander to black women and i'm not saying that to divide because i'm married but i'm saying that to say it that's a distraction of what's really going on if we don't understand that the black man is the most sought out and to defame his name to make him look bad i don't agree with p diddy or none of the shit that he do or don't do but why all of a sudden around election time this happens 
it's always a distraction. And for some reason, the black man is always at the forefront of the distraction. I can't say I disagree with that. I'll let you uh, chime in, uh, Ms. Bernita. No, I mean, uh, amen. Um, and we Black men have always been profiled, racially profiled. Um, I, I just hope that that's why it's so important that we do, wh whomever we vote for, that they have our interests at heart. And that's why it makes me very, very nervous. Because if I had to choose from the two, um, I would sort of put my chips on Biden because I, I think he, if people look at them as both evil, I think he's the lesser of two evils. Um, um, you know, again, um, Mr. Trump, you don't uh, think he too old, <laughs> even, you know what though? I, I, he's still sharp enough to run this country, you know, it, and unfortunately he's sharp. You know, and, and I, said, I say, yeah, you got a baby daddy, don't you? Yeah, because you say he's sharp, but he seems like every time he's talking, he sleep. No, see that again. If you think is, Joe Biden's sharp, you must think I'm an astronaut, don't you? No, but I, but seriously, I said sharp. I said sharp enough to run this country to keep. What's us sharp safe. enough? A because crayon. Listen, right now you and i are able to be on this platform because we're not under siege right now and you joe know biden can't without a teleprompter go ahead but, but but you know who's at the helm while we're sitting here um having this dialogue back and forth joe biden he's handling kamala harris that we can and kamala kamala harris she and got to be I, telling them what to say he said repeat the line come on now you know that man can't remember nothing first of all her name is kamala i, I got a best friend in yeah man too. come like on this. now you smarter than this bonita she be trying to change and repeat the, the line did you watch his state of the union address though he was very very good. yeah they hit him with that new juice they hit him with that something allegedly <laughs> i think i snapped they hit him with that new juice but <laughs> he wasn't yeah. and that's what i'm saying as long as he stayed propped <laughs> yeah. up enough Y'all, I made the joke yeah, because it's serious. Hey, she she just said it, bro. You should have let her finish. She said, as long as he stay propped up enough. And, and that's I, what I'm saying. Exactly I'm trying to get on their point. <laughs> because it, it's like, it's it, it go back to what you're saying, Kwame. It's about who we like. She liked Biden for whatever reason. That's to each his own. Fact. She liked Biden to, <laughs> to serve to a, a uh, to a high a level to where it don't matter what he does, she's going to rock with him, which yeah. is it, which is your prerogative. But <laughs> when we when you talk about saying speaking facts or what is he doing, we cannot compare the two or you can't intertwine the two just because you like him. Bro, we have to talk about what key. he's doing. Hey, King T, she just lost all credibility, bro. No, 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 she no, said no, no. America. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me yes. say this. I go on mute. You lost all credibility when you just said that in front of eight hundred people. You said at least he's propped up enough. That's this why I brought up the point. That's the why United I made the joke. States. The president of the United States should be propped up enough. That's that's the why I made the joke, people. Kwame. That's that. that wow. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I, we damn near alike when we talk about certain shit because I make the joke, but I'm serious. Is he really able? Is he is he at an age? Literally, is he at an age where he can not be propped up and speak to the, the world and be knowledgeable from 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 uh, understanding? Because he it's, it's like he really don't even understand where he be at. But she don't like Trump that much that she'll take propped up. So let me <laughs> ask you this. Do you know how dangerous that is for foreign countries to know that we're just allegedly propping up a president? That's what I'm saying. And well, what do you I think they're hitting them? Do you have any inside information on what they're hitting them with to prop them up? So hold That's on. what was, I'm I saying. I was actually, listen, I was being facetious. I was, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was oh, okay. So I was about to say, <laughs> damn. No, but here's the thing. No, I realize that he's he's old. Obviously, if we could have a younger candidate, you know, that would be great. But, okay. you know, we don't. So we have to go with who we have. I will say this. I think he's surrounded himself around people that are intelligent, that can give him great advice. So, See, and I think, and, and I think he's still sharp enough. I'm just saying, sharp enough. Joe Biden said Kamala slept her way to the top. So I don't well, know if she's intelligent. 
that we can't know, keep going by we putting people in positions though. I want to talk Joe on Biden. that. Not just, now, hold on, not Joe Biden. Uh, uh, my boy Judge Joe Brown. He said Kamala slept her way to the top. Well, you know, but, but nobody's coming to to this you know job with clean hands. We've all done things. Who? We, which, oh, we, wait a minute we, now. We, what you do? We, what you do, Bernita? Bernita Applebaum. what you did? Biden Harris. We don't need to know what Bernetta does. Oh, oh. You went to them Diddy party. That's the first stone. Oh shit! Did you go to the Diddy party? That ain't the I'm point. Sorry, the you, point is, say, is he able to run a country? If he can't even no. stay awake and talking to people, how is he able to go to conventions? How is he able to sign documents? How is he able to go about as much? You know, they say you age like 20 years when you become the president. Hey, bro. So he, mean, he, like ate 200. he ate fried chicken with a black family, though. <laughs> So and he, he got a burger. He ain't even eating the chicken. He got a burger. <laughs> Listen, so no, seriously, they the, you'll the see commercials with, with them probably showing him falling up the steps and, 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 and sleeping. That, I got a question. Yes, yes, I got yes. a question. I got a question. So I'm here in California. Black people here in California in the Bay Area that I know, oh, man, they actually spited the vote for Donald Trump because of Kamala was on the ticket. Now, the thing that I don't get with certain Democrats is you guys have all the degrees. Most people that go to college has a not most people, but most black people that I know. That's the professional Democrats, the ones that say we need representation. You guys got bachelor's, master's degrees, doctorate degrees. But if anything, you guys should be able to see that Joe obviously doesn't have the mental factions. I'm trying to figure out do the black community will support any Democrat? Because I notice when it comes to the white folks. They will not vote for George Bush. But see, but we're we will a vote for any. Let me let me finish. Let me finish. Because a lot of these white folks now that did vote for Bush in 01 to now they're on the Trump side. They said uh, I asked a couple of them. I said, man, if George P. Bush, because that's a real Bush, if he decided to run for the ticket, and it was I guess Eric Trump, who you got? They got Trump over Bush dynasty. But when it comes to the black community. We can have a situation of Bernie Sanders versus Hillary. We go with Hillary. We got a situation of Bernie Sanders versus Joe Biden. We go with Biden. But we always use the same situation of uh, police. Police reform needs to be on the table. Criminal justice needs to be on the table. But this is the godfather of mass incarceration. So if anything, if Joe Biden was Republican, black people would got it. Black people would say, oh, hell no. Nah, this motherfucker is slow, sleepy, and stuck. But when it comes to the situation of him being a Democrat, oh, he all good. It's no, about who we like, like Kwame said. I don't that's get it, though. True. I don't I don't get it because Joe it's Biden about who we Bill like. Both. It's the popularity. I call it popularity contest. He's popular gotcha. because of, because of Obama. He was up on the Obama. Everybody liked it. Obama. So he was the next in line because he was the most popular. Like Kwame been saying this. This is the type of shit that I say all the time. It's about who. It's to go along, get along. Like, like it's about who is we comfortable with. It's about who we don't like. People talking regular like us, like how we having this conversation right now about real yes, stuff and saying our own opinions and nobody getting upset. They don't want that type of conversation out in the real world. Because, man, it, it boggles my mind, man, because one, like I'm here in California. Uh, so this is a situation where I make my transition to Nevada within a couple of months. But I look at California as, damn, we went from 28 percent black in L.A. in the 80s to now about 5 percent. Well, El Vario then took over the hood, you know, La Colonial Watts, No Mayates. And I'm thinking, so I'm ahead, man, y'all Southern Democrats, you know, because I think Southern Democrats is more conservative than they really think and believe. But I tell the Southern Democrats, you do not want a Gavin Newsom to be the president. He already destroyed California with two terms. You know what? My pops tried to get a gun and he had literally a birth certificate copy that the county of Los Angeles gave him just for it. When he went to the gun shop, they wouldn't sell him a gun. They said that, nah, sir, we need your... Um, need your driver's license to have your new um your new address because he recently moved i said see this wouldn't happen in tennessee 
This wasn't happening. This won't happen in Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. I'm like, what what keeps certain black folks in place like this? Because if you put a West Coast Democrat in a Georgia Democrat, you thought the Georgia Democrat was a full blown Republican the way how the West Coast Democrat is so far left. But I'm done. So let me just say this, um, all jokes aside, I, I think Biden is very capable of running this country, running this nation. He's been in the he's been in government since I think he was in his 20s. So he's been in government all of practically all of his life. So he knows how to get things done, how to get legislation passed. And he has been doing it. Like I said earlier, um, if if after this, after Kwame closes his room, I would ask everyone to just go to whitehouse.gov i think that that's the website i don't know but go to see what their accomplishments have been they've done a lot of stuff and and the things that they haven't done is because um unfortunately we have a republican-led congress that's holding up a lot of the bills and um i wanted to say something about um oh i just said look at people's track record okay so we have prescription lower prescription drugs under biden so now you if you are an insulin or if you're a diabetic you should be able to get your insulin for 35 dollars. we have cancellation of didn't he give out the pipes hmm? didn't biden get out the, the crack pipes too and you, you, yeah, well yeah and, and i think quality. so and not only that but they've made they've eased um laws for marijuana so that now marijuana is more legalized okay so i rather have marijuana than crack though I'd okay. rather have the weed than the crack, but but but, but what I'm way, saying is, I didn't promise to legalize it, so I'm it's not even natural weed about. either. It's not even natural marijuana. Well, I mean, I wish nobody would smoke it, but if you have to, at least it's legal, okay? Now, Miss Burnett, now if the Republicans say this, well, we try to legalize weed, black folks would be saying, "Oh, this is stereotypical. I don't even smoke no weed." See, look look at how, how, how the Republicans always put us in a box. But here's Democrats indirectly how it helps situation. us, how it helps people of color, because people yeah. of color were getting most over and and locked up for small amounts of marijuana. And, now but that's on the state level, and Joe still. But they still locked up. They still yeah. locked up. But but they still there's locked up. yeah, but there's there's legislation and bills and things like that are that are trying to move through um through Congress and but, you know if, if we just we have to when it comes to weed charges most of the weed charges is on the state the federal can't do anything Donald Trump can't save you Joe Biden can't save you it's your governor but here's the thing though every little step every little bit helps so it's at least a little bit more than we had a few years ago when everything was illegal so let's just take you know the wins where we can and continue to try to move forward in and making those things that you and i that that uh apply to our lives make our lives better try to vote those individuals in that that's going to do that and Ms. again Ayers, I'm what's saying, gas prices in your area because diesel here in california is about five three forty nine a gallon 349 again. What's the diesel price? Because diesel, that's where all of our shit runs. Um, so I'm not sure what the diesel price is, but the gas price is 349. That's okay, the average. so it's 349. So when the summertime hits, when we got all the travel demand, when we got everybody that's gonna be flocking around and everybody trying to go to this area to that area, watch when them prices go to 450 while California goes close to seven dollars. Like economically, like I'll give you a democratic example. President Clinton created 25 million jobs from 93 to 2001 in the mid stage of his term when gas prices was going up and he was talking about gas a haul and he was talking about go-go economy he had to reverse a lot of this green initiatives that we see with biden now because we this is a, this isn't our first time excuse me this isn't our first time going green we went try to go green with gas a haul that shit doesn't work in the night mid 90s if Joe Biden had all this experience, he would understand that, damn, I got to revert back to a center left and to a far, far left, just utopia that we have here in California. He was supposed to be Bill Clinton, so like a Dixiecrat, to be on the center. Joe Biden is not center on nothing. He has a controlled crime. Hell, there was a time when even Democrats was hard on immigration. Now it seemed like they done... I think a lot of people don't realize that Democratic Party left y'all. 
who am I speaking I think, to? I think I can't a lot of people face. don't realize that the Democratic Party left, y'all, because Bill was a great job creator. He had control on the streets. Joe Biden doesn't have control on the streets. Man, we got 250,000 illegals in New York City. 100,000 in Chicago. Hold on. Look, and, and that's a great point. But hold on. Let me ask you something, Miss Bernita. Yes. Miss Bernita, do you um how do you feel about Easter being changed to gender uh, appreciation day? Easter wasn't changed. It just happened Dang. to fall. No, it wasn't. It happened to fall on the same day. That that those people that I didn't those, know that. Yeah, no. It, it Easter falls um on different um days every year. And it just so happened this particular year it fell it fell on the same day as you know the gender people or whatever were, were having their event well they should have moved it just because no 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 they, they didn't move it and that's the thing that's the type of propaganda i'm talking about they will take something and make you feel like oh my god you know now biden um you know can't went canceled easter so i don't believe in day. holidays so i don't really care about that i don't no, believe no. in holidays yeah, so well, easter just happened to fall on the same day as this event but easter will be a different day probably next year so but, please don't believe that propaganda but, but the thing is mind. president obama signed this in 2009 so we already was sort of like about what 10 years too late about 10 plus years too late but here's and that should show you about obama that should show you about obama's situation where if this was already passed by our first black president then damn what else has been passed because she she's right in a way where yeah this already been a thing but it's been passed since 2009 so where was the black community then to really say hey but at the time i get it you know our first black president you know if you talk against uh our lord and savior president barack hussein obama you know you a coon but damn so you should really make I know you you're analyze not to, i know we don't want to go to the bible thing with mr man trying to sell I, his bible i'm not 50, even religious 50, that's just not a good look in general come for on. The now, now he's selling bibles he was selling gold tennis shoes because he knows probably black people like tennis shoes so now he's mm -hmm. selling he's selling bibles it just so happened to be around on easter or resurrection day give me a break and then first this of all, looks worse. you're supposed this, to be if you're supposed to be protecting worse. the constitution and separating church and state why in the world would you first of all create a bible that has in it the constitution the declaration of independence or whatever okay. you're trying to put you're trying to well, put all of that together but we're uh, but i'm just but i'm we're talking about the president right and, and yes and a the lot president of the things, joe biden he put that on the place yesterday no no so and obama thing. and you're, obama in 2009 so i'm agreeing with you partially because yeah this situation of transgender uh of transgender day of visibility that's been in place since march of what 2009 and i got the links right I can so be able biden to has links. nothing to do with the date that that fell on so please let's stop um, but obama passed in 2009 this already been a thing i think the situation biden is trying to put this shit on place fully but you and that images votes don't you right understand, lady that obama this signed the the the, the uh transgender he didn't even sign nothing. He everybody when everybody was like he couldn't do nothing for black folks. How was he able to do something for yeah, transgender? Yeah, yeah. And like what he's saying, Biden is taking up what he started. Thank you. Thank Here's, you. Thank can you. Can I say this? When you're a president, you're a president of all people. Okay, so you're a president of blacks, whites, Hispanics, transgender. You have to you have to preside I don't over understand everyone. How Obama's supposed to be the so, most inclusive president, but we put him in and said that's our president. We literally said that this is our president. Now he's the president of all people. Man, you're giving Obama the ultimate. Okay, but let's let's just let's refocus back to the current pre uh can uh the current president that can't remember his name. Yes, Joe Biden. No, the per the current race that we're talking about now, which is the Trump Biden race, and um we could come up here and talk about a lot of things Biden, but I haven't heard yet one person give me a list of things that Trump has done that helped your life. I will say this about okay, Biden: we have low in we have low unemployment under biden the stock market um for those that are wealthy that for about five the, the years the stock Which market one? for those that are wealthy have hit record um 
have hit record uh, numbers, okay, under Biden. Mm -hmm. and But yet, but yet, Mr. Trump said that there was going to be carnage everywhere. And people are making some, some people are making the most money that they've ever made in their entire life under a Biden administration. Also, have you heard anything about COVID lately? You know what? You don't hear about it because so the media stopped what? talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> what? No, because it's not as, as it, because it under Biden, you know, he helped to guide us out of a crisis. Okay, so I so, understand your stand. So you probably took all three shots, huh? Yep. Yep. It doesn't matter but if I took I, the I don't understand that because I remember a time, now, now can I speak? I remember there was a time when Kamala Harris literally said if President Trump was responsible of administrating the shot, we would not go with it. We will try our hardest to try to block it our best way ability. We went from saying we ain't going to take the shot to literally taking the shot and mandating it on people. You, you, do you know, Miss Ayers, that a lot of people voted for Biden in 2020 that's literally going to go RFK, Cornell West, the couch, or even some Donald Trump because of mandates? That fucked up a lot of people's uh, money as well. Can I ask a lot you of people a question? Had to switch. Can I finish? Sure, a lot I'm of sorry. people had to switch careers. A lot of black women that was in the medical field that say, man, our, we was just talking about Tuskegee about six months ago. Now we about to go with a shot. A lot of black women had to lose, lose their job. A lot of black men had to lose their jobs. Hell, people across the board lost their jobs. Now, now we have the Supreme Court, you know, the evil ass, demon ass, satanic ass Republicans had to save us literally by stating that this is unconstitutional. And we had to literally move on forward to the media not covering COVID. We used to have the death count. Five years ago, we used to have the COVID death count where we knew every, supposedly everybody on earth that died from the shit. Now we don't even talk about it no more. Because everybody went from being mandated the shot to now we're supposed to be back to normal. Do you know that still 65% of the black community is still not vaccinated? Can, can I can I respond? Can I respond to this? Go ahead, um, and go ahead and respond. Okay. So, when did you ever go to college at all? You don't have to say if you did or not. I dropped out. Okay, so but but that but, really but no 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. No. Um, I'm the only reason why I'm asking that is because in order to apply for college, you had to have that meningitis shot. Did anybody? I don't think I saw on any news. Uh, programs, people in up in arms because you had to have a meningitis shot to get into college. That's Nobody different. That is like, way no, different. it's not. It yes, was it either is. you had the shot. Meningitis, it to, took multiple years to get, get that down. But it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. It does You're, matter. You no, know, it's the it same thing. No. If I give See, you, that, if I create a drug in three months and gave it to you and say, all right, take two and call me. It, and you wind you know up what? Dead. As long as it was approved by the government and FDA or whoever needs to approve it, if it was approved, then that's how it works. It was approved to give to people, so they did. So, but ma'am, why do we say that when we say the government is not for us that they've been against Thank us? You. This is supposed to be what I, I don't land. understand. This is supposed to be the government is supposed to be against us to, to America skinny. with the three Ks. Remember? Yeah, America with the three Ks. Said, I did, but that was never my argument. Who said the government was against us? I never said a lot of a lot of our yeah a lot. Of our historians, a lot of our ancestors have proven through facts that the government has never been in our favor. So why would you put all of your backing with the government? So I would say government has its role because if if we didn't have a government, local um, laws and or local um, um, entities and things like that, then we would be living in chaos. We would be un. un I'm not. Un I'm not speaking towards that. I'm speaking towards entrusting the governments to that they're going to do right by your families. The government haven't proven that they can run anything successfully. So why would why would you now put your trust in the government? Especially when big government is involved, when this is a big government operation where we, oh, we have she dropped mass down. media, we have mass media, we had music, we had TV, we had our favorite celebrities, we had everybody that says we need to get involved, full hands on deck. If you ain't with it, you must be a Trumper. And that's crazy. How people that voted for Biden literally said mandates was a not an ingrata. That's what I, I wanted to get on on there when like, but like I didn't take none of them shots. And, and 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 the reason why I'm saying that is because my wife she works for uh, DHS. I say that she worked for DHS and the job she had prior 
they was trying to make her take the shots in the beginning. I'm like, and you know, like I told you, I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm telling her, man, don't take no shot. Cause I already, I don't believe in vaccinations and all this shit, period. That's just my opinion. And I'm telling her this shit way before any of this was going out. And mm -hmm. after a while, they start trying to pay her to take the shot. She ended up having to quit that job. And we damn near, she is split up cause she really wasn't trusting me at first until uh, she ended up getting this other job and everything started coming out that this is some bullshit. It's some bullshit. Basically. And <laughs> now she like, man, I'm so glad I believed you. And everybody who took the shot getting sicker. And when they do get sick, they get sick longer. That's not true. I I, had I, all three shots. That is true. I, I got people I in my family. I had all three that shots. That died just, from me. I'm here on this panel talking to you. I had three shots. And I'm here to tell the story. Is that why your eye is that why your eye getting lazy like that? <laughs> why you gotta oh, go to shit. my eye quality? <laughs> 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 but, but I, I wanted, I, I wanted this to finish my point with Bernie, with, with Miss Ayers. Then I'll, then I'll pass the mic because we got new people. But yeah. Don't you understand? I, well, for the people that's listening, that is still Biden Harris ticket. You guys need to understand that y'all do a lot of stuff where people is rocking with you. What it is? They say, yeah, fuck Trump. To now they're saying, well, uh, well, well, damn Bad. Biden, what, you, you're not even, you're not even really holding it down for me, cuz. You ain't even hold it down for me, cuz. Like, come on, man. man. There's certain people that was gung ho by Nair's ticket where they either gonna vote for Trump, vote for the independent RFK, or don't vote at all. Where you done hemorrhage votes, where a lot of people was with you to now you in a small but it's like, percent bubble. It's like what Kwame's saying. What have they ever done for us? Why are we acting like as if the United States has done anything for our people or for the people in general? The people in general, really. Like, I, man, we, I got, man, that's what I'm saying, because I got all type of nationalities in my family. My sister just married a, a Latino. So I'm, I'm pro-black, but I don't care what you is as long as you doing right. That's that's what we all should be thinking about. And we cannot be trying to turn a blind eye or turn the other cheek to when these people been doing bullshit to us for the beginning of fucking time. Who's speaking? Because I can't tell who's speaking. Tease wanna... Parker. Steve, Steve, here's what I'm, I'm going to tease. 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 With a T. Tease. Okay, tease. Um, here's what I want to say. Here's what the government does for us. One, if you tease were to um, lose your job or whatever, have no money or whatever, you have the ability. I don't have no job. I have uh, uh, my LLC. I got my own business. Okay. Multiple okay, I'm business. Saying, so say, say, God forbid, something happened to you. Can somebody mute? Because I can hear something. It sounds like the ocean. Oh, somebody's. It's raining somewhere. <laughs> Um, no, I'm mute every time I stop talking. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. So what I was going to say is that um, the government is there to help. Um, if you were, to, if somebody were to get hit by a car, God forbid, and didn't have any health insurance or whatever, they could go to their local, um, you know, um, government office or whatever and get health care. They could also get money to at least help them to survive um to have food these are th these are social programs and services that the government helps its people as well as if is the government the fda that's the food and drug administration they have to um you know inspect food to make sure that somebody from some country is not putting poison in our food or we're not eating they have if to you making your own food they don't have to inspect nothing well, i'm just naming just offices or whatever i'm oh. just naming things that the government does to help its people but my okay? point is if you do if we do it more ourselves then we don't have to rely on the government Absolutely. And I'm not saying that people should rely on the government. But what I'm saying is when when they said that, you know, why is you know, what has government done for us? I, government does a lot. It is there to regulate. It is there to make sure that, you know, we when we go True. outside, we have clean air and we're not being polluted and everything. So True. there are a lot of um, uh, uh, government is there just to keep us safe. 
But you if, 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 man, if you was man, in a relationship man, and you was getting more bad than good, then what do you do in that relationship? I'm sorry, say that again. If you, got if you was in a relationship, good. whatever that may be, friendship, uh, partnership, significant other, and you was getting back more bad and more bad energy or more bad anything than good, what would you do? Well, first, as, as if you're doing, um, you know, this is taking your scenario, then that means that you were the person that just didn't do anything wrong in that relationship. Or That's not I'm what saying, I said. Well, I'm just you, saying, I'm saying if you were getting. Then you would probably want to exit that relationship. That's all I'm saying. I know, I know that's where you were going, but what I'm trying to enlighten you about is there are other things that the government does for us that is good for us so that you so that you can open your mind to know that, hey, I didn't know that, you know, this is the reason why this happens because the government is there to protect us from certain things. And I'm not saying that they have to overly regulate every single that's thing. That's what I'm but saying. The but the government is there to regulate and to make sure that we are um, we can we can be safe in our own country. Can I ask a quick question? What if what the government is doing, the facts and the evidence? Oh, show hold on, whose mic is that? Somebody mic trash. That's not me. Somebody mic trash. That's not me. Yeah. Yeah, Hold on. So, Go ahead, Bolo. Go ahead, yeah, so good, good, you know, good evening, uh, good morning to the panel. Salute KB, salute to the chat. What if the evidence shows that the present government, um, what they're doing, the pros and the cons, when you weigh them, the cons far outweigh the pros. Why are you being an apologist for that government where the evidence is showing that, you know, the cons far outweigh the pros? They're doing that, some stuff, that, yes, but then the cons is like, first time Biden went into power, one of the first thing he did was take away the, the, the oil pipeline, and that had gas go way up. That affected the economy. How is that good for the people of America? How is that? And that affects the world, as a matter of fact. I live in Jamaica, and anything that Biden does affects Jamaica. So I have an invested interest. Anything that the president of the USA does affects other countries, Right. So how is that some that that's the first move you make as the president to have gas prices, inflation go up and just the immigration situation is ridiculous. Just letting people in, giving them money, putting them there and y'all got homeless people. How do you how do you defend that? I don't get it. OK, so I'm not an expert in the pipeline, so I really can't speak to that. But what I can speak to is that every for everybody, you're your need for the government in your life is going to be different from the next person because we all are different individuals. Our lives are different. My need for government may be totally different than your need for government. So that's why when, so you have to look at it individually and you have to look at the policies and what, what you have to look at Trump's record. What has he done to, 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 to apply the things in my life that make my life better what has Biden done to apply the things in my life to make my life better? When you do a line down the middle of that page and put Trump's name on one side and Biden's name on the other and go down that list, see who has more issues that align with you and then vote for that person. That's what I say. I rest my mic. All right. May I add in salute uh, KB and channel? I mean, uh, chat and, and people on the panel. Um, I heard the conversation earlier. She was, you know, naming off of, you know, what the government purpose is and what they do and, and what um, policies that was passed. A lot of stuff she was naming was, ma'am, you were naming was generic stuff that most of that generic stuff don't really benefit us uh, to prosper. Yeah, we can get go and get some food stamps. Yeah, we can go and get an unemployment check if you get fired or whatever the case may be. Or you can go to the hospital if you got a stab wound. You know, they have to treat you. Um, yeah, that, that's generic. But as a whole, that handicaps us. And all we saying is give us somebody that's going to let us come and tell them, hey, this is what we want. And so we can grow with the country because all we've been doing, we've been going on since we've been over here, we've been handicapped. And we've been handicapped for a reason. And I don't understand why black America don't 
see that that they trying to handicap us because we we the best at everything that we do so why would why would we want to keep on being handicapped and the second point i wanted to make before i let somebody else go uh under the trump um administration i'm a small business owner i have a plumbing company i was balling and not to say that i'm not balling my income has gone up but my margin hasn't so meaning that money is a little bit tighter you know why money is a little bit tighter because infl inflation is out the roof so yes i've made more income than i did when uh because each year you want you want your income to go up but the dollar doesn't equate to anything because food is higher gas is higher material is higher everything is higher insurance everything is up through the roof so that doesn't really do nothing uh for people Black America was doing the best we had been doing since we've been over here under the Trump administration. And most people don't even want to um, admit that. And, and and I don't understand why. Why well, I do, but it, it, it's crazy to me. It, it, it went then for my pockets to be full of cash and I'm on my way to the bank. Everybody had money to spend money. And the dollar, yes, it, it's always been inflated, but not like how it's being now. Money is tight. Everybody is tight with money now. Even if you got, if you making over six figures, you still, you 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 looking at your money. I guarantee you, anybody making over six figures, yeah, that money good. You still able to pay your bills and take care of your family, but you looking at money a little bit closer than you was looking at it four years ago, and that's that's all I got to say to it. I totally agree with you. Inflation, um, you know, is just going to be an issue, a factor, no matter who's president. Unfortunately, our country took a big nah. hit. When co Wait a minute, hold on. Unfortunately, our, our country took a big hit under COVID. That's when really things just started, started going haywire. Now that we're trying to slowly get back together, what's happening now is price gouging. And I believe that um, President Biden talked about price gouging and he's going to start tackling companies that are price gouging and taking it. He was Sorry. supposed to do that in 2021 of August when inflation was starting to get, get hot. Plus, price gouging is just a symptom. It ain't the main cause. The main cause is like the other gentleman said, when it came to the scenario of both money printing, both physical where we got the fiscals, where the stimulus checks were, you know, the money that we got to also situations of the infrastructure bill. We passed that. That was one point. Uh, no, 1. Biden passed trillion. that. Bi Biden passed that. Let's under Biden. Here. Yes, under Biden. Then okay. we had the situation of the $500 billion Inflation Reduction Act. Plus, we had our third stimulus on homies. So we then spent $4 trillion. Plus, we stopped federal gas leases. Because we're going green, remember? The electric vehicle thing has blew up in a lot of people's face. Where now the situation, people are getting stuck in the middle of the road. Shit is catching on fire. Then we got a scenario where we have both funding wars. You know, Ukraine, they're getting unlimited funds. You know, Zelensky, he got about three or four mansions and two yachts right now. They're not and getting funded right now because the Republican-led Congress won't pass the bill for their to, to support. Our, remember, they're and, and our allies. And they're our allies. And so we, and, we need to help our allies. And we also need to require for more people to put more money in the kitty. If we're going to keep fighting this, fight. we can't fight this by ourselves. If we're supposed to, like you alliance. just said, we're an alliance. If we're supposed to be an alliance, we can't just do this all in one. But a lot of people are tired of giving Ukraine bread. And, and we have another situation when it comes to scenario that's going on with Israel, you know. Uh, so we're funding all these wars. We're, we're doing all this spending. We're literally making it impossible to tackle inflation in a monetary sense where Jerome Powell, our Federal Reserve chairman, he got to raise pretty much rates probably to double digits in order to tackle this. If we're using the Democrats model of tackling inflation where we're just going to restrict demand and just raise rates and make it tight for businesses to get loans to money uh lines of credit will be expensive or debt in general will be expensive high interest rates and the federal reserve is political because a lot of democrats they like to say well uh, uh he, he can't control what the federal yes you can because y'all got mad when donald trump bullied the shit out of jerome powell to keep them interest rates at zero percent because y'all say well it's an election year so we, no, we can't we, we can't situation, use a situation of, of it not being it not political. being political. I got one more question. 
um isn't the constitution supposed to protect uh a religious person's right to their beliefs Everybody, Everybody has, has this. I don't know. Who I don't know. The question is, like isn't, the isn't the Constitution supposed to protect the religious person to their beliefs? Is that true or not? I got a follow-up question after the answer. Yes, no. Everybody, Everybody has... has uh, I, I don't know. I don't I, know. I, I, know. I'm getting thrown off by the echo. Can somebody, okay. <laughs> um... I'm not an expert in the Constitution, so I don't want to say something that may be incorrect. But from my understanding, I think people have a right to practice uh, free, you know, their, the religion that they um, would like to practice. I, I mean, I think that there might be some caveats in there. When I say caveat, I mean, just as long as it's not uh, anything that's going to be detrimental or, um, you know, something illegal. But other than that, you have the right to practice your own religion. So... So the follow-up question is, why was that that right impeded upon by the current administration during COVID when it came on to them deciding not to put something in their body that to their religion and their prophecies was something that they shouldn't take based off their belief in their creator? Why was that happening? And why are people supporting this present administration that did that to those people? Okay, so um, I don't I don't know what instance that you're talking about, but I believe during that time, um, if you if had, you a, had let me give you an example, let me give you an somebody, example. Somebody, let me, I, think let me give, I think if you had a true reason, 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 let me give you an example. Religious, religious, okay, no, let, okay. Me, let me give you an example. Uh, uh, people in the army that had those beliefs would lost their jobs. They were not given an, a religious exemption. It's either you take this thing or you get up out of here. We don't care about your religion. That's a big example. Now you go. I'm sorry. You cut out when you named the religion. Name the religion. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying uh, the, the people in the army were not given a religious exemption in regards to whether they can take the job or not and still keep their jobs. They lost their jobs behind not taking the job right because of their religious beliefs that's an okay. example okay. you go okay so i again because i'm not a lawyer i don't know i don't i'm not a i don't know constitution law or anything like that but what i would suspect is the reasonable thing to do is you can't you have to weigh you have to measure and weigh what is beneficial for the overall group okay so out of say a hundred soldiers and say um i don't know say uh five uh five of them may say okay i want a religious exemption um then maybe that's not a good analogy i'm just saying that if if they want an exemption and then that the rest of the 95 get you know sick because maybe they didn't get a shot or whatever, and then they come around these other 95, and then you have a whole military platoon out of out of commission because, because they were exposed to someone that may have um, gotten, you know, I guess COVID or whatever. And I don't want to say that word. I don't want to, anybody's channel. Anybody's channel. I want to. I want to say this to you. So you just have to wait. But I, I'm not a constitutional lawyer, so I don't know. Okay. Okay. I, I'm a moral tip. You have to agree that that's wrong. But listen, in Jamaica, more than I think more than seventy percent of Jamaicans did not take the jab. And do you know that 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 uh, C nineteen has not affected Jamaica in, in terms of numbers in a major way? I, I'm just saying. And a lot of us didn't take it, and a lot of us didn't get sick at all. And we went through. Listen, there was parties going on and everything in Jamaica the whole time. No mask, no nothing. And people did not get sick, and people did not uh, die from it. That Let didn't me take ask, it. Ball 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 real quick. <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna say that. I, I got loved ones that um, had got the uh, the jab. I didn't get it. Um, in my household, we didn't get it either. And they mm -hmm. got five, six, three, four, all the shots that they were supposed to get. Do you know that they have had COVID more than two? to four times 
since they didn't got them um all those shots that were supposed to Jesus protect Christ. them. And I never contracted the virus, at least I not at least um to my understanding or my knowledge of it. You it wasn't was out of work, brother? No, I was not okay. out of work. I Smart still man. was moving and all that stuff like that. Yeah, I wore the mask and all that stuff like that, but the mask irritated me. It, it the whole situation irritated me. The the moment I found out that the uh and this is just my this this doesn't reflect the channel, but uh uh host opinion this, this is what I seen or whatever. So I, I put allegedly on that to protect the channel, KB. But uh allegedly I seen the CDC was marking deaths down. Um, if you get in a motorcycle accident and you had contracted COVID within those 90 days and that brother or sister died in a, 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 of a motorcycle a, a cycle accident or whatever, in any type of death that you had and you didn't die of the disease, they was marking it down as you died of that particular, the, uh, 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 of, of the uh, C-19. And when once I seen that, I, that made me take a step back, and I was like, "Hold on, now, something ain't right." So they put the fear in people um, with it, and it was a, it was this big propaganda. And and most people, they believe what they see on TV. Everybody ain't made to be a leader, so most most people are followers. Uh, you know, that's just how everything set up. And once I began to see that, I took a step back, and I, you know, you do your own research and stuff like that. So it it was it was a big big loop of, of propaganda and fear mongering among people and when you say that you the bad guy for saying that but that's just the absolute truth and a lot of shaming too brother a lot of shaming yeah. too because they were trying to shame the shit out of you man it's yeah. that you don't care about your grandparents you don't care about your family yeah and then it's not that you're not saying that hey this is i'm i'm, I'm acknowledging that yeah it, it is a disease out here but in, in my my religion and, and, and my personal beliefs I'm not about to put something in my body that they just made a year ago. You get what I'm saying? Or they mm -hmm. made, at the time, it was like five, six months, and they ready to shoot everybody up with it. No, they no, say, no, right, no, let's no. Go. And now back to what the lady was saying earlier about, you know, well, when you go to school and you got to do this and that, though, that stuff has been in, in studies five years plus. So that's a, that's that's the difference in getting a shot when you- oh, Hold on, I'm going to end this live real quick, y'all. Hold on, I'm going to end this live. Hey, yo. I got I to gotta end this live real quick. I got a situation I got to handle. Thank okay. you, Kwame. Damn. This guy, Salute, this guy man. Salute, man. Salute.